400 BC, was a Greek philosopher whose school took its name from his birthplace, Cyrene in Africa. He was for some time a follower of Socrates, and afterwards lived at the court of Dionysius, tyrant of Syracuse. Diogenes Laertius relates that when Aristippus was asked what was the greatest thing he had gained from philosophy, he replied, the power to meet all men with confidence. Note page 60. Among Plutarch's works is a tract entitled, How to Tell Friend from Flatterer. In 1532 Erasmus published a Latin version of it dedicated to Henry VIII of England. Note page 61. The first quatrain of a well-known sonnet by Petrarch. Gianto Alessandro alla famosa tomba. Del ferro a kill, sospirando dis. O fortunato, sight si chiara tromba. Travasti, e c d t e c alto scris. Of which Mr. John J. Chapman has kindly furnished the following translation. When Alexander reached the sacred mound. Where dread Achilles sleeps, O child of fame. He sighed. Thy deeds are happy that they found. Old Homer's tongue to clarion thy name. In his oration Pro Archia, Cicero describes Alexander as exclaiming, O fortunate youth, who found Homer as herald of thy valor. O fortunate, in quit, agilescens cat tui virtutis homerum preconem in veneris. Note page 62. In an earlier version, this passage reads, Grasso de Medici will in this matter have the same advantage over Messer Pietro Bembo that a hogshead has over a barrel. Bembo was slender, while Grasso, fat man, was probably the nickname of a corpulent soldier in the service of the Medici, possibly identical with a certain Grasso to whom Bembo desired to be commended in a letter to Bibiena, February 5, 1506. Note page 63. The instrument used in Socrates's time Capoeira Thetero Alpha was certainly 349 not the modern cithern, but more probably a kind of large lyre, supported by a ribbon and played with a plectrum of metal, wood or ivory. Note page 63. In a note to this passage, Kean says, Abido, rendered habit of mind, is a special condition or habitual quality of the mind, which manifests itself outwardly in a special costume rendered habitual tendency, or equally habitual behavior, which in turn reacts upon the disposition and moral attitude of the individual. Note page 64. Lycurgus probably lived in the 9th century BC, and was the reputed author of the Spartan Laws and Institutions. Note page 64. Epaminandus, a Theban general, defeated the Spartans at Leuctra in 371 BC and at Mantinea in 362 BC, and lost his life in the latter battle. Note page 64. Themistocles, the Athenian statesman and general, persuaded the Greeks to resist the second Persian invasion by naval force at Salamis in 480 BC. Note page 64. One of the finest of the Pompeian frescoes represents the centaur Chiron teaching Achilles to play upon the lyre. Note page 64. The reference here is of course to the familiar story of Orpheus and the beasts. Note page 64. Castiglione doubtless had in mind the legend of Arion, a Greek poet of Lesbos, who probably flourished about 700 BC. We have a fragment of his verse addressed to Poseidon in telling of the dolphins, who had wafted the poet safely to land when he had lost his course. Note page 65. As we shall see, the Magnifico's request was not complied with until the second evening, page 81. Note page 65. Quintus Fabius Pictor was a Roman general who served in the Second Punic War, and wrote a Greek history of Rome, much esteemed by the ancients, but now lost. Pliny affirms that Fabius painted the temple in the 450th year after the founding of Rome, i.e. 300 BC, and that the painting was still extant about the beginning of our era. Note page 66. The Apollo Belvedere was discovered in 1503, the Laocoon group in 1506, and other famous antique statues only a few years earlier. Note page 66. The comparative merits of painting and sculpture were a frequent subject of discussion during this period.
The Renaissance writers 350 had inherited from antiquity a fondness for seeking superiority or inferiority in matters between which there exists such a diversity of character as to render comparison unprofitable. According to Vasari, Giorgione maintained that in one picture the painter could display various aspects without the necessity of walking round his work, and could even display, at one glance, all the different aspects that could be presented by the figure of a man, even though the latter should assume several attitudes, a thing which could not be accomplished by sculpture without compelling the observer to change his place. So that the work is not presented at one view, but at different views. He declared, further, that he could execute a single figure in painting, in such a manner as to show the front, back, and profiles of both sides at one and the same time. He painted a nude figure, with its back turned to the spectator, and at the feet of the figure was a limpid stream, wherein the reflection of the front was painted with the utmost exactitude, on one side was a highly burnished corslet, of which the figure had divested itself, and wherein the left side was reflected perfectly, every part of the figure being clearly apparent, and on the other side was a mirror, in which the right profile of the nude form was also exhibited. By this beautiful and admirable fancy, Giorgione desired to prove that painting is, in effect, the superior art, requiring more talent and demanding higher effort. In one of his letters, Michelangelo wrote, My opinion is that all painting is the better the nearer it approaches to relief, and relief is worse in proportion as it inclines to painting. And so I have been wont to think that sculpture is the lamp of painting, and that the difference between them might be likened to the difference between the sun and moon. By sculpture I understand an art which operates by taking away superfluous material, by painting, one that attains its result by laying material on. It is enough that both emanate from the same human intelligence, and consequently sculpture and painting ought to live in amity together, without these lengthy disputations. More time is wasted in talking about the problem than would go to the making of figures in both species. Note page 68. In his, Treatise on Painting, Leonardo da Vinci says, The first marvel we find in painting is the apparent detachment from the wall or other plane, and the cheating of keen perceptions by something that is not separate from the surface. Note page 68. Grottoes, i.e. the catacombs. Speaking in his autobiography of the remains of ancient art found in the catacombs, Benvenuto Cellini says, these grotesques have received this name from the moderns because they were found by scholars at Rome in certain subterranean caverns, which had anciently been rooms, chambers, studios, halls, and the like. Since these scholars found them in these cavernous places, which had been built by the ancients on the surface and had become low, and since such low places are known at Rome by the name grottos, for that reason they received the name grotesques. Cellini here tries to explain the origin of the name applied 351 to ornaments, such as the arabesques of the Renaissance, in which figures, human to the waist, terminate in scrolls, leafage, etc. and are combined with animal forms and impossible flowers. In this sense the word was used as early as 1502 in a contract between the Cardinal of Siena and the painter Pinturicchio. It had of course not yet reached its modern signification, so fully discussed in the appendix to volume 4 of Ruskin's Modern Painters. In Castiglione's time it was not known that the catacomb decorations were Christian, and in any case they were founded on pagan models. Note page 69. Demetrius I of Macedon, died 283 BC. Was the son of Antigonus, who was one of Alexander's most illustrious generals and succeeded to the Macedonian throne. Note page 69. Of Metrodorus, nothing more is known than Pliny's account of the incident recorded in our text. Note page 69. Lucius Aemilius Paulus, died 160 BC, was a Roman general, consul, and statesman of the aristocratic party. The incident mentioned in the text occurred after his victory over King Perseus of Macedon in 168 BC. Note page 70. Campaspe, according to Pliny, was the name of the beautiful slave given by Alexander to Apelles, as narrated at page 68. Note page 70. Zuxis, Flor. 400 BC. Belonged to the Ionian school of Greek painting, 
which was characterized by sensuous beauty in accurate imitation of nature. He lived at Athens, and his idealism is said to have been rather of form than of character. The picture referred to in the text represented Helen of Troy, was regarded as his masterpiece, and was probably identical with a picture mentioned as being at Rome. The story of the five maidens is said to have been cited by Tintoretto in support of his maxim, Art Must Perfect Nature. Note page 71. The Marquises Fabus and Gerardino di Siva were sons of the Marquis Giovanni, who was living as late as 1491, and belonged to one of the most illustrious families of Piedmont and indeed of all Italy. They were born towards the close of the 15th century and died about the third decade of the 16th, having obtained the investiture of their fief in 1521. They sided sometimes with the emperor and sometimes with France, as best suited them, and left rather a bad name. To escape punishment for killing a cousin, Gerardino stabbed himself, and Fabus also died, disperato, leaving two daughters in grief and shame. Note page 71 Ettore Romano Giovanali was a cavalier of whom little more is known than that he was in Francesco Maria's service, fought successfully as one of the thirteen Italian champions at Barletta, was afterwards 352 inches the service of the Duke of Ferrara, who dismissed him for an act of treachery. Note page 71. Carlo Vincenzo Calmita of Castel Nuovo, died 1508, was a courtly poet and prose writer, who had been secretary to the Duchess Beatrice d'Est of Milan. Later he enjoyed the especial favor of this lady's sister, the Marchioness Isabella d'Est of Mantua, and also of the Duchess of Urbino, who protected him from the displeasure of her brother the Marquis of Mantua. And at whose court he improvised verse somewhat after the manner of the Unico Aretino. In a letter, 1504, from Urbino to Isabella d'Est, Emilia Pia wrote, of news here there is none that is not known to you, except that Calmita is continually composing songs and diverse other things, and this carnival has written a new comedy. Which he would have sent you if he had thought it would give you pleasure. Among Calmita's works were a verse compendium of Ovid's Arzamandi, and a biography of his friend and fellow improvisatori, Serafino Simonelli di Aquila, see note. As known to us, his poetical writings do not rise above mediocrity, and wholly fail to explain the esteem in which they were held. Note page 71. Orazio Florido was a native of Fano, one of the Adriatic coast towns nearest to Urbino. Having been chancellor to Duke Guido Baldo, he became secretary to Duke Francesco Maria. When Francesco was combating the usurper Lorenzo de Medici in 1517, he sent one of his officers with Florido under protection of a safe conduct to challenge Lorenzo to personal combat. In spite of the safe conduct, Florido was detained and sent to Leo X at Rome, where he was basely tortured in the hope of extorting political secrets from him. He remained steadfastly faithful to his master, and afterwards made a tour of the courts of Europe seeking aid for his lord. Note page 73 Margarita Gonzaga was a niece of the Duchess of Urbino, being a natural daughter of the Marquis John Francesco of Mantua. She was for many years one of the ornaments of the Urbino court. Various mentions of her in contemporary letters show her as a woman of unusual beauty, sprightly wit and gay disposition. She had several suitors, apparently including Filippo Baraldo, who is mentioned later in the courtier, page. Note page 73. Of Barletta nothing more is known than what is contained in this and another shorter mention of him in the courtier, page. Beatrice d'Est. Duchess of Milan. 1475-1497. Reduced from bronze photograph, number 42. 371, of the portrait, in the Pitti Gallery at Florence, attributed to Piero della Francesca, 1420-1492. For an account of this and other portraits, see El Archivio Storico dell'Art for 1889. Some of the events of her short life are mentioned in note 398 at page 399 of this volume. Note page 73. The original reads, Havendo prima danzato una bassa, ballerono una rogars. The danza bassa was of Spanish origin and is believed to have consisted of sliding steps and of posturing, in which the feet were not lifted. 
The verb balaire seems to be derived from the low Latin bala, a ball. In the Middle Ages the game of ball was accompanied with 353 dance and song, and we may well believe that a class of dances, thus originating and denominated generally bali, were more animated than the danza bassa. Although a Greek derivation has been ascribed to the word rogars, Kean affirms that the dance thus named was of French origin. The earliest French translator of the courtier renders the word by Rouergues, which is apparently derived from Rouergue, the name of an ancient French province to the southwest of Lyons. Filippo Maria Visconti, Duke of Milan, 1391 to 1447, reduced from Girardin's photograph, number 254, of a drawing in the Louvre by Vittor Pisano, better known as Pisanello, 1380. 1451. Notes to the Second Book of the Courtier. Note page 75. This passage reflects the medico philosophical theories which the Renaissance inherited from antiquity, and which regarded the vital spirits as something far more tangible and material than what we call the principle of life or vital spark. Compare the early conception of electricity as a fluid substance. Complexion is of course here used to mean temperament or constitution, and not the mere color and texture of the skin. Note page 77. Duke Filippo Maria Visconti, born 1391. Died 1447, was the son of Giangoliato and Caterina Visconti, and brother of Giovanni Maria Visconti, whom he succeeded as Duke of Milan in 1412. He married Beatrice di Tenda, widow of Ficino Cain, who brought him nearly a half million of Florin's dowry, besides her husband's soldiers and cities, and thus enabled him gradually to win back the Lombard part of his father's duchy, which his brother had lost. He was very ugly in person, and so sensitive that he rarely appeared in public. Wily but unstable, he was continually plotting schemes that seemed to have no object, and he mistrusted his own generals, even Francesco Sforza, who turned against him, forced him to a ruinous peace. And after his death was soon able to seize his duchy. In him the cruel selfishness of the Renaissance tyrant did not degenerate into mad thirst for blood, as in the case of his terrible brother. He read Dante, Petrarch and French romances of chivalry, and even dallied with the Latin classics, but genuine learning was neglected and despised at his court. Duke Borso d'Est, born 1413 died 1471, like his brother and predecessor, was a natural son of Duke Niccolò III. Kindly and just, he was idolized by the Ferraris and especially by the women. He patronized letters and art and was fond of splendid living, yet in spite of the luxury of his court, he left a treasure of about a million pounds sterling. The art of printing was established at Ferrara shortly before his death. He appears to have been himself ignorant of Latin, and encouraged the literary use of Italian and the study of French romance. Histories of Ferrara, as well as the writings of contemporary humanists, are full of his generous deeds. His mild sway passed into a proverb, and the time of the good Duke Borso was long remembered as a kind of golden age. Note page 77. Nicol Piccinino, born 1380. Died 1444, was so humbly born as to possess no other surname than that conferred on him in ridicule of his small stature. Having served under the famous Braccio de Montoni, he married the latter's niece, and achieved such distinction as a soldier as to share with Francesco Sforza the fame of being the first condottiere of his day. 356 He became the friend and general of Duke Federico of Urbino. His rough wit was highly esteemed. Note page 77. This consciousness of the corruption then prevailing in Italy is even more frankly expressed by Machiavelli, it is but too true that we Italians are in a special degree irreligious and corrupt. Discorsi, I, 12. Note page 78. The reference here is to Plato's Phaedo, c. 3. Socrates is said to have turned Aesop's fables into verse. Note page 83. The Italian noun fierezza, rendered boldness, and the adjective fiero, more anciently ferro, the epithet applied by Petrarch to Achilles, see note, are derived from the Latin ferris, wild, untamed, impetuous. 
the root of which we see in our English word ferocious. While retaining its etymological signification, fiero was used to mean also, haughty, intrepid, strong, sturdy. Note page 87. Brawls, Italian, brandy. French, branless, were a kind of animated figure dance, said to be of Spanish origin and to have resembled the modern Catalan. A letter by Castiglione mentions this dance as having been performed by figures dressed as birds in one of the interludes when Bibiena's Calandra was first presented at Urbino. This and other passages suggest that the use of masks was even more common in Italian society of the author's time, than at the present day. Note page 88. Castiglione's letters show that he possessed and played upon a variety of musical instruments, and it is known that in Duke Federico's time, the Palace of Urbino was well supplied with instruments and musicians. Note page 88. Viol is the generic name for the family of bowed instruments that succeeded the medieval fiddle and preceded the violin. Invented in the 15th century, it differed from a violin in having deeper ribs, a flat back, and a broad centerpiece on which the sound post rested. Its neck was broad and thin. It had from five to seven strings, and was made in four sizes, of which the lowest pitched, the violona or double bass, is still in use. The tone of the instrument is said to have been penetrating rather than powerful. Note page 89. Wind instruments, and especially the flute, are here referred to. According to Plutarch, Alcibiades maintained that they were regarded with disfavor by Pallas and Apollo because the face is distorted in playing upon them. Niccolo Piccinino. 1380-1444. Reduced from Girardin's photograph, number 252, of a drawing, in the Louvre, by Vittor Pisano, better known as Pisanello, 1380-1451. Note page 90. The Pythagoreans supposed the intervals between the heavenly bodies to be determined by the laws of musical harmony. Hence arose the celebrated doctrine of, the music of the spheres, already referred to by Castiglione in the text, page 63. For in their motion the heavenly bodies 357 must each occasion a certain sound or note depending on their distances and velocities, which notes together form the musical harmony. Inaudible to man because he has been accustomed to it from the first and has never had an opportunity to contrast it with silence, or because it exceeds his powers of hearing. Pythagoras himself, died about 500 BC, taught his disciples to sing to the accompaniment of the lyre, and to chant hymns to the gods and to virtuous men. Note page 90. As the Italian commentator, Count Vesem, suggests, the author may have meant to say, shave twice a day. A weekly visit to the barber may, however, have been usually regarded as sufficient at this time. Note page 93. In the beginning of his encomium on folly, which was well known in Italy when Castiglione wrote the courtier, Erasmus pretends that, although there has been no lack of those who, at great cost of oil and sleep, have exalted. The fourth day ague, the fly, and baldness, with most tedious praise, folly is languishing without a eulogist. Among the works of Lucian, Flor. 160 AD, there is a brief humorous book in praise of the fly, the philosopher Favorinus, Flor. 120 A. D. is said to have written a eulogy on the fourth day ague, and there is another on baldness by the early Christian writer, Synesius, Flor. 400 A.D. The men of the Renaissance delighted in similar displays of wit. Note page 94. The Italian procella, rendered fury, primarily means a tempest, and is so translated in the earliest French and English versions of the courtier, Asturbalan, storm. The still earlier Spanish version has pestilentia. Note page 95. The Italian impedito, rendered palsied, literally means entangled as to the feet. Note page 96. St. Luke, 4, 8 and 10. Note page 97. In Aesop's fable, Asinus Domino Blandians, an ass receives a sound cudgeling for his efforts to win his master's favor by caresses that he was ill-fitted to bestow. Note page 100. Titus Manlius, called Torquatus from the chain, Torx, 
that he took from the body of a gigantic Gaul whom he had slain in single combat, was a favorite hero of Roman story. The incident referred to here occurred shortly before a Roman victory over the Latins at the foot of Vesuvius. Manlius and his colleague in command had proclaimed that no Roman might engage a Latin singly on pain of death, but a son of Manlius accepted a challenge from one of the enemy, slew his adversary, and bore the bloody spoils in triumph to his father. Who thereupon caused the young man to be put to death before the assembled army. Manlius was consul in 340 BC. Note page 101. Publius Licinius Crassus Mucianus was Roman consul in 131 BC. According to Livy, the incident narrated in the text occurred during an unsuccessful campaign against Pergamus, which ended in Crassus's voluntary death. Note page 103. Rome was sacked only the year before the Courtier was first published. Italy had become the plaything of foreign conquest. Note page 103. Darius III was king of Persia 336-330 BC. This story about his sword seems to be founded on the following passage in Quintus Curtius Rufus's History of Alexander the Great, at the beginning of his reign, Darius ordered his Persian scabbard to be altered to the form which the Greeks used. Whereupon the Chaldeans prophesied that the empire of the Persians would pass to those whose arms he had imitated. Note page 104. It will be remembered that Bembo was a Venetian. Note page 104. The coif, kufia, here mentioned seems to have been a kind of turban made of cloth wound about the head, with the two ends hanging at the ears. Note page 105. These unfortunate creatures still abound near Bergamo. Note page 106. Pilates and Orestes, like Pirithous and Theseus, are the famous friends of Greek legend. The historical and no less tender love between Scipio and Laelius forms the subject of Cicero's De Amicidia. See note 102. Note page 109. The fellow's reward is said to have been a measure of the peas. Note page 109. The Italian phrase here rendered goes against the grain, is non gli avra sang, more usually non ci avra al soa sang, and might be more precisely translated, will not suit his humor. The, as we say, suggests that the idiom was of recent origin in Castiglione's time. Maximilian I. Emperor of Germany. 1459-1519. Reduced from bronze photograph, number 34. 074, of the portrait, in the Imperial Museum at Vienna, by Ambrogio de Predis, Flor. 1500, in Morelli's, Italian Painters, London, 1892, pages 180-9, the picture is described as injured by restoration. See note 390. Note page 113. Jacopo Sanazzaro, born 1458, died 1530, was a native of Naples, and the son of Jacopo Nicolò and Masella di San Magno. His boyhood was spent with his mother at San Cipriano, near her birthplace Salerno. He soon made such progress in Latin and Greek that he was admitted to the academy of the famous Pontormo, of whom he became the close friend. Their effigies may be seen together in the Neapolitan church of Monte Oliveto. He received a villa and a pension from the scholarly Aragonese dynasty, to which he remained faithful with pen and sword, following Federico III into exile, see note, in 1501, and returning to Naples only after his king's death in 1504. He seems to have had a peaceful and honorable old 359 age, active in works of piety and charity, and employing his leisure in study and in the society of a certain noble lady for whom he had formed a lasting platonic friendship. His writings include marine eclogues, elegies, etc., in Latin, but his best-known work is L'Arcadia, an Italian prose romance interspersed with verse, of which sixty editions are said to have appeared before 1600. It is regarded by Mahaffey as having originated the idea that the Greek Arcadia was the especial home of pastoral poetry, and probably served Sidney as a model for his poem of the same name. Hardly less famous were Sanazaro's anti-Borgian epigrams, to which Simons ascribes no small part of the gruesome legend of Lucrezia's crimes. 
He was buried in a church built by him near the so-called Tomb of Virgil, and his monument behind the high altar bears the Latin inscription by Bembo, in which he is described as, near alike to Virgil's muse and sepulchre. Note page 113. Motet is, a term which for the last three hundred years has been almost exclusively applied to certain pieces of church music, of moderate length, adapted to Latin words, selected, for the most part either from Holy Scripture, or the Roman office books, and intended to be sung at high mass either in place of, or immediately after, the plain chaunt offertorium of the day. Grove. The motet was sometimes founded on the air of some non-sacred song, as in the case of Joskin's Stabat Mater, which was based upon the ballad Cum Femme. Ambrose. Note page 113. Joskin, more properly Jossi, de Press, born about 1450. Died 1521, seems to have been a native of St. Quentin, Hainaut, Belgium, and was one of the celebrated musicians of the Renaissance. Having been the pupil of Ockenheim, the greatest composer of the day, he was at the papal court of Sixtus IV, and successively in the service of Lorenzo de Medici, Louis XII of France, and the Emperor Maximilian I. He returned to Italy about 1503 and lived at the court of Ferrara. He is the earliest composer whose works are preserved in such quantity as adequately to present his power, and was called, the father of harmony, by Dr. Burney. Music began to be printed, 1498, when Joskin was in his prime. Note page 114. Other contemporary evidence amply confirms this account of the occasional grossness that marked the table manners of the period. Note page 115. The two princes here referred to are Ferdinand the Catholic of Spain, see note, and Louis XII of France, see note. Note page 116. Paolo Nicolo Vernia, called Nicoletto, Little Nick, from his shortness of stature, died 1499, was a native of Chiedi, near the Adriatic. He probably studied at Padua, and remained there teaching physics, although in 1444 he took his degree in philosophy, and fourteen years later in medicine. He wrote chiefly on philosophy, but was noted also as a wit. Note page 116. When Frederick Barbarossa attempted to govern the rebellious Lombard cities in the common interest of the empire, he established in their midst a foreign judge, called Podesta, quasi Habens Potsdatum Imperatoris in Hack Park. The title of Podesta was subsequently conferred upon the official summon to maintain an equal balance between the burghers and the nobles. Simons's Renaissance in Italy, edition 1883, I, 61. Note page 117. This was the Battle of Fornovo, July 6, 1495, in which the Italian forces under the Marquis John Francesco Gonzaga of Mantua failed to prevent the retreat of Charles VIII towards France. Both sides claimed a victory, and the Marquis even went so far as to have it commemorated by Montaigne in a picture, the Madonna of Victory, Louvre, which contains his portrait. Castiglione's father died from the effect of wounds received in this battle. Note page 117. The reference here is plainly to Leonardo da Vinci, see note 96. His contemporaries would naturally regard as chimerical such devices as steam cannon, paddle wheels for boats, and flying machines, or such hints as that contained in his Codex Atlanticus, where he suggests the possibility of steam navigation. He was the first to explain correctly the dim illumination seen over the rest of the surface of the moon when the bright part is only a thin crescent. He pointed out that when the moon was nearly new, the half of the earth which was then illuminated by the sun was turned nearly directly towards the moon, and that the moon was in consequence illuminated slightly by this earthshine. Just as we are by moonshine. This explanation, tended to break down the supposed barrier between terrestrial and celestial bodies. Arthur Berry's Short History of Astronomy, London, 1898. Note page 118. Suetonius mentions this characteristic of Caesar. Note page 119. This is one of the few passages in the Courtier that are plainly reminiscent of Dante, who says, To that truth which hath the face of falsehood, man must ever close his lips, semper a quel verce ha facia di menzogna. 
De Luom Chiuter La Labro. Inferno, 16, 124 to 5. Note page 121. The translator admits being at a loss to find an adequate equivalent for the Italian argosy. Our unfamiliar English adjective, arguta, suggests that kind of pungent and witty conceits which Castiglione is describing. Charles VIII of France. 1470-1498. Reduced from Alinari's photograph, no. 2749, of the anonymous bronze bust in the National Museum at Florence. See note. Note page 121. Bibiena's reputation as a wit was well established, while Canassa seems also to have deserved the same epithet, if we may judge from a story that has been preserved of him. The Count had at Rome a fine collection of silver plate, including a flagon with a lid in the form of a tiger. A friend having borrowed this flagon and kept it for two months, returned at 361 only on demand and with the request that the Count lend him a certain salt cellar, which had a crab for a cover. Ludovico sent word that if the tiger, which is the swiftest of beasts, had been two months coming home, the crab, being slower than all others, would by the same rule be absent for years, and that on this account he was unwilling to let it go. Note page 122. The allusion is of course to Bibiena's early baldness. Note page 122. Cardinal Gaelotto della Rovere, born about 1477. Died 1508, was the favorite nephew of Julius II, being a son of the Pope's sister Lucina by her first husband John Francesco Franciati, a patrician of Luca. Like all his mother's other children, he was adopted as of the Della Rovere name. Having been made Bishop of Luca, he was created a cardinal on his uncle's election as Pope, appointed pontifical vice-chancellor, and soon given a great number of benefices. Generous and amiable, and a patron of artists and authors, he was much beloved at the court of Urbino, as is shown by several documents, among which is a letter by Emilia Pia mentioning two sonnets of his. In one of which, written the day before his last illness, he foretold his early death. Note page 123. Giacomo Sansicondo, a noted musician who flourished between the years 1493 and 1522 at the courts of Milan, Mantua, Ferrara, Urbino and Rome, where he attained a wide celebrity in the pontificate of Leo X. He seems to have ended his days in adversity, in some degree relieved by his friend Castiglione, whose letters contain several affectionate mentions of him. Note page 124. Democritus, Flor. 400 BC. Was the atomistic philosopher of Abdera in Thrace. He possessed an ample fortune, and his cheerful disposition led him to look on the bright and humorous side of things, a fact taken by later writers to mean that he laughed at the follies of mankind. Note page 125. The phrase, served her in love and the conventional relation that it denoted, were drawn from medieval life and literature north of the Alps, and with some changes survived in Italy during the Renaissance. Until the Cavalier Servant became in the 18th century a recognized institution. Attendance upon the lady at church was a characteristic feature of the Cavalier's service. Note page 126. Pius III, Francesco Todeschini, born 1439. Died 1503, was a native of Siena and a nephew of the illustrious Ineas Silvius Piccolomini, Pius II. The suddenness of his predecessor Alexander V.I.'s death took the sacred college by surprise, and they unanimously elected their weakest member as Pope. His short pontificate of twenty-six days was filled with disturbances, and he was believed to have died from poison. Note page 126. Antonio Agnello, died after 1527, belonged to one of the most noted families of Mantua, and seems to have been the son of 362 Giulio Agnello and Margarita Crema. Besides being an able man of affairs, employed by the Paleologous rulers of Montferrat, he was a graceful poet, and became the friend of Bembo and Castiglione. Note page 126. The poet Caius Valerius Catullus, born about 87 BC, was a native of Verona and a friend of Caesar and Cicero. His extant works include 116 poems, lyric, epigrammatic, 
elegiac, etc. His 69th ode is a dialogue between the author and the door. Note page 127. Pope Nicholas V, Tommaso Parenticelli, born 1398, died 1455, was a native of Pisa, whence his family were exiled in his infancy. Although his father died when he was nine years old, and in spite of great poverty, he contrived to study at the University of Bologna. Later he served as tutor in the Albizzi and Strazzi families at Florence, thus earning enough money to return and take his theological degree at Bologna. He then entered the service of the Archbishop of the latter city, whom he accompanied to Florence, and there became a friend of Cosimo de' Medici and a member of the literary society of the place. In 1443 he was made Bishop of Bologna, and four years later was elected Pope, an elevation that he owed solely to his reputation for learning and to the comparatively small esteem in which the office was then held. The humanists were delighted at the election of one of their own number. As Pope, he devoted his revenues to maintaining a splendid court, to the rebuilding of the fortifications and palaces of Rome, and to the enrichment of scholars. During his pontificate the city became a workshop of erudition. He founded the Vatican Library, for which he collected 5,000 volumes, and the list prepared by him for Cosimo de' Medici to use in beginning the Library of San Marco, was followed also by Duke Federico of Urbino. He was a small, ugly man. Nihil Papa Valet, the Pope is good for nothing. Note page 127. I.e., in the second tale of the eighth day. Note page 127. Calandrino is an unfortunate and very amusing character appearing in the third and sixth tales of the eighth day and in the fifth tale of the ninth day. Note page 128. Niccolo Campani, called Strasino, born 1478. Died between 1522 and 1533, was an excellent actor of Sienese rustic comedies and farces, and the author of verses and of a lament that was very popular in the 16th century. He frequented the court of Leo X, and several of Castiglione's letters, 1521, tell of efforts to secure the actor's services for the Marquis of Mantua, and of furnishing him with twenty-five ducats, a horse, and a papal pass, for the purpose. Note page 128. This place, i.e., Urbino. Pope Nicholas V. Tommaso Parenticelli. 1398-1455. Enlarged from a colored cast of a medal, in the King's Library at the British Museum, by Andrea Guazzalotti, 1435-1495. See Armand's Les Meteors Italiens, I, 49, No. 6. Note page 129. The reader will hardly need to be reminded that the 363 great Roman orator was often spoken of as Tullius or Tully rather than as Cicero. Note page 129. When the courtier was expurgated by Antonio Ciccarelli in 1584, see list of editions, Dante's name was here substituted for that of St. Paul. The word becco, rendered he goat, has long been used by the Italians as a term of jocose reproach applied to a man whose wife is unfaithful. Note page 129. Duke Ercoli I d'Est, born 1431 died 1505, was the legitimate son of Duke Niccolò III and Rosarda di Saluzzo. Bred at the Neapolitan court, he became Duke of Ferrara on the death of his half-brother Borso, see note, in 1471. In 1473 he married Eleonora of Aragon, daughter of Ferdinand I of Naples. Among the six children of this union were, Isabella, who became Marchioness of Mantua, see note, Beatrice, who became Duchess of Milan, see note. Alfonso, who married Lucrezia Borgia and succeeded his father as Duke, and the Cardinal Ippolito already mentioned, see note. Although his reign was far from peaceful, his court was noted for its luxury and for the brilliancy of art and letters with which it was adorned. He was an especial patron of the theatre, no less than five comedies of Plautus being performed during the wedding festivities of his son Alfonso in 1502. On the other hand, he maintained relations with Savonarola, who was a native of Ferrara. Note page 130. 
Castellina was a small walled town in the Chianti Hills, which was held as a Florentine outpost against Siena. The siege referred to in the text took place in 1478, when the place capitulated to the Neapolitan and Papal troops after holding out for forty days. Duke of Calabria was the title regularly borne by the heir of each Aragonese king of Naples. The personage here meant must have been Alfonso the Younger, see note. Note page 130. While the meaning is not free from doubt, the point of the story seems to lie in the absurdity of the Florentine supposing that after being discharged from a cannon, a projectile would retain any poison previously applied to it. Note page 130. It will be remembered that Bembo was a Venetian, while Bibiena's birthplace was a Florentine town. Note page 130. This war lasted from 1494 to 1509, and proved ruinous to both sides. Castiglione's use of the past tense in speaking of it here doubtless arose from the fact that he was writing several years after the date that he assigns to the dialogues. Note page 131. Pistoia and Prato were two small cities which lay to the northwest of Florence and were subject to its rule. Modern issues of 364-inch fiat money are but a slight modification of the method proposed by the worthy Florentine. Note page 131. Bucentor was the name of the state galley of the Venetian Republic, used, among other occasions, in the symbolic ceremony of wedding the Adriatic, which was enjoined upon the Venetians by Alexander III, Pope 1159-1181, to commemorate their victory over the fleet of Frederick Barbarossa. On each ascension day a ring was dropped from the Bucentor into the Adriatic, with the words, We espouse thee, see, in token of true and lasting dominion. The vessel bore the image of a centaur as figurehead. Of the last of several successive Bucentaurs, demolished in 1824, a few fragments are preserved in the arsenal at Venice. In the 15th and 16th centuries the name was applied to state vessels of ceremony elsewhere. By some the word is supposed to be derived from the Greek beta omicron, ox, and kappa nu tau alpha upsilon rho omicron, centaur, by others it is regarded as a corruption of the Latin du centorum, of two hundred oars, or of the Italian Buzino d'oro, golden bark. Girolamo Donato. 1457-1511. Enlarged from a photograph, courteously furnished by the director of the Municipal Art Museum at Milan, of a small anonymous bar-leaf belonging to the Taverna collection. See Armand's Les Metiers Italiens, 2, 226, Number 11. Note page 133. This tale, not unworthy of Munchausen, may have been suggested to Castiglione by a passage in one of the minor works of Plutarch, who relates that Antiphanes, a friend of Plato, said that he visited a certain city where words froze as soon as spoken, by reason of the great cold. And later, sounds uttered in winter melted in the spring and were heard by the inhabitants. Although Plutarch represents the story as told an illustration of the way in which those who came as young men to listen to Plato's talk understood it only long afterwards, when they had grown old, it is worth noting that an Antiphanes of Berga in Thrace is known as a writer on the marvelous and incredible. Note page 133. Vasco da Gama rounded the southern extremity of Africa and reached India nine years before the date of the Courtier Dialogues. Note page 133. This must have been Emmanuel I, who was king of Portugal from 1495 until his death in 1521, and who promoted the expeditions of da Gama and other Portuguese navigators. Note page 134. Taffety was a very light soft silk fabric. There is extant a letter of Bembos, 1541, in which the aged cardinal orders two cushions filled with swan's down and covered with crimson taffety. The word is said to be derived from the Persian tafta, twisted, woven. Taft is the name of a town in central Persia. Note page 134. Annibal Paolato, died 1516, belonged to an ancient and honorable Bolognese family, with which Castiglione is known to have been on friendly terms, and was the son of an eminent jurist, Vincenzo Pelato, who died in 1498. Leo X made Annabale a senator of Bologna in 1514, 
the brief being written by Bembo. Note page 135. Jacopo di Nino was Bishop of Potenza from 1506 until 1521, and seems to have been a butt for the ridicule of Leo X's court. Note page 136. An earlier version of this passage reads, and of this kind was what Rinaldo in the Morganta said to the giant, where do you hang your spectacles? The Morganta Majori is a serio's burlesque romantic poem by Luigi Pulsi, 1431-1487, introducing, among other characters of medieval romance, Rinaldo, his cousin Orlando, and the giant Morganta. Note page 136. Gaelato Marzi de Narni, born about 1427, died about 1490, a singular example of the adventure humanist, studied at the universities of Padua and Bologna, and taught at the latter place. He twice visited the court of Matthias Corvinus of Hungary, for whom he wrote a book on jests. He was something of an astrologer and also the author of a work on chiromancy. Being accused of heresy, he was imprisoned at Venice in 1477, and condemned to make public recantation in the Piazzetta with a crown of devils on his head. He is said to have been learned and witty. The story given in the text became almost proverbial. Note page 136. The present form, bisticho, of bisticho, rendered, playing on words, has a meaning somewhat different from that indicated in the text. Being the term applied to a succession of words the similarity of whose sound renders them difficult to pronounce, e. g. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Note page 136. At this time the general use of family names was comparatively recent, and their form was somewhat variable. Thus, such surnames as Pio and Fragoso were treated as still being, what they doubtless originally were, merely personal epithets, and so were given the feminine form, Pia, Fragosa, when applied to women. The adjective Pia means dutiful, pious, kind, while Impia or Empia of course means the reverse. Note page 136. The greatest of the furies is my bedfellow. With a change of one syllable in the Latin, this becomes furiarum maxima juxta acubat, the greatest of the furies lies hard by, Aeneid, v. 605-6. Note page 136. Geronimo Donato, born 1457. Died 1511, was a native of Venice, where he held many public offices, besides being sent abroad as ambassador of the Republic, especially to the courts of Alexander VI and Julius II. He also enjoyed no small fame as a cultivator of science, art and letters, particularly Greek and theology. The incident narrated in the text occurred during his embassy to Alexander, to whom on another occasion he made a far wittier retort. Being jestingly asked by the Pope where Venice got its right of lordship over the Adriatic, he answered, Let your holiness show me the title deed to the patrimony of Esti. Peter and on the back of it will 366 be found inscribed the grant to the Venetians of their dominion over the Adriatic. Note page 136. In the Roman church at Station, Stasi 1, is a church where indulgences are granted at certain seasons. In earlier times such churches were visited in solemn procession, which afterwards came to be regarded as an opportunity for social recreation. The word is used also to designate the indulgences earned by visiting, on appointed days, many churches founded by popes. Note page 136. As many stars as heaven, so many girls hath thy Rome, Ovid's Arzamandi, I, 59. Note page 136. As many kids as the pasture, so many satyrs hath thy Rome, is as close an English rendering as Donato's Latin will bear. Note page 136. Marcantonio della Torre belonged to an ancient noble family of Verona, was a famous anatomist, and is said to have included Leonardo da Vinci among his pupils. He died at the age of thirty, and was highly praised for his learning. His father Geronimo lectured on medicine at Padua. Pietro Barazzi became Archbishop of Padua in 1487, and died in 1507. Bondello, who had read the courtier in M.S., relates the same story in somewhat wittier form, 
but gives the name of the prelate as Gerardo Landriano, Bishop of Como. Note page 137. St. Luke, 16, 2. Note page 137. St. Matthew, 25, 20. Note page 137. Proto de Luca was one of the most famous buffoons who enlivened the pontifical court at the beginning of the 16th century. If, as seems probable, the incident in question occurred in January 1506, when Bernardino late died and was succeeded by Antonio de Castriani as Bishop of Cagli, a town near Urbino, the Pope in question must have been Julius II, to whom the epithet, very grave, would be entirely appropriate. Note page 138. The play is upon the word office in its two meanings of post or employment, and breviary or prayer book. In the latter sense, the full office contained the psalms, lessons, etc. While the Madonna's office was much abbreviated. Note page 138. Giovanni Calfurnio, born 1443, died 1503, was a gentle and laborious humanist, born at or near Bergamo, but long resident at Padua, where he held the chair of rhetoric. His chief work consisted in correcting and commenting upon the texts of Latin poets. The Another Man at 367 Padua was probably Raphael Reggio, a fellow professor with Calfurnio, who publicly ridiculed his colleague as the son of a charcoal burner. Calfurnio seems to have published very little, on his death he bequeathed his library to the Church of San Giovanni in Verdara, from which his tomb and portrait relief have recently been removed to a cloister of the monastery of St. Antony at Padua. Giovanni Calfurnio. Died 1503. From a photograph, specially made by Agostini, of the anonymous tomb relief removed from the church of San Giovanni di Verdara to a cloister in the monastery of Sant'Antonio at Padua. Note page 138. Tommaso Ingarami, Fedra, born 1470, died 1516, was a native patrician of Volterra, town about midway between Pisa and Siena, being the son of Paolo Ingarami and Lucrezia Barlatani. Having passed his early boyhood at Florence, he removed to Rome in 1483, where he played the part of Phaedra in Seneca's tragedy Hippolytus, upon which Racine founded his Phaedra, with such success that the name clung to him for life. The play being interrupted by an accident to the scenery, he filled the interval by improvising Latin verses for the entertainment of the audience. The performance took place in the mausoleum of the Emperor Hadrian, which was afterwards converted into the fortress known as the Castle of St. Angelo. Tommaso was employed by Alexander VI in diplomatic affairs, crowned poet by the Emperor Maximilian I, and made a canon of the Lateran and of the Vatican. He seems to have been connected with the Vatican Library as early as 1505, and became its prefect. Although Erasmus called him the Cicero of his time, his fame now rests rather on his portrait in the Pitti Gallery at Florence, than on his works. Note page 138. Camillo Paolato was a brother of the Annibal Paolato already mentioned, see note. On his father's death in 1498, he went to Rome, where he became the friend of Federico Fregoso, Bembo and Castiglione. He taught rhetoric at Bologna and was Chancellor of the Senate there. There also he is said to have died in 1530, although a letter of Bembo speaks of him in 1518 as then already dead. Note page 138. Antonio Porcaro, or Porzio, belonged to a noble Roman family, and was a brother of the Camillo Porcaro mentioned in the Courtier, at page 140. He had also a twin brother Valerio, whom he so closely resembled that the two were often mistaken, one for the other, as Bibiena says in the preface to his Calandra, the plot of which is founded upon a similar resemblance. Little more is known of Antonio than that he suffered some grievous wrong from Alexander VI. Note page 138. Regarding Giantomaso Gaelato, Kean furnishes no information. The Spanish annotator, Fabi, adds Marcio, Marzio, to his name, thus apparently treating him as identical with the Gaelato de Narni mentioned above at page 136, and says that he died, by reason of his great corpulence, from a fall from his horse. Being in the train of Charles VIII of France, 
when the latter entered Milan. As, my Lord Prefect, was only four years old when Charles entered Milan in 1494, this identification seems clearly erroneous. Note page 139. Filippo Baraldo, born 1472, died 1518, belonged to a noble Bolognese family. Having been one of his famous uncle Filippo the Elder's most brilliant pupils in the classics, he was at the age of 26 made professor of literature at Bologna, and afterwards at Rome. In 1511 he successfully defended Duke Francesco Maria of Urbino against the charge of murdering Cardinal Aladosi. Instead of seeking to extenuate the deed, as done in heat and under strong provocation, he boldly justified it on the ground that his client was the instrument chosen by the Almighty to rid the world of a monster of wickedness. And eloquently appealed to the tribunal to spare a hero whose promise of future usefulness was precious to Italy. Beraldo was secretary to Cardinal Giovanni de Medici, and on the latter's election as Pope, he was made provost of the Roman Academy, while at Ingarami's death he was made librarian of the Vatican. As a reward for editing the recently discovered first five books of Tacitus's Annals. He died at Rome, partly, it is said, from vexation at not being paid the stipend of his office. Bembo wrote his epitaph. Although he was celebrated for erudition and eloquence rather than for authorship, he left three books of odes, and one of epigrams, in Latin. Note page 139. The pupil obviously used the phrase in its low Latin meaning, Master, God give you good evening. Beraldo jocosely accepted it in its classical meaning, Master, God give you good, late. Note page 139. Evil to thee, soon. Note page 139. Diego de Chignans, died 1512, was a Spanish cavalier, of whom Brantome writes as follows, This great captain had for lieutenant, with a company of one hundred men-at-arms, Don Diego de Quignones, who supported him in his combats and victories. And was truly a good and brave lieutenant to him. After the great captain's death, he had sole command of his company of an hundred men-at-arms, as he well deserved to have. He commanded it at the Battle of Ravenna, where he died like a brave and valiant captain. And if all had behaved as he did, say the old Spaniards, the victory that the French won there would have cost them dearer than it did, although it cost them dear. Note page 139. Don Gonzalvo Hernán y Aguilar, better known as Consalvo de Córdoba, or the Great Captain, born 1443, died 1515, was a native of Montilla, near Córdoba, and belonged to an ancient family of Spanish grandees. His father's name was Pietro, and his mother's was Elvira Aria. Bred to war in early youth and knighted on the field of battle at the age of sixteen, he followed the fortunes of Ferdinand the Catholic, and took an active part in the conquest of Granada. In 1494 he was sent to Italy to aid Ferdinand II of Naples against Charles VIII, won a long succession of victories over the French, and was finally made constable and viceroy of Naples. Later, Ferdinand the Catholic, listening to slanderous reports regarding 369 him, deprived him of office, and in 1507 recalled him to Spain, where he died in disgrace. His good qualities were much admired by Castiglione, who had fought against him, but his fame was not unstained by acts of cruelty and bad faith. Which, it is fair to say, were common at the time and seem to have been committed only against his master's foes. Giorgione is said to have painted his portrait at Venice, and a life of him by Paolo Giovio was published at Florence in 1552. Consalvo de Cordoba. The Great Captain. 1443 to 1515. Enlarged from a negative, specially made by Alinari through the courtesy of Professor I. B. Supino, of Annibal's Medal in the National Museum at Florence. See Armand's Les Meteors Italians, I. 176. Note page 139. The Spanish word vino means not only wine, but also he came. In pronunciation it would be easily mistaken for why no. Why no low conicists is the Spanish for, and thou knewest him not. Compare St. John, I, 11. Note page 139. The word Murano, 
here rendered heretic, meant a renegade more, and is said by Simons to have been generally used in Italy at this time as a term of reproach against Spaniards. Note page 139. Giacomo Sadolito, born 1477, died 1547, was a native of Medina and the son of a noted jurist, Giovanni Sadolito. He studied Latin at Ferrara and Greek at Rome, where he settled in the pontificate of Alexander VI and acquired a great reputation for learning. Leo X appointed him a secretary at the same time with Bembo, who shared with him the name of being the best Latinist of the day, and soon made him Bishop of Carpentras, a town fifteen miles northeast of Avignon. He was secretary also to Clement VII, to whom he boldly declared that the sack of Rome, 1527, was inflicted by God as a punishment for human wickedness. Paul III created him a cardinal in 1536. A sincerely pious man, he was conscious of the evils of the Church and did not escape suspicion of heresy. He was a close friend of Vittoria Colonna, and the Roman Academy often met at his house on the Quirinal. Besides Latin poems, one of which, on the newly discovered Laocoon group, made him famous, his works include commentaries on the Psalms and the Epistle to the Romans. And a Latin exhortation to the princes and people of Germany against Lutheran heresies. Although far from rich, he was very charitable, especially in providing young men of his flock with the means of education. Note page 139. Ludovico de San Bonifacio is identified by Kian as a Paduan, who held the offices of protonotary and private chamberlain under Leo X, successfully disputed with Bembo the possession of a canonry at Padua in 1514. Was sent to different courts by Leo, and died at Padua in 1545. Ercoli Rangwan, died 1572, belonged to an illustrious family of Medina, and achieved some note as a soldier and diplomatist, having commanded the Florentine forces in 1529, and served as Ferrari's ambassador to France, Spain and Germany. He was esteemed by Castiglione, of whose wife Ippolita Torello he seems to have been a kinsman. The Count of Pepoli probably belonged to a noble Bolognese family of that name, but has not been identified with certainty. Note page 140. Of Salazza della Pedrada nothing seems to be known beyond the mention of him in the text. Note page 140. Palla degli Strazi, born 1372, died 1462, was a wealthy and cultivated Florentine patrician. Having honorably filled high offices of state, he was banished by Cosimo de' Medici in 1434 for ten years to Padua. Himself an enthusiastic scholar and patron of classical studies, he caused many Greek MSS. To be brought into Italy, including works of Plato, Aristotle and Plutarch, and was the first Italian to collect books for the express purpose of founding a public library. In the execution of which design he was prevented by his exile from anticipating Cosimo. He employed learned Greeks to read to him, and was instrumental in inducing Chrysoloris to teach at Florence, an engagement regarded by Simons as having secured the future of Hellenic study in Europe. The story narrated of him in the text is elsewhere told of an exile belonging to the Albizzi family. Note page 140. Cosimo de Medici, Pater Patri, born 1389, died 1464, was a Florentine banker, statesman and patron of literature and art. In his father Giovanni's house of business he cultivated the rare faculty for finance that he afterwards employed in public administration and private commerce. He inherited his father's vast fortune in 1429, and made it a practice to lend money to needy citizens and at the same time to involve the affairs of Florence with his own, thus not only attaching individuals to his interests but rendering it difficult to control state expenditures apart from his own bank. He understood also how to use his money without exciting jealousy, and while he spent large sums on public works, he declined the architect Brunelleschi's plans for a residence more befitting a prince than a citizen. He was an early riser, and temperate and simple in his life. While ruling Florence with despotic power, he seemed intent on the routine of his counting house, and put forward other men to execute his political schemes. Despite occasional checks, 
he so firmly established the influence of his family as the real rulers of Florence that they were not permanently expelled until the 19th century. Much of his power was due to sympathy with the intellectual movement of the age, and although he was not a Greek scholar, he had a solid education, and collected mises, gems, coins and inscriptions, employing his commercial agents in the work. During a year of exile, he built a library at Venice, and later he built one at Florence and another at Fiesola. His house was the center of a literary and philosophical society, which included all the wits of Florence and the strangers who flocked to that capital of culture. Note page 140. Camillo Porcaro, or Porzio, died 1517, was a brother of the Antonio Porcaro already mentioned in the Courtier, at page 138, see note 233. He was a professor of rhetoric at Rome, and a canon of St. Peter's. Leo X made him bishop of Teramo, a town near the Adriatic northeast of Rome. He was a member of the Roman Academy, and some of his Latin verse has survived. Cosimo de Medici. Pater Patri. 1389-1464. Enlarged from a colored cast of a medal, number 31, in the King's Library at the British Museum, attributed to Niccolò Fiorentino. Note page 140. Marcantonio Colonna, died 1522, the son of Pier Antonio Colonna and Bernardina Conti, was a second cousin of Vittoria Colonna. His wife Lucrezia Guerra della Rovere was a niece of Julius II and sister of the Cardinal Gaelato della Rovere already mentioned, at page 122, see note. In 1502 he fled from Rome to escape the persecution of the Borgias, repaired to the Kingdom of Naples, and took service under the Great Captain. He served also in the armies of Julius II, Maximilian I, and Francis I, and took part in nearly all the wars of his time. He was cited as a model of physical beauty and martial prowess. Note page 141. Diego Garcia is regarded by the Spanish annotator, Fabi, as identical with the famous warrior Diego Garcia de Paredes, born 1466. Died 1530, who began the life of a soldier at the age of 12, and had a brilliant share, with the great captain, in the expulsion of the Moors from Spain and later in the Italian campaigns. He was a man of great height and strength, and is said on one occasion to have stopped the wheel of a rapidly moving windmill with his single hand. Charles V made him a Knight of the Golden Spur, and he is often called the Chevalier Bayard of Spain. Note page 141. Louis XII, born 1462, died 1515, was the son of Duke Charles d'Orleans and Anne of Cleves. He accompanied Charles VIII into Italy in 1494, became king on his cousin's death in 1498, and the following year married Charles's widow Anne of Brittany. In 1500 he expelled Duke Ludovico Sforza of Milan, to whose duchy he laid claim as the grandson of Valentina Visconti. The following year he conquered Naples in alliance with Ferdinand the Catholic, but quarreled with his ally over the division of the country, with the result that his force was defeated by the great captain at Garigliano in 1503, and withdrew from Naples in 1504. He joined the League of Cambrai against Venice in 1508, but in 1511 the Holy League was formed against him, and in 1513 the French were again compelled to leave Italy. On the death of Anne of Brittany in 1514, he married Mary, the youthful sister of Henry VIII of England, to whom in dying, January 1, 1515, he is reported to have said, Dear, I leave thee my death as a New Year's gift. He was sincerely regretted by his subjects, and was known as, the father of his people. Michelet says of him, he was a good man, honest by nature, sometimes absurd, indiscreet, talkative, testy. But he had a heart, and the only way for men to flatter him was to persuade him that they desired the good of his subjects. Among his sayings was, good king, stingy king, I prefer to be ridiculous to my courtiers, than deaf to my people. Note page 141. Gem or Zizim, born 1459, died 1495, was a son of Muhammad II, the conqueror of Constantinople. On the death of his father in 1481, he tried to dispossess his brother as sultan, but being defeated, 
he sought refuge at Rhodes, where the Knights of the Order of St. John received him for a while, and then sent him to France. In 1489 he was surrendered to the custody of Innocent VIII, from whom he passed into the hands of Alexander VI. 372 Both these pontiffs received a subsidy for his maintenance from his brother the Sultan. In 1495 Charles VIII took him to Naples, where he was imprisoned and soon died from the effect, it is supposed, of poison administered at Rome by order of Alexander VI. Of his life at the papal court, we get the following glimpse in a letter from Montaigne to the Marquis of Mantua, the Turk's brother is here, strictly guarded in the palace of His Holiness, who allows him all sorts of diversion, such as hunting, music, and the like. He often comes to eat in this new palace where I paint, i.e., the Belvedere, and, for a barbarian, his manners are not amiss. There is a sort of majestic bearing about him, and he never doffs his cap to the Pope, having in fact none. He eats five times a day, and sleeps as often, before meals he drinks sugared water like a monkey. He has the gait of an elephant, but his people praise him much, especially for his horsemanship, it may be so, but I have never seen him take his feet out of the stirrups, or give any other proof of skill. He is a most savage man, and has stabbed at least four persons, who are said not to have survived four hours. A few days ago, he gave such a cuffing to one of his interpreters that they had to carry him to the river, in order to bring him round. It is believed that Bacchus pays him many a visit. On the whole he is dreaded by those about him. He takes little heed of anything, like one who does not understand or has no reason. His way of life is quite peculiar. He sleeps without undressing, and gives audience sitting cross-legged, in the Parthian fashion. He carries on his head sixty thousand yards of linen, and wears so long a pair of trousers that he is lost in them, and astonishes all beholders. Note page 141. The Grand Turk in question was Bajazay II, born 1447. Died 1512, who succeeded his father, Muhammad II, the conqueror of Constantinople, in 1481, was almost uninterruptedly engaged in war with Hungary, Venice, Egypt and Persia, was deposed by his son Selim, and died soon afterwards. He was repeatedly invited by Alexander VI to invade Europe and fight the Pope's Christian enemies. The friendly relations between the two were closely connected with the captivity of Bajazay's brother, just mentioned. As a token of his gratitude, the Turk sent Innocent VIII the Lance of Longinus, the centurion who was supposed to have pierced the Saviour's side on Calvary and afterwards to have been converted to Christianity. As a reward for the death of his brother, he sent Alexander VI a sum of money equivalent to over £500,000 sterling, and a tunic alleged to have been worn by the Saviour. These, however, were intercepted by the Pope's enemy, Giuliano della Rovere, afterwards Julius II. Note page 142. The Archbishopric of Florence was occupied by Roberto Falco from 1481 until his death in 1530. The Alexandrian Cardinal is the name by which Gianantonio di San Giorgio, born 1439, died 1509, was commonly known. At the age of 27 he became professor of canon law at Pavia. In 1479 he was made Bishop of Alexandria, and soon afterwards called to Rome and made an 373 auditor of the Ruota, see note, which office he continued to hold until he was created a cardinal in 1493. He was regarded as the most eminent jurist of his day. Bajazay II of Turkey. 1447-1512. Enlarged, with the courteous permission of the director of the New York Public Library, from a photographic copy of an engraving in Paolo Giovio's Eulogy. Note page 142. Besides the mention of this Nicoletto in the text, nothing more seems to be known of him beyond the following anecdote. Of Messer Nicoletto de Orvieto, it is narrated that, being in the service of that very courteous pontiff Pope Leo, he once won the lasting favor of His Holiness with only four words. For one day, the talk turning upon a certain vacant benefice which was sought after by a member of the Vitelli family to whom it could be given, he said humorously, Holy Father, fitness requires that it be by all means conferred on Vitello, calf. The more because it has no nearer or closer kinsman than he is, playing on the word, vacant, 
which he seemed to derive from Vaca, cow, the mother of the calf. Garzoni's L'Ospedale de Pazi in Curabili, Piacenza, 1586, page 142. Note page 142. Antonio Camelli, born 1440. Died 1502, called Pistoia from the name of his birthplace, was a prolific writer of verse, chiefly sonnets of a humorous and satirical character, which have no small historical value. He spent the larger part of his life in the service of the Dest at Ferrara, and in that of Duke Ludovico Sforza, of Milan, to whom he remained faithful in adversity. An edition of his verse was published at Turin by Rainier in 1888. The Serafino here mentioned is identified by Kean as a now almost forgotten lyric poet, Serafino Simonelli, born 1466. Died 1500, who was a native of Aquila, 55 miles northeast of Rome, and a welcome guest at the courts of Naples, Rome, Urbino, Mantua, and Milan. His verse was by some preferred to that of Petrarch, and the unbounded popularity which he enjoyed was doubtless due to the skill with which he improvised to his own accompaniment on the lute. He was a short ugly man of elfish appearance. Note page 142. Giovanni Gonzaga, born 1474, died 1523, was the third son of the Marquis Federico of Mantua and Margarita of Bavaria. He married Laura Bentivoglio, fought in his youth against Charles VIII, and in 1512 was in the service of the Sforza family. He was employed also by his brother John Francesco, Marquis of Mantua, in political negotiations. In 1519, on the death of Lucrezia Borgia, he wrote to his nephew, the new Marquis Federico of Mantua, Lucrezia's death occasioned much grief throughout the city, and his ducal highness in particular displayed extreme distress. Men here tell wonderful things of her life, for the last ten years she wore a hair shirt, and for two years she has been in the habit of confessing every day, and of attending communion three or four times a month. Note page 142. Giovanni's son Alessandro Gonzaga was born in 1497, and died in 1527. Note page 142. Giacomo Datri, or Diadria Piscina, was made Count 374 of Pianella by Ferdinand II of Naples in 1496, as a reward for faithful service. He acted as confidential secretary to the Marquis John Francesco of Mantua in various wars, and especially in the campaigns against Charles VIII. Note page 143. Philip II of Macedon, the conqueror of Greece, was born 382 and died 336 BC. Note page 143. This retort has by others been ascribed to a Florentine ambassador at Siena, and his name given as Guido del Palagio. Note page 144. Mario de Maffei de Volterra, born 1464. Died 1537, occupied successively the offices of archpriest at Volterra, sacristan of the Vatican, bishop of Aquino, and bishop of Cavalon in France. Note page 144. Agostino Bevazano or Biazano, Flor. 1500-1550, was born at Treviso, near Venice, of which republic his ancestor Francesco had been chancellor in the 15th century. His own portrait hung in the Grand Council Chamber at Venice. He lived some time in Venice, but in 1514 he was employed as secretary by Bembo and sent to Leo X at Rome, where he resided chiefly until 1526. Besides being a noted writer of Italian and Latin verse, he acquired great skill in public affairs and came to be regarded as an oracle at the papal court. Late in life he was painfully afflicted with gout, and passed the last years of his life at Verona and at Treviso, where he died and was buried in the cathedral. Note page 145. The Marquis Federico Gonzaga of Mantua, born 1440. Died 1484, was the son of the Marquis Ludovico and Barbara of Brandenburg, and married Margarita, daughter of Duke Albert III of Bavaria. His family attained sovereign power at Mantua in 1354 and continued to exercise it for nearly four centuries. Having succeeded to the Marquisate on the death of his father in 1478, he expelled from Italy the Swiss who were besieging Lugano, 
joined the Milanese in a league against the Pope in 1479, and in 1482 joined another league against Venice. He is said to have committed suicide. Note page 145. Niccolo Leonico Tomio, born 1456, died 1531, was a native of Venice, and belonged to an Albanian family. He studied Greek under Calcondolas at Florence, and for many years taught philosophy at Padua, being the first Italian to expound Aristotle from the original text. He wrote philosophical and moral dialogues and also some Italian verse. His friend Bembo wrote of him, an illustrious philosopher both in life and learning, equally versed in Latin and Greek, wherein he lived and dwelt, leaving ambition and thirst for riches to others. He was also a wit. Note page 145. Agostino Foglietta, died 1527, was a Genoese nobleman, who exercised great authority at Rome under Leo X and Clement VII. 375 He was a warm friend of Castiglione, who received cordial aid from him in the efforts that were made on behalf of Francesco Maria della Rovere. He was slain in the sack of Rome by a shot from an arquebus. In other MS. Versions of the courtier the names of Fedra, Tommaso and Garami, and Antonio di Tommaso appear in place of Foglietta's. Alfonso I of Naples. 1385-1458. Reduced from Girardin's photograph, no. 137, of a drawing, in the Louvre, by Vittor Pisano, better known as Pisanello, 1380-1451. The drawing is believed to have been used in designing medals. Note page 146. Giovanni di Cardona was a Spanish soldier in the service of the great captain and of Cesare Borgia. He had a brother Hugo, mentioned at page 147, see note, and another brother Pedro, who was Count of Gossolano. Giovanni seems to have fallen at the Battle of Ravenna in 1512. Note page 146. Of Alfonso Santa Croce nothing more is known than is contained in this mention of him in the text. Note page 146. Francesco Aladosi, Cardinal of Pavia, died 1511, was descended from the lords of Imola, being the second son of the lord of Castel del Rio. Having been educated for the church, he attached himself to Cardinal Giuliano della Rovere, whose lasting gratitude he won by steadfastly refusing to poison the cardinal at the desire of Alexander VI. On the accession of Julius II, he was rapidly promoted in spite of the objections raised in the consistory on the score of his questionable character. He was made Bishop of Miletus, Bishop of Pavia, a cardinal, 1505, Legate of the Patrimony, Legate of Romagna, and Archbishop of Bologna. In these offices he proved violently tyrannical and a ruthless and bloody persecutor, especially of the Bolognese partisans of the Bentivogli, so that the city rose against him in 1511 and drove him out. His assassination by young Francesco Maria della Rovere has been already mentioned, see note. The odium connected with his name finds an echo also in another passage in the text, page 151. Note page 146. Alfonso I of Naples, born 1385. Died 1458, succeeded his father Ferdinand the Just as King of Aragon in Sicily in 1416, and in 1435 managed to enforce against René of Provence his double claim to Naples. Based upon his descent from the former Hohenstaufen rulers of that kingdom, and also upon his adoption as heir by the last Angevin Queen of Naples. Scholarly, enlightened, generous and benevolent, he was the ideal type of royal Messinus and the hero of his century. He often went afoot and alone about his capital, saying that, a father, walking amid his children, has naught to fear. On one occasion when a galley full of soldiers and sailors was about to sink, and the men he had ordered to their rescue were hesitating, he leaped into a skiff, crying, I prefer to be the companion rather than a spectator of their death. When Constantinople fell into the hands of the Turks in 1453, he welcomed learned refugees to his capital, his court was a meeting place for the savants of his time. And even when engaged in war, his captains might be seen gathered near their king, listening to his exposition of Livy instead of wasting their leisure at games of chance. 
He was noted also for his gentle 376 disposition and merry humor and seems to have deserved his title of the Magnanimous. Note page 147. The Battle of Serignola, a town in Apulia near Cannae, the scene of one of Hannibal's victories, was fought April 28, 1503, between the Spanish army under the Great Captain and the French forces of Louis XII and resulted in the defeat of the latter with the loss of more than half their men. Note page 147. Hugo di Cardona, a brother of the Giovanni already mentioned, was a Spanish soldier who fought under Cesare Borgia and the great captain, and was killed by the hand of Francis I at the Battle of Pavia in 1525. Note page 147. This is a corruption of the name of Saint Erasmus, a Syrian bishop who suffered martyrdom about 304, and became a favorite saint among the sailors on the Mediterranean. His name is given to certain electrical phenomena often seen at sea and on land also. Note page 147. Ottaviano Abeldini, died 1498, was the son of a famous condottiere, Bernardino Abeldini, and Ora di Montefeltro, a sister of Duke Federico. His father having died in 1437, he was bred at the court of Urbino and became the trusted counselor of his uncle Federico, who left to him the guardianship of the young duke, Guido Baldo. To personal valor and address in statecraft he united, if we may trust the rhymed chronicle of Raphael's father, a knowledge of classic literature, and a taste for music and the other fine arts. He is known to have been a zealous cultivator of astrology. By some writers Duke Federico, the circumstances of whose birth were not free from mystery, was believed to have been an Abaldini, and this Ottaviano was openly regarded as his brother. Note page 147. Antonello de Forli was a soldier of fortune who died before May 1488, and of whom little seems to be known apart from this anecdote. It is found also in two other books, where the witty Florentine is named as Cosimo de Medici. Note page 147. San Leo was a fortress perched on an almost inaccessible crag 18 miles northwest of Urbino. It is mentioned by Dante, Purgatorio, for, 25, and also by Machiavelli, Art of War, for, as a place of great natural strength. When in the spring of 1502 Cesare Borgia disclosed his hostile designs against Duke Guido Baldo, the latter, knowing that he could not hold out at Urbino, retired to San Leo, but soon afterwards fled in the garb of a peasant. And the castle was surrendered. In the same year, however, it was recaptured by stratagem. In the spring of 1503 it was besieged by the adherents of Borgia, and bravely defended for six months by Ottaviano Fregoso and the Castellan Latanzio de Bergamo, referred to in the text, in the Hope 377 of succor from Guido Baldo, who had taken refuge at Venice. Kean says that the place at last fell and was not again recovered by Guido Baldo until after the death of Alexander VI. On the other hand Denistown, 2, 13, asserts that by a reinforcement of 25 men the castle was enabled to hold out until Guido Baldo's restoration. He assigns the incident in the text to the first capture, 1502, gives the name of the castellan as Scarmiglione de Foglino, and affirms that the surrender was treacherous. Cesare Borgia. 1478-1507. Reduced from Alinari's photograph, no. 13438, of the portrait, in the Correre Museum at Venice, formerly ascribed to Leonardo da Vinci, but recently attributed by Berenson to Francesco Beccaruzzi. Note page 147. Duke Valentino, i.e. Cesare Borgia, Duke of Valentinois, born 1478. Died 1507, was an openly acknowledged son of Cardinal Rodrigo Borgia, afterwards Alexander VI, by Rosa Venazza, who was the mother also of Cesare's sister Lucrezia. Created a cardinal on his father's accession, he procured the murder of his brother Giovanni in 1497, resigned his cardinalate the same year, was given the French duchy of Valentinois in 1498, and married Charlotte d'Albret daughter of the King of Navarre, in 1499. Having been created Duke of Romagna by his father in 1501, he proceeded to reduce the various fiefs comprised within his intended domain, 
including the Duchy of Urbino. After the death of Alexander VI, Cesare was held in captivity by Julius II and by Ferdinand the Catholic, escaped to his father-in-law's court in 1506, and fell in battle the following year, the very day after the close of the courtier dialogues. Handsome, accomplished and subtle, he was a patron of learning and an adept in the cruel and perfidious politics of his day. Upon his public career is founded the famous Principe of Machiavelli, who says, if all the Duke's achievements are considered, it will be found that he built up a great superstructure for his future power. Nor do I know what precepts I could furnish to a prince better than such as are to be derived from his example. Note page 148. Literally, it must be believed to have been in despair. Note page 148. Publius Cornelius Scipio Nasica, Scipio with the pointed nose, was an eminent Roman jurist who was consul in 191 BC, and own cousin of Scipio Africanus the Elder. Note page 148. Alonso Carrillo is said by Kean to have been one of the many Spaniards who lived at Rome in the service of popes and cardinals belonging to that nation. The Spanish annotator Fabi identifies him as a son of Don Luis and Donna Costanza de Rivera. Note page 148. My Lady Bodilla. Kean's identification of this lady as Beatriz Fernandez de Bobadilla, Marchioness of Moya, is confirmed by the fact that Boscan's translation, 1534, gives her name as the Marchioness of Moya instead of My Lady Bodilla. She and her husband are warmly mentioned in a codicil to Isabella the Catholic's will, as being among that queen's most dear and faithful friends. Note page 149. In this passage, Antonio Ciccarelli's expurgated edition 378, 1584, substitutes a painter of antiquity for Raphael, certain Roman senators for the two cardinals, and Romulus and Remus for St. Peter and St. Paul. The picture in question has been identified as one painted by Raphael in 1513-14 for the Church of San Silvestro. Note page 149. Aught else, upon thy shoulders, i.e., a head. The Cato referred to was probably Marcus Porcius Cato Eudicensis, born 95 BC, died 46 BC, the Roman philosopher and patriot who espoused the cause of Pompey, and committed suicide on hearing of Caesar's victory at Thapsus. Note page 150. This queen must have been Isabella the Catholic, see note 391. Note page 150. Raffaello de Pizzi, born 1471, died 1512, was a native of Florence, but was bred away from his home, doubtless owing to the proscription of his family for participation in the Pizzi conspiracy against Lorenzo and Giuliano de' Medici. Having fought for Cesare Borgia and later for Julius II, he was captured by the French in 1511, and was slain the following year in the Battle of Ravenna. Note page 150. The prior of Messina is now identified by Kian as a Spanish soldier, Don Pedro de Cuna, who was killed at the Battle of Ravenna in 1512. Note page 151. Of Paolo Tolosa nothing more is known than is contained in the text. Note page 151. Like purple in Roman times, rose was the aristocratic color at this period. Cosimo is reported by Machiavelli, Storia Fiorentina, 7, 6, to have said that, two L's of rose-colored cloth make a man of quality. Note page 151. John Otto de Pizzi is regarded by Kian as possibly identical with a certain Florentine, Giovanni de Pizzi, who was born in 1476 and died in 1528. Note page 151. Of Antonio Rizzo nothing more is known than is contained in the text. Note page 151. The renunciation of a benefice, i.e. the notarial deed or testament by which a priest resigned his benefice or prebend in favor of someone else. Note page 151. Antonio Torello, died 1536, was private chamberlain to Julius II and Leo X, who conferred a canonry and several prebends 379 upon him in 1514. In the briefs he is designated as a priest of the Diocese of Foglino, 
and is given certain benefices there, which had fallen vacant on the death of another priest. We thus infer that Torello must have been familiar with the subject referred to in the text. He was made a Roman citizen in 1530. Note page 151. These two hunchbacks have not been identified. The wheel, La Ruota or Rota della Giustizia, or simply La Rota, was the highest civil and criminal court of Rome prior to 1870. Its name may have originated in the circular arrangement of the judges, auditors, seats, compare the hemicyclium of Cicero's time, or possibly in a wheel-shaped porphyry figure set in the pavement of the hall where they sat. The play is of course on the double meaning of the word torto, crooked, wrong. Note page 151. Latino Giovanni de Minetti, born 1486, died 1553, was a native of Rome, and a canon of Esti. Peters, but being of minor rank he had a wife and children. He held various offices, including that of Commissary General of Roman Antiquities, and was employed in several papal embassies. A writer of Latin and Italian verse, he was a friend of Castiglione, Bembo, and Bibiena, and is mentioned in the autobiography of Cellini, who says that he had a pretty big dash of the fool in him. Apparently because he presumed to improve one of the sculptor's designs for a crucifix. Note page 152. Peralta is regarded by Kean as probably identical with a certain Captain Luig Gallego de Peralta, who bore a letter, 1521, from Castiglione at Rome to the Marquis Federico of Mantua, then fighting against the French. In this letter Castiglione speaks of having known Peralta for years as, a man of character and a valiant. Kean regards him as identical also with a certain Colonel Peralta, whose death at the Battle of Frosinone is mentioned, in a letter of 1526, among those of other Spaniards. Mallard is identified by Kean as the French soldier of fortune, Mallard, who commanded a battalion of Gascons at the Battle of Ravenna, April 11, 1512, and who fell there bravely fighting by the side of Gaston de Foy. Aldana afterwards served under the Marquis of Mantua at Pavia in 1522, having been summoned, as was Castiglione also, from Rome at the head of his company. Note page 152. The duel in question is thus described by Brantome in his Discourse on Duels, the Grand Master de Chaumont, the King's Lieutenant in the State of Milan, also allowed a duel to two Spaniards who had asked it of him. The name of one was Signor Peralta, who had formerly been in the King of France's service, and the other Spaniard was called Captain Aldana. Their combat was on horse, a la Jeanette, Jeanette, with rapier and dagger and three darts to each man. Peralta's second was another Spaniard, and Aldana's was the gentle Captain Mallart. It had snowed so much that their encounter took place in the piazza at Parma, from which the snow had been cleared, and there being no other barriers than the 380 snow, each of the two combatants did his duty right well. And at last my lord de Chaumont, who had appointed the ground and was umpire, caused them to retire with equal honor. Note page 152. Kean inclines to regard this master Marcantonio as identical with a certain eccentric physician of the same name, who lived at Urbino and was the author of a fantastic law book and a long comedy. Of Baton de Cecina nothing more is known than is contained in the text. Note page 152. Three sticks, i.e., the gallows. Note page 152. Of the three persons bearing the name Andrea Kasha and known to have lived at this time, it is uncertain which one is here referred to. Note page 152. AMS. Copy of the courtier contains the following passage, again a Venetian, forgive me, Messer Pietro, coming to visit my lady Madalena, sister to my lady Duchess, as soon as he was near he offered her his hand, but without removing his cap. My lady Madalena drew back a step, and drew back her hand too, saying, Gentle sir, put on your cap, cover your head. He still advanced and offered his hand, whereupon she replied, I will never do it, unless you cover. Thus the poor man was so put to shame that he at last removed his cap. Under similar circumstances Madame Bernhard is said to have reproved Edward VII, then Prince of Wales, by feigning not to recognize him with his hat on. Note page 152. 
My Lord Cardinal, i.e., Giovanni de' Medici, afterwards Leo X, born 1475, died 1521. He was the second son of Lorenzo de' Medici and Clarice Orsini, and an elder brother of the Magnifico of the Courtier. Made a cardinal at the age of thirteen, and exiled from Florence with the rest of his family in 1494, he was present at the election of Alexander VI. Of whose character he is said to have shown true appreciation at the time by remarking, We are in the wolf's jaws. He will gulp us down, unless we make good our flight. During the reign of Julius II, he seems to have been subservient to that pontiff, and in 1511 was a member of the court of six cardinals which acquitted the young Duke of Urbino of the charge of murdering Cardinal Aladosi. The pontificates of Alexander and Julius had exhausted Italy with wars, and the Christian world, weary of their scandalous violence, hailed with relief the accession of the cultivated and seemingly gentle young prelate, Giovanni de' Medici. Of his reign, so brilliant in art and letters, so disastrous to the Church, it is enough to say that the key is found in the famous phrase with which, on his elevation to the chair of St. Peter, he greeted his brother Giuliano, Let us enjoy the papacy, since God hath given it us. To him the immortality of the soul was an open topic for debate, while he regarded sound Latinity and a ready tongue as more important than true doctrine and pure living. Sincerely zealous for the diffusion of liberal knowledge, he was extravagantly munificent to artists, scholars and authors. Like all his 381 family, after the first Cosimo, he was a poor financier, and on his sudden death he was found to have pawned the very jewels of his tiara. His reckless expenditure led to the sale of indulgences, and thus in no small degree to the progress of the Reformation. Ludovico Sforza Duke of Milan 1451-1508. Enlarged from a part of Alinari's photograph, no. 14351, of the marble tomb sculptures, now in the Certosa di Pavia near Milan, by Cristoforo Solari, known as I.L. Gobo, died 1540. Note page 153. Biagino Crivello was one of Duke Ludovico Sforza's captains, and is mentioned, July 1500, in a list of Sforza adherents who had rebelled against Louis XII, and whose possessions were declared forfeit. The list speaks of him as keeping himself at Mantua and in Venetian territory, and as owning no attachable property in the Milanese. In April of the same year an ineffectual demand had been made upon the Marquis of Mantua for the surrender of Crivello and other chiefs of the Sforza party. Note page 153. The Duke, i.e., Ludovico Sforza, I.L. Moro, born 1451. Died 1508, was the fourth son of the Francesco Sforza whom Duke Federico of Urbino had helped to become Duke of Milan, and whose father, a peasant condottiere, Musio Attendolo, became known as Sforza by reason of great personal strength. And of Bianca Maria, a daughter of the last Visconti Duke of Milan. Early noted for his physical and mental qualities, Ludovico read and wrote Latin fluently, had a tenacious memory, and was a ready speaker. He was tall and of strongly marked features. Unlike his horrible brother Galeazzo Maria, he shunned bloodshed. Banished from Milan after his brother's assassination in 1476, he returned in triumph in 1479, and assumed the guardianship of his nephew Giangaliazzo, for whom he chose as bride his sister's child, Isabella, see note. Daughter of Alfonso II of Naples. Having first sought the hand of Isabella d'Est, see note, who was already betrothed to the Marquis of Mantua, in 1491 he married her younger sister Beatrice, see note whose influence is by some said to have led him to aggravate the humiliation of his young nephew and niece, the rightful duke and duchess. Being threatened by the latter's father, the king of Naples, Ludovico invited Charles VIII to enter Italy, 1494, and assert the Angevin claim to Naples. His unhappy nephew died the same year, not without suspicion of having been poisoned by the uncle's order, who thereupon assumed the title as well as the despotic power of duke. Becoming alarmed at the rapid success of the French in Italy, he joined the league formed against them, and was afterwards punished for his treachery by being expelled from Milan by Louis XII and carried to France. It is said that at the time of his capture, 
the only favor he asked was to be allowed the use of a volume of Dante. He died a prisoner in the castle of Lox, where, after a vain effort to escape, he was confined in an underground dungeon. At the height of his prosperity his revenues exceeded those of any Italian state except Venice. Policy and also his natural taste for intellectual pleasures led him to copy the Medici in their patronage of art and letters. He aspired to make his capital a modern Athens, and sought to attract men of fame and talent from far and wide. Both Leonardo da Vinci and the architect Bramante were in his pay. Note page 153. Servia is a little town on the Adriatic, between Ravenna and Rimini. A Dominican, Tommaso Catanii, was bishop of the diocese from 1486 to 1509. The pope referred to in the text was Julius II. Note page 155. Montefiore Inn was a proverbial expression for a bad hostelry. The rustic inns of Italy at this period were usually wretched and for the most part kept by Germans. Note page 156. One Andrea Castillo was secretary to Leo X, and died in 1545. Note page 156. Kean identifies this Cardinal Borgia as the Francesco, born 1441, died 1511, who was raised to the purple by Alexander VI, and s known as a schismatic. Note page 156. The modern form of ballator is ballerino. Although the distinction is not free from doubt, there seems to be reason for believing that danzer was the term applied to the more stately forms of dance, while ballet was reserved for more animated movements. See note 147. Note page 157. The Bergamasque was and still is regarded as the rudest and most rustic of the Italian dialects. Note page 157. Except as applied to a small Tuscan stream or torrent, flowing near Aquapendant and Orvieto, and finally tributary to the Tiber, the name Paglia does not occur in modern Italian geography. In his autobiography, Cellini mentions crossing the little stream on his first journey from Siena to Rome. Later in the 16th century, Montaigne records, in his diary of a trip into Italy, having spent the night at La Pale, Italian, Paglia and describes it as, a small village of five or six houses at the foot of several barren and ill-favored mountains. Note page 157. They seem to have been playing Primero, the modern Primera, a game much in vogue at this time. Note page 158. Loreto is a small hill town near Ancona, and is celebrated for its pilgrimage shrine of the sacred house, Santa Casa, which was reputed to have been the veritable dwelling of the Virgin, miraculously transported by angels from Nazareth, and set down in Italy in 1294. In 1511 and again in 1524 Castiglione wrote to his mother that he was preparing to go to Our Lady of Loreto in fulfillment of a vow. The name was said to be derived from that of the widow upon whose land the house was deposited by the angels. Note page 158. Aquapendant is the name of a small town 67 miles northwest of Rome. Note page 159. Monsignor of San Pietro ad Vincula was the title of Cardinal Galato della Rovere, see note. Note page 159. Monsignor of Aragon was the title of Cardinal Ludovico of Aragon, born 1474, a natural son of Ferdinand I of Naples, and a half-brother of Alfonso II. C note, and Federico III of Naples, C note 401. He was not elevated to the purple until 1519. Castiglione's mention of him as a cardinal in dialogues supposed to take place twelve years earlier, doubtless arose from a natural confusion between the time when and the time of which they were written. Note page 159. The Banshee Banks, was the name of a street in Rome well known in the 15th and 16th centuries. Containing the offices of the papal curia and magistrates, it became a preferred neighborhood, and was enriched with fine buildings, among which was the counting house of Julius II's finance minister, Agostino Chigi, the greatest banker of his day. Note page 159. The Chancery, Cancelleria, was a palace designed about 1500 by Bramante for Cardinal Rierio, 
but at this time used for public offices and as the residence of Cardinal Gaelado della Rovere, who had enlarged and embellished the building. It was not far from the banks. Note page 159. San Celso was the name of a street and church near the banks. The saint, Celsus, whose memory is thus perpetuated was born at what is now Simiez, near Nice, suffered martyrdom at Rome under Nero, and was finally put to death, together with his master, St. Nazarius, at Milan in the year 69. Note page 160. Cesare Beccadello is regarded by Chian as possibly identical with a certain Bolognese, who was the son of Domenico Maria Beccadello, married Landomia Fassanini, and was living at the papal court as late as 1559. The Spanish annotator Fabi suggests that he was the father, 1502, of the author Ludovico Beccadello, who was a follower of Bembo and wrote biographies of Petrarch and others. Note page 161. These are characters occurring in the third, sixth and ninth tales of the eighth day, and in the fifth tale of the ninth day. Note page 161. This knavish student seems to be identical with a certain Caio Caloria Ponzio, who was born at Messina. Of his life little more is known than that he studied law at Padua between 1479 and 1488, and, after residing two years at Venice, returned to Sicily. For an account of a short poem by him in praise of Venice, and of his dialect comedy dedicated to the Marquis of Mantua, see Vittorio Rossi's Caio Caloria Ponzio, e la poja vulgar letteraria di Sicilia nel secolo XV, reprinted, Palermo. 1893, from the Archivio Storico Siciliano, n. s. a. 18. Note page 161. The only belfry at Padua answering to this description is said to be that of San Giacomo. Note page 162. Gonella. This name was borne by two famous jesters employed by the Dest family. The one here referred to was probably the later of the two, who lived at the courts of Dukes Niccolò III in Borso, was the son of a Florentine glover Bernardo Gonella, and married one Cecalapi. The next buffoon referred to was probably Ludovico Miliolo, who acted as steward to the court of Mantua about 1500, and was a brother of the goldsmith and sculptor Bartolomeo Miliolo, 1448-1514. He was called the father of jests. Note page 163. This is an instance of the use of the word calunnia, rendered imputation, in its primitive sense of malicious accusation without reference to truth or falsity. Note page 164. These characters occur in the sixth tale of the third day, and in the seventh and eighth tales of the seventh day of Boccaccio's Decameron. Note page 164. The queen here mentioned is of course Isabella the Catholic, see note. Note page 164. Fabi says that this Countess of Castagneda was Brasida de Almada, daughter of a Portuguese cavalier Juan Baez de Almada and Violante de Castro, of the same nation. She was a lady-in-waiting to Queen Isabella, and her husband Don Garci Fernandez Manrique, third Count of Castagneda and first Marquis of Aguilar, took part in the conquest of Granada. Note page 167. If unconvinced by the Decameron, readers of the Corbacho will surely be persuaded of the justice of this opinion. Note page 167. According to one form of the legend of Orpheus, his grief at the final loss of his wife Eurydice, when his lyre had all but enabled him to recover her from Hades, led him to treat contemptuously the Thracian women. Who avenged the insult by tearing him in pieces under the excitement of their Bacchanalian orgies. Note page 167. Braxesque leave, una licentia braciesca in the Aldine Folio of 1528, and una licentia braciesca in the more correctly printed Aldine Folio of 1545, is a phrase derived from the name of Braccio Fortebraxi. A captain who was famous for his violence to friend and foe, and whose followers were called Braxeschi. To give a man Braxesque leave meant to dismiss him with blows. Note page 169. Although in this and a few other passages, Castiglione 385 uses virtue in the sense of our virtue, 
he more often gives it its etymological meaning of manliness, which the present translator has generally rendered by worth. In considering a word like this, we must take into account the character of him who uses it. To Machiavelli, as no doubt to most of his contemporaries in Italy, virtu meant simply that combination of strength, courage, tenacity, and cunning that enables a man to achieve his ends, whether good or bad. Notes to the Third Book of the Courtier Note page 171 Achaia, here used as synonymous with Greece, was the name given to that country when conquered by the Romans and made a province. Olympia was not in Achaia proper, but in the adjoining district of Elis, some forty miles south of the modern Patras. The site has been thoroughly excavated by German archaeologists, the most noted discovery being that of the Hermes of Praxiteles and the Victory of Peonius. Note page 172. That is to say, nude. According to the familiar Greek myth, Eris, goddess of discord, to avenge her exclusion from the nuptials of Peleus and Thetis, threw among the wedding guests a golden apple inscribed to the fairest. A dispute arising between Aphrodite, Hera and Athena concerning the apple, Zeus appointed the shepherd Paris to decide their claims. The prize having been awarded to Aphrodite, she aided Paris to carry off the beautiful Helen of Sparta, and thus gave rise to the Trojan War. Note page 173. The Order of Esti. Michael was instituted in August 1469, by Louis XI of France, and was highly esteemed down to Castiglione's time, but later suffered in estimation, owing to the freedom with which membership was bestowed. Francis I wore the insignia of the order at the Battle of Pavia, 1525. Note page 173. The Order of the Garter was instituted by Edward III of England in 1344. He assigned to its use the chapel, at Windsor, of St. George, who was its patron saint. Duke Guido Baldo of Urbino having, like his father, been made a knight of the order, Castiglione went to England in 1506 to receive the insignia on the duke's behalf. Note page 173. The Order of the Golden Fleece was instituted by Duke Philip the Good of Burgundy, paternal grandfather of Charles V's paternal grandmother, in 1429 in honor of his third marriage, to Elizabeth of Portugal. Its badge, a golden ram, is shown in our portraits of Charles V and his grandfather Maximilian I. Note page 173. The King of Persia at this time was Ismail Sufi I, born 1480, died 1524. He was descended from a family of noted piety, whose peculiar beliefs became the origin of the national Persian faith. Having been proclaimed Shah in 1499, after nearly a century of disorderly government by the successors of Timur the Tartar, he spent most of his reign in enlarging and assuring his dominions. And founded the dynasty that was to rule Persia 388 until 1736. He waged an unsuccessful war with Selim I of Turkey, the son and successor of Bajazay II, and died while on a pilgrimage to his own father's tomb. His subjects revered him as a saint. Note page 174. The lady whom I know is of course the Duchess. Note page 175. Pygmalion will be remembered as the legendary sculptor king of Cyprus, who fell in love with an ivory statue that he had made of a beautiful girl, and prayed to Aphrodite to breathe life into it. His prayer being granted, he married the girl, who was called Galatea. Note page 181. The opinions here ascribed to Plato, are found in the fifth book of his, Republic, but seem to have undergone serious change when he wrote his, Laws. Note page 182. The comparative merits of man and woman were much discussed in Greek antiquity and during the Renaissance, and formed the subject of a copious literature in which Castiglione's contribution occupies no unimportant place. Note page 184. The reference here is to a fragment of the so-called Orphic hymns, beginning, Jove the end, Jove the beginning, Jove the middle, all things are of Jove, Jove male, immortal virgin Jove. In this and other respects the theogony to which the name of Orpheus is attached, is closely related to the most ancient religious systems of India. Note page 185. 
The author probably refers to Aristotle's tenth problem. Note page 188. The reference here is doubtless to Jerome's 54th epistle, on widowhood, and to his first tract against Javinianus, both written about 394 AD. He was born in what is now the Hungarian town of Striden about 340, and died in a monastery at Bethlehem for 20 AD. Perhaps his best remembered work is the Vulgate or Latin translation of the Bible. Note page 189. If not chastely, then discreetly. Note page 190. Octavia, born 70, died 11 BC, was a great niece of Julius Caesar, and became the second wife of the triumvir Mark Antony for the purpose, ultimately vain, of cementing the alliance between him and her brother Augustus. Her beauty, accomplishments and virtues proved unavailing against the wiles of Cleopatra, who induced Antony to divorce her. After Antony's death, she remained true to the interests of his children, including those by his first wife and by Cleopatra. Through the two daughters that she bore to Antony, she became the grandmother of the Emperor Claudius, and great-grandmother of his predecessor Caligula and of his successor Nero. Note page 190. Portia's first husband was Marcus Bibulus, who was consul with Caesar in 59 BC. She inherited her father's republican principles, courage and firm will, and was her second husband Brutus's confidant in the conspiracy against Caesar. On his death at Philippi in 42 BC, she put an end to her life. Note page 190. Caia Cecilia Tanaquil appears in Roman legend as the second wife of King Tarquinius Priscus, endowed with prophetic powers, closely connected with the worship of the hearth deity, expert in healing, and a model of domestic virtues. The traditional date of her husband's reign is 616 to 578 BC. Note page 190. Cornelia, the mother of the Gracchi, born about 189 BC, died about 110 BC, wrote letters that had survived in Cicero's day and were prized for their style. Even in her own lifetime the Romans erected a statue in honor of her virtues. Left a widow with twelve young children, she devoted herself wholly to their training, and rejected all offers of marriage, including that of Ptolemy. Note page 191. Plutarch, from whose history the narrative in the text is a paraphrase, describes Alexandra as being actuated in her regency solely by ambitious motives. Her husband, Alexander Genius, was the son of Johannes Hyrcanus and brother of Aristobulus I, whom he succeeded as second king of the Jews after the Babylonish captivity. His reign, 104-78 BC, was marked by atrocities. Note page 191. The reference here is to Mithridates VI, Eupater, king, 120-63 BC, of Pontus on the southern shore of the Black Sea. In the life of Lucullus, Plutarch relates that having been utterly defeated by the Romans in 72 BC, Mithridates gave order to have his wives Bernice and Monoma put to death together with his sisters Statyra and Roxana, in order to prevent them from falling into the hands of the enemy, while he himself took refuge with his son-in-law. Statyra is described by Plutarch as grateful to her brother for not forgetting her amid his own anxieties, and for providing her the means of an honorable death. Note page 191. This Hasdrubal was the general of the Carthaginians in their last struggle with Rome. When Scipio captured Carthage in 146 BC, Hasdrubal surrendered, while it is said that his wife, after upbraiding him for his weakness, flung herself and her children into the flames of the burning temple in which they had sought shelter. Note page 191. In fact, Harmonia was Hiero's granddaughter, and the wife of a Syracusan named Themistus, who, after the death of Hiero in 215 BC, was chosen one of the leaders of the commonwealth and afterwards perished in a fresh revolution. Death was then decreed against all surviving 390 members of Hiero's family, and Harmonia was slain together with her aunts, Demerata and Heraclea. Note page 192. The reference is of course to the familiar story of the obstinate dame who persisted in declaring that a certain rent had been made with scissors, and whose husband vainly tried to change her mind by plunging her in a pond. 
Each time she came to the surface, she cried, scissors, until, unable to speak from strangulation, she stretched forth her hand and made the sign of the instrument with two fingers. In a coarser form, the story was current in Italy even before Castiglione's time. Note page 192. The conspiracy in question was discovered in 65 AD. Tacitus relates that Epicharis strangled herself with her girdle while on the way to be tortured a second time. Note page 192. Leina was an Athenian Hittira beloved by Aristogeiton. When he and Harmodius had slain the tyrant Hipparchus in 514 BC, she was supposed to be privy to their plan, and died under torture. The statue in question is mentioned by Pausanias and said by Plutarch, in his essay on garrulity, to have been placed upon the gates of the Acropolis. Recent archaeologists identify its site as being on the level of the Acropolis, near the southern inner corner of the Propylia. Note page 192. Massilia became the modern Marseilles. Note page 192. This story is taken from the memorable doings and sayings of Valerius Maximus, Flor. 25 AD, in which Castiglione mistranslates the Latin word publis, at the public charge, as publicament, publicly. Note page 192. Of several persons of this name, the one here referred to was probably the Roman consul, 14 AD, a patron of literature and a friend of Ovid. Had the Magnifico been allowed to finish his sentence, he would, following the narrative of Valerius Maximus, have doubtless added the name of a town in Asia Minor, Julida. Note page 195. This story, which was used by Tennyson for his play of The Cup, is found in Plutarch's tract Concerning Women's Virtue, where the scene is placed in Galatia, in Asia Minor. Note page 197. The number of the Sibyls is usually reckoned as ten, Persian, or Babylonian, Libyan, Phrygian, Delphian, Sumerian, Erythrean, Samian, Trojan, Tibertine, and Cumean, of which the last was the most famous. Note page 197. Aspasia, Flor. 440 BC. Was born at Miletus in Asia Minor, but in her youth removed to Athens, where she was celebrated for her 391 talents and beauty, and became the mistress of Pericles, one of whose orations she is said by Plato to have composed. Her house was the center of intellectual society, and was even frequented by Athenian matrons and their husbands. Note page 197. Diatima was a probably fictitious priestess of Mantinia in the Peloponnesus, reputed to have been the instructress of Socrates. Her supposed opinions as to the origin, nature and objects of life, form the subject of Plato's Symposium. Note page 197. Nicostrate or Carmenta was a prophetic and healing divinity, supposed to be of Greek origin. Having tried to persuade her son Evander to kill his father Hermes, she fled with the boy to Italy, where she was said to have given the Roman form to the fifteen characters of the Greek alphabet that Evander introduced into Latium. Note page 197. This preceptress, to Pindar was Myrtis, a lyric poetess of the 6th century BC. She is mentioned in a fragment by Carina as having competed with Pindar. Statues were erected to her in various parts of Greece, and she was counted among the nine lyric muses. Note page 197. Of Pindar's life little more is known than that he resided chiefly at Thebes, and that the dates of his birth and death were about 522 and 443 BC respectively. Practically all his extant poems are odes in commemoration of victories in the public games. Note page 197. The Greek poetess Carina, 5th century BC, was a native of Tanagra in Boeotia. She is said to have won prizes five times in competition with Pindar. Only a few fragments of her verse remain. Note page 197. Sappho flourished about 600 BC, and seems to have been born and to have lived chiefly at Mytilene. She enjoyed unique renown among the ancients, on hearing one of her poems, Solon prayed that he might not see death before he had learned it, Plato called her the tenth muse, and Aristotle placed her on a par with Homer. 
For a recently discovered and interesting fragment of her verse, see the Egypt Exploration Funds, Oxyrhynchus Papyri, Part 1. Note page 198. Castiglione here follows Plutarch. Pliny, on the other hand, affirms that Roman women were obliged to kiss their male relatives, in order that it might be known whether they had transgressed the law forbidding them to drink wine. Note page 199. This paragraph is taken almost literally from Livy, accepting the incident of the babies born in arms, which Castiglione seems to have invented. Note page 199. Titus Tatius was the legendary king of the Sabines. His forces were so strong that Romulus was driven back to the Saturnian hill, which had previously been fortified and which became the site of the capital. The familiar story is to the effect that Tarpia, daughter to the captain of the fortress, being dazzled by the Sabines' golden bracelets, promised to betray the hill to them if they would give her the ornaments on their left arms. Accordingly she admitted the enemy at night, but when she claimed her reward, they threw down upon her the shields that they wore on the left arm, and thus crushed her to death. Her infamy is preserved in the name of the neighboring Tarpian rock, from which traitors were flung down. Note page 199. There is said to be no historical mention of any Roman temple to Venus Armada. Castiglione may have had in mind a passage in the Christian Cicero, Lactantius Firmianus, who wrote about 300 AD. Recording the dedication by the Spartans of a temple and statue to the armed Venus in memory of their women's brave repulse of a sudden attack by the Messenians during the absence of the Spartan army. Note page 199. Calva, bald, was one of the Roman Venus's most ancient epithets, under which she had two temples near the capital. Of the several explanations of this appellation, Castiglione seems to refer to the one which interprets it as the memorial of the Roman women's heroism in cutting off their hair to make bowstrings for the men during a siege by the Gauls. Note page 200. In his Life of Camillus, died 365 BC, Plutarch gives a legendary account of the origin of the Handmaidens' Festival. At a time when the Romans were ill-prepared for war, the Latins sent to demand of them a number of free-born maidens in marriage. This was suspected as a trick to obtain hostages, but no method of foiling it was devised until Tutula, a slave girl, advised the magistrates to send her to the Latin camp along with some of the most beautiful handmaidens in rich attire. This was done, and at night, when her companions had stolen away the enemy's weapons, Tutula displayed a signal torch agreed on with the Romans, who at once sallied forth, easily captured the Latin camp, and put most of the enemy to the sword. Note page 200. The Romans are said to have wearied of Cicero's self-praise for his suppression of the Catiline conspiracy, 63 BC. The woman in question was a Roman patrician, Fulvia by name, who was the mistress of one of the conspirators and divulged the plot to Cicero. Note page 200. This Demetrius, too, was grandson to the Demetrius I already mentioned, see note, and ruled over Macedonia from about 239 to about 229 BC. His son, Philip V, 237 to 179 BC, joined Hannibal in a war against Rome, which finally ended in the downfall of the Macedonian monarchy and the captivity of his son and successor Perseus, 167 BC. The incident mentioned in the text is narrated by Plutarch in his work on Women's 393 Virtue, as also is the instance next cited by Castiglione, who however reverses the order of events. Anne of Brittany Queen of France 1476-1514 Enlarged from a negative, specially made by Alinari through the courtesy of Professor I. B. Supino, of a medal, in the National Museum at Florence, by Jean Perille, 1460-1528. See Note Note page 200. Erythri was an important city on the west coast of Asia Minor opposite Chios. The nearest approach to Laconia, in ancient geography is the distant town Laconum in what is now Slavonia, between the Danube and the Save. Note page 201. Plutarch's version of this story adds that in honor of the Persian women's bravery on this occasion, Cyrus, 
559 to 529 BC, decreed that whenever the king returned from a long journey, each woman should receive a ring of gold. Note page 201. One of Plutarch's minor works is entitled Apothems and Famous Sayings of Spartan Women, and Castiglione's contemporary Marcantonio Casanova wrote two Latin distiches on the Spartan mother slaying her son. Note page 201. Saguntum, the modern Merviedro, was a city of Greek origin on the eastern coast of Spain. After a desperate siege of nearly eight months, it was captured by Hannibal in 219 BC. Note page 201. The reference here is to the victory, at Vercelli near Milan, by which the Roman general Caius Marius repelled the advance of the Cimbri into Italy, 101 BC. The sacred fire, supposed to have been brought from Troy by Aeneas as the symbol of Vesta, the hearth deity, was kept alive at Rome by six virgins. Note page 202. Amalasantha, 498-535 AD. Was the daughter of Theodoric the Great, and regent of the East Gothic Kingdom from his death in 526 until her own. After a prosperous reign she is said to have been strangled by her cousin and second husband Theodatus, at the instigation of the Empress Theodora, the wife of Justinian. Note page 202. Theodolinda, daughter of Duke Garibald of Bavaria, married, 589 AD. Authoris, king of the Lombards, and on his death in the following year, she married Duke Agilolf of Turin, who was proclaimed king in 591. She died in 625, after exercising the regency in the name of her son. Her virtue, wisdom and beauty were extolled, she was active in her labors on behalf of Christianity, and she carried on a correspondence with Asti. Gregory, who was Pope from 590 to 604. Note page 202. The Theodora here referred to is doubtless the wife, not of Justinian, but of Theophilus, Emperor of Constantinople 829 to 842. She died in 867, and was canonized by the Greek Church. Note page 202. Countess Matilda, 1046 to 1115, one of the most famous 394 heroines of the Middle Ages, was the daughter of Duke Boniface of Tuscany and Beatrice of Lorraine. She ruled over Tuscany and a large part of northern Italy, espoused the papal cause against the emperor, and exercised an important influence upon the politics of her time. She was noted also for her religious zeal, energy, and austere yet gentle and cultivated life. Count Ludovico's supposed descent from her paternal uncle Conrad is now regarded as doubtful. Note page 202. Among the eminent women here referred to, we may note, Duke Guidobaldo's grandfather's wife, Caterina Colonna, died 1438, who was a great aunt of Vittoria Colonna, and was praised as noble, beautiful, discreet, charming, gentle, and generous. His great aunt Battista di Montefeltro, died 1450, who, having been deserted by her worthless Malatesta husband, wrote moral essays and poetry, and was celebrated for her piety and mental gifts as well as for her learning and literary accomplishments. His aunt, Brigida Sueva di Montefeltro, born 1428, who, after enduring for twelve years the brutalities of her Sforza husband, became an abbess and ultimately received the honor of beatification, her remains being revered as a sacred relic. Another aunt of his, Violanti di Montefeltro, born 1430, who was famous for her talents and beauty. His maternal grandmother, Costanza de Verano, born 1428, was a granddaughter of the Batista above mentioned, inherited much of that lady's taste for learning, became the associate of scholars and philosophers, wrote Latin orations. Epistles and poems, and, by her marriage to a brother of the first Sforza Duke of Milan, became the mother of Duke Guidobaldo's own mother, Batista Sforza, born 1446, who rivaled her ancestress's attainments administered her husband's government judiciously during his frequent absences, and was regarded as beautiful, although tiny in person. Note page 202. Perhaps the most famous woman of the Gonzaga family was, my lady duchess's, great-aunt, Cecilia Gonzaga, born 1425, who shared with her four brothers the tuition of the celebrated Vittorino de Feltri. 
wrote Greek with remarkable purity at the age of ten, became a nun at nineteen, devoted her life to religious and literary exercises, and was regarded as one of the most learned women of her time. Her niece, Barbara Gonzaga, born about 1455, was educated with a special care, became Duchess of Württemberg, induced her husband to found the University of Tübingen, and ruled the duchy as regent after his death. Of the Este family, two aunts, Ginevra, born 1419, and Bianca Maria, born 1440, of Isabella and Beatrice d'Est, see notes 397 and 398, were famous for their knowledge of Latin and Greek, in which languages the younger wrote both prose and verse. Besides being an accomplished musician, dancer, and needlewoman. Of the Pio family, Castiglione doubtless had in mind the celebrated Alda Pia de Carpi, who was a sister of Aldus's pupil and patron Alberto Pio, 395 and of Count Ludovico Pio of the Courtier, see note. And mother of the still more celebrated poetess Veronica Gambara, born 1485. Margarita of Austria. 1480-1530. Head enlarged from bronze photograph, no, 13.796, of an anonymous portrait group, in the palace at Versailles, representing the Emperor Maximilian I and his family. Note page 202. And de Bretagne, born 1476, died 1514, was the daughter and heiress of Duke Francis II of Brittany, which became permanently united to the crown of France through her marriages to Charles VIII, 1492, and Louis XII, 1499. Castiglione's praise of her seems to have been in the main justified. Although sometimes vindictive, she was generous, virtuous beyond the standard of her time, and carried cultivation to the verge of pedantry. She surrounded herself with artists, historians, minstrels and poets, and formed a collection of misas and other precious objects, largely the spoils of her husband's Italian campaigns. Branthome called her, the worthiest and most honorable queen that has been since Queen Blanche, mother of the King St. Louis, and so wise and virtuous. Note page 202. Charles VIII, born 1470. Died 1498, was the son of Louis XI and Charlotte of Savoy. Having succeeded his father in 1483, and assumed royal power in 1491, he married Anne of Brittany and soon set about enforcing his pretensions to the crown of Naples, transmitted to him through his father and cousin from René of Provence, to whom the last Angevin ruler had devised the kingdom in 1435. As we have seen, the immediate cause of the invasion of Italy, 1494, was a request from Duke Ludovico Sforza of Milan and Pope Alexander VI. Although the expedition was undertaken without adequate preparation and conducted with incredible foolhardiness. Continuous good fortune together with the mutual jealousies of Italian princes and the decadence of Italian military power enabled Charles to enter Milan, Florence and Rome without hindrance, to seize Naples almost unopposed. And, when threatened by a powerful league formed against him, to retire northwards, to defeat the Italians at Fornovo, and finally to reach France in safety, October 1495. His garrisons were driven from Naples in the following year, but his foray had the immediate result of expelling the Medici from Florence. And the far more important consequence of revealing to the rest of Europe the wealth and helplessness of Italy, thus paving the way for the subsequent invasions with which the peninsula was scourged during the 16th century. The remainder of Charles's life was given up to inglorious ease and pleasure. A son of the painter Montaigne thus describes him, a very ill-favored face, with great goggle eyes, an aquiline nose offensively large, and a head disfigured by a few sparse hairs. While Duke Ludovico Sforza said of him, the man is young, and his conduct meager, nor has he any form or method of counsel. His own ambassador, Camin, wrote, he was little in stature and of small sense, very timid in speech, owing to the way in which he had been treated as a child, and as feeble in mind as he was in body, but the kindest and gentlest creature alive. Note page 202. Margarita of Austria, born 1480, died 1530, was the daughter of the Emperor Maximilian I and Mary of Burgundy, and a native 396 of Brussels. Having been betrothed to the Dauphin Charles, 
VIII, and then rejected by that prince in favor of Anne of Brittany, she married, 1497, the infant one of Castile, but soon lost both husband and child. In 1501 she married Duke Filiberto of Savoy, and after four years of happiness again became a widow. In 1507 she was entrusted by her father with the government of the Low Countries and the care of her nephew Charles, see note 462. She did much to further the progress of agriculture and commerce in her dominions, and besides showing a lofty spirit and no little political sagacity, she was a patroness of art and letters, and composed a great number of poems in French. Most of which are said to be lost. Her correspondence with her father has been published. Note page 202. Maximilian I, Emperor of Germany, born 1459, died 1519, was the son of the Emperor Frederick III of Habsburg and Eleonora of Portugal. In 1477 he married Charles the Bold's daughter and heiress, Mary of Burgundy, who bore him five children and died in 1482. On the death of his father in 1493, he was elected emperor, and soon afterwards married Bianca Maria, niece of Duke Ludovico Sforza of Milan. He was a member of the League that forced Charles VIII to retire from Italy, 1495, of the League of Cambrai against Venice, 1508, and of the Holy League, 1511, for the expulsion of Louis XII from Italy. Although deriving little profit or honor from these and other foreign enterprises, he contrived by prudent marriages to add Bohemia and Hungary to his empire and to make Spain a possession of his family. He also effected many reforms in his government, and even founded several important institutions, such as a postal service and a permanent militia. From his youth he showed a taste for study, became a patron of scholars, poets and artists, and enriched the universities of Vienna and Ingolstadt. Besides being an accomplished if not very successful soldier, he was the author of works on gardening, hunting and agriculture, as well as on military science. Note page 202. Isabella the Catholic born 1451. Died 1504, was the daughter and heiress of Juan II of Castile. Having been trained in retirement to habits of religious devotion, she married, 1469, Ferdinand of Aragon, with whom she succeeded jointly to her father's crown in 1474, but was able to gain complete possession of her dominions only in 1479. The same year in which her husband succeeded his father as King of Aragon. Under her rule the Inquisition was established in Castile, 1480, but she recoiled before its horrors and was reconciled to its continuance only by the direct assurance of Pope Sixtus IV. In 1481 began the Long War, which, largely owing to her energy and perseverance, resulted in the expulsion of the Moors from Spain, and in which she is said to have organized the earliest military hospitals. The story of her noble patronage of Columbus is familiar. Her later years were clouded by the loss of two of her three children, including her only son, and by the unhappy conjugal life and mental disorder of her daughter, Juana, the mother of Charles V. Castiglione's praise of Isabella's lofty qualities is not a little justified by the facts of her life. In personal appearance, she is said 397 to have been agreeable rather than handsome. Her features were regular, her green eyes vivacious, her complexion olive her hair reddish-blonde, and her stature above the medium. Beatrice of Aragon Queen of Hungary 1457-1508 From a negative, specially made by the brothers Moreau with the kind permission of M. Gustav Dreyfus, of an anonymous bust in his collection at Paris. Note page 202 Ferdinand the Catholic, born 1452, died 1516, was the son of Juan II of Navarre and Aragon, and is justly regarded as the founder of the Spanish monarchy. The means employed by him in building up his power were perfidy towards other rulers and ruthless oppression of his own people. Besides the other events of his reign, noted above, mention should be made of his cruel expulsion of the Jews from Spain in 1492. These and his other persecutions, supposed at the time to be actuated by zeal for pure religion, were in fact chiefly a source of revenue, and the policy thus inaugurated, of stifling the commerce, the industry. The free thought and the energy of the nation at the beginning of its greatness, 
is now seen to have been one of the important causes of its decline. Note page 204. Of these two remarkable queens, one was doubtless Federico III's widow, the Isabella del Balzo who is mentioned below, see note 400. The other may possibly have been her predecessor Joanna, the aunt and widow of Ferdinand II. Or, more probably, Ippolita Maria, who was a daughter of the first Sforza Duke of Milan and wife of Ferdinand II's father and predecessor Alfonso II, and of whom Denistown says, too. 122. It was for this princess that Constantine Lascaris composed the earliest Greek grammar. And in the convent library of Sta Croce at Rome there is a transcript by her of Cicero's De Senectute, followed by a juvenile collection of Latin apothems curiously indicative of her character and studies. Note page 204. Beatrice of Aragon, born 1457, died 1508, was the daughter of Ferdinand I of Naples and Isabel de Clermont. In 1476 she married Matthias Corvinus, king of Hungary. On his death in 1490, she married Ladislas II of Bohemia, who for a time prevented the succession of Matthias's natural son John. However the youth attained the Hungarian throne with the aid of the Emperor Maximilian. Whereupon Beatrice was repudiated by Ladislas and her marriage was annulled by Alexander VI. In 1501 she returned to Italy, resided at Ischia and died childless. Like her elder sister, the Duchess Eleonora of Ferrara, see note, she was a woman of cultivation and taste, and in spite of her political intrigues. She is praised for having done much to strengthen the intellectual bonds between Italy and Hungary, to which country she invited Italian poets, scholars and artists. Note page 204. Matthias Corvinus, born 1443, died 1490, was the son of the famous Hungarian general Janos Hunyadi, and in 1458 was proclaimed King of Hungary by the soldiers whom his father had so often led to victory. His life was a nearly continuous series of great enterprises, among the most noted of which were his campaigns against the Turks and his siege and capture, 1485, of Vienna, where he thereafter resided chiefly and died. By 398 no means the least part of his fame was won by the ardor with which he advanced the cause of science, art and letters in his country. And bestowed upon his people not only an enlightened code of laws but also the benefits of Renaissance culture. He introduced printing into Hungary, and was the founder of a magnificent public library at Budapest, containing 50,000 volumes, for the most part misas which he caused to be copied in Italy and the East. Note page 204. Isabella of Aragon, born 1470, died 1524, was the daughter of Alfonso II of Naples and Ippolita Maria, daughter of the first Sforza Duke of Milan. In 1489 she made a splendid entry into Milan as the bride of her own cousin Giangoliazzo Sforza, whose rights as duke were gradually usurped by his uncle Ludovico I. L. Moro. This usurpation has been regarded as partly due to the ambition of Ludovico's young wife, Beatrice d'Est, see note, who could not endure the precedence rightfully belonging to Isabella. As has been seen, it was to protect himself against the wrath of Isabella's father and grandfather, that Ludovico invited Charles VIII into Italy as his ally. When Charles reached Pavia, he had to endure the pathetic spectacle of his forlorn cousin Giangoliazzo, they were sisters' sons, in prison, and to hear the piteous pleadings of the beautiful Isabella, who fell at his feet and besought him to have mercy on her husband. Her appeal was withstood, and Ludovico of course had no scruple in setting aside the rights of her infant children. Fresh trials awaited her in her native country, to which she returned in 1500, and from which her family had been expelled. Note page 204. Isabella d'Est, born 1474, died 1539, was the oldest child of Duke Ercoli I of Ferrara and Eleonora of Aragon. Having had Mario Equicola as preceptor, she married the Marquis John Francesco Gonzaga, see note 446, in 1490, her early betrothal to whom prevented her from becoming the wife of Ludovico Sforza, the Duke of Milan, who soon afterwards married her sister Beatrice. At Mantua she continued her literary and artistic training, and her court became one of the brightest and most active centers of Italian culture. 
the chief poets and painters of the time labored for her or were her friends. Being for years in her husband's service, Castiglione knew her closely, maintained a frequent exchange of letters with her, and is only one of many who praise her beauty, her intellect, and her moral qualities. She may be regarded as the most splendid incarnation of the Renaissance ideal of woman. Her long friendship with her sister-in-law, my lady duchess, has been already mentioned. Some interesting details have survived as to her manner of ordering a picture. Having chosen a subject, she had it set forth in writing by some humanist of her court. These specifications were then given to the painter chosen for the purpose, and he was furnished with minute directions as to the placing of the figures and the distribution of light, and required to make a preliminary sketch. As the painting was often intended for a specific space, she took great care to secure the exact dimensions desired, by providing two pieces of ribbon to show the precise height and breadth of 399 the picture. Isabella's brilliant career, and especially her close relations with the chief men of her day and her weighty influence upon contemporary politics, are the subject of many scholarly volumes and interesting articles written jointly by Alessandro Luzio of Mantua and Rodolfo Rainier of Turin. Isabella of Aragon, Duchess of Milan, 1470-1524. Enlarged from a negative, specially made by Alinari through the courtesy of Professor I. B. Supino, of a medal, in the National Museum at Florence, by Gian Cristoforo Romano, 1465-1512. See Armand's Les Meteors Italiens, 2, 54, No. 1. Note page 204. Beatrice d'Est, born 1475. Died 1497, married Ludovico Sforza, Duke Regent of Milan, in the same year, 1491, in which his niece Anna Sforza married Beatrice's brother Alfonso, the future husband of Lucrezia Borgia. Younger, apparently less beautiful, and certainly less accomplished than her sister Isabella, Beatrice encouraged her husband's patronage of art and letters, and took part in his turbid political schemes. It will perhaps never be determined precisely to what extent she was responsible for his treatment of his young nephew and of the latter's wife, see note, and for the disasters to Italy that ensued. But she is known to have exercised a great ascendancy over her husband's mind, and he is said to have spent at her tomb the last night before his final capture and downfall. After the expulsion of the French from Italy in 1512, her sons Maximilian and Francesco Maria successively held the duchy for a time, until it passed into the hands of Spain in 1535. For an account of her life, the reader is referred to Mrs. Henry Addy's recently published Beatrice d'Est, Duchess of Milan, a study of the Renaissance, which owes much to the labors of Luzio and Rainier. Note page 205. Eleonora of Aragon, born 1450. Died 1493, was the elder sister of the Beatrice who married Matthias Corvinus of Hungary. A projected union with Ludovico Sforza, who afterwards married her daughter, having been abandoned, she became in 1473 the wife of Duke Ercoli I of Ferrara, and bore him two daughters and four sons. Other contemporary accounts confirm the praise bestowed upon her by Castiglione, and show her to have been a woman of rare merit, manly courage and enlightened culture. Fond of music, and herself a player upon the harp, she seems to have been a discriminating patroness of art and letters, and at the same time to have taken an active share in the serious cares of government. Especially when her husband was absent or disabled. A pleasant glimpse of her character is gained from a letter written by her to the Duke's treasurer on behalf of a certain Neapolitan engineer, who had rendered important services but had fallen ill and was in want. You will see what this poor man's needs are. You know with what devotion he has served us, nor are you ignorant who sent him to us, a circumstance worthy of consideration. It would ill become us so to treat him in his sickness as to give him cause for complaint against us. You must know what his pay is. See, then, what can be done, and arrange for helping him. She did not live to witness the downfall of her family in Naples. Note page 205. Isabella del Balzo, died 1533, was a daughter of the Prince of Altamira, and the wife of Federico III of Naples, see note. When her husband lost his crown in 1501, 
she, together with the faithful 400 Sanazaro, accompanied him to France, and shared his exile there until his death in 1504. Being, by the terms of a treaty between Louis XII and Ferdinand the Catholic, compelled to leave France, she and her four children took refuge, first with her sister Antonia at Gazzuolo, and then at Ferrara. Where she was kindly treated and maintained by her husband's nephew Duke Alfonso d'Est. Here she spent the last twenty-five years of her life, but at times in such poverty that when Julius II placed Ferrara under the ban of the church, she obtained special permission to have religious services performed in her house. On the plea that she had not the means wherewith to leave the city. Note page 205. Federico III, born 1452, died 1504, was a son of Ferdinand I of Naples, a younger brother of Alfonso II, and an uncle of his immediate predecessor, Ferdinand II. Having taken part in the weak resistance offered to Charles VIII's invasion of Naples in 1494, he became king on the early death of his nephew in October 1496. And seems to have tried to keep aloof from the turbulent schemes in which Alexander VI sought to involve him. After another vain attempt to withstand the invasion of Louis XII, and having been shamefully betrayed by the Emperor Maximilian and Ferdinand the Catholic, to both of whom he had appealed for aid. He retired with his wife and children to the island of Ischia, which furnished refuge at the same time to his widowed sister Beatrice, ex-queen of Hungary, and to his widowed niece Isabella, ex-duchess of Milan. Ceded his crown to Louis XII in exchange for thirty thousand ducats and the countship of Maine, and spent the last three years of his life in France. Note page 205. Federico's eldest son Ferdinand, Duke of Calabria, was besieged in Taranto during the Franco-Spanish invasion which resulted in his father's downfall. On a sworn promise to set him free, he surrendered to the great captain, see note, but was treacherously detained and sent as a prisoner to Spain, where he was treated by Ferdinand the Catholic with almost royal honors. He continued to reside in Spain, and on the death of his mother in 1533, he was joined at Valencia by his two sisters. Note page 205. The reference here is probably to the siege of Pisa by the Florentines in 1499, which was finally abandoned owing in part at least to the bravery of the Pisan women. Castiglione himself was the author of some Latin verses celebrating an incident of the siege. Federico III of Naples 1452-1504. Enlarged from a cast, courteously furnished by Professor I. B. Supino, of an anonymous medal in the National Museum at Florence. C. Armand's Les Meteors Italiens, 2, 59. Note page 205. Tomaris was in fact queen of the Massagidi, who were a nomadic people allied to the Scythians and dwelt northeast of the Caspian Sea. Herodotus relates that Cyrus the Great sent her an offer of marriage, and on being refused, invaded her kingdom and captured her son, but was finally defeated and slain, 529 BC. The Artemisia referred to in the text is probably not the queen of Halicarnassus, who fought on the Persian side at Salamis in 480 BC, but rather the sister consort and successor of 401 King Mausolus of Curia, a state on the western coast of Asia Minor. On her husband's death in 352 BC, she reigned two years until she pined away for grief. The monument, Mausoleum, erected by her to his memory at Halicarnassus, was regarded as one of the seven wonders of the world, the others being, the Egyptian pyramids, the Temple of Artemis at Ephesus, the walls and hanging gardens of Babylon. Phidias's statue of Zeus at Olympia, the Colossus at Rhodes, and the lighthouse at Alexandria. Zenobia, an Arab by birth, was the second wife of Odenathus, king of Palmyra, which lay to the east of Syria. On the death of her husband, about 266 AD, she acted as regent for her sons and seems to have shown great talent for war as well as for the arts of wise administration. But in her effort to extend her sway over the entire east, she was defeated by the emperor Aurelian, and adorned his triumph in golden chains at Rome. She was allowed to spend the remainder of her life in dignified retirement at Tiber, Tivoli. Semiramis was the legendary daughter of the Syrian goddess Terkido, 
and with her husband Ninus was regarded as the founder of Nineveh. On his death she assumed the government of Assyria, built the city of Babylon and its wonderful gardens, conquered Egypt, etc. To her the Greeks ascribed nearly everything marvelous in the East. Her name appears in inscriptions as that of the consort of an Assyrian ruler who reigned 811-782 BC Cleopatra, 69-30 BC. Was directly descended in the eighth generation from Ptolemy I, the most noted of Alexander the Great's generals and the founder of the Egyptian dynasty that ended with her life. Her establishment as sole ruler, to the exclusion of her two brothers, was due to the favor of Julius Caesar who is said to have acknowledged the paternity of her son Caesarion, ultimately put to death by order of Augustus. Her love of literature, and the refinement of her luxury, show her to have been no mere voluptuary. Note page 206. Sardanapalus, Asurbanipal, the esnapper of the Old Testament, ruled over Assyria from 668 to 626 BC and was the last monarch of the empire reputed to have been founded by Ninus and Semiramis. His name became a byword for effeminate luxury, but in recent times the discovery and study of the larger part of the tablets composing his library, prove him to have been a vigorous king and an intelligent patron of art and literature. Note page 207. In his Life of Alexander, Plutarch extols the magnanimity with which the youthful monarch treated the captive mother, wife and two daughters, of Darius, the last king of Persia, whom he had utterly defeated in the Battle of Arbila, 331 BC. In furtherance of his plan of uniting his European and Asiatic subjects into one people, Alexander afterwards married Bersine, the elder of Darius's two daughters. Note page 208. This incident is narrated in Valerius Maximus's Memorable Sayings and Doings, as having occurred in the first Spanish campaign of Scipio Africanus Maximus, 210 BC, when that commander was in his twenty-fourth year. Note page 208. This story of the Platonist philosopher Xenocrates, 396-314 BC, is derived from the same source last cited. His teaching was characterized by the loftiest morality, and included a declaration that it comes to the same thing whether we cast longing eyes, or set our feet, upon the property of others. The, very beautiful woman, of the text is variously mentioned as Phryne and Lays, rival Hittira said to have served as models to the painter Apelles. Note page 208. Cicero's version of this anecdote, De Officius, I, 40, mentions Sophocles as the, someone, rebuked by Pericles. Note page 210. The Italians still say. Donna pregata, niga. E disprezata, prega. Note page 213. The present translator prefers not to offer an English version of the following passage, but to reprint it, line for line, from the Aldine Folio of 1528. S.I. che questo piu tosto un stratagema militare d'arsi. Poria. Che pura continentia, ainga ancora che la fama di questo non. Sia molto sincera, perci alcuni scrittori di autorita affermano questa. Juan Esser stated de Scipioni god Iuda in Amaro's Delicy, ma di quello. Che ui dico io, dub bio alcuno non a. Dis il frigio, duet ha. Werlo truato eni gli uangelii. Io stesso elho widuto rispose m, c s. And. Piro enho molto magier certezza, che non potit hauer, ne uoa, ne altri. Che alcibiade si luas dal leto di sacrate non altrimity, che si faciano. I figlioli dal leto di padri, che per strano loco, e tempo era il let. 2. M. La nate. Per contemplar quella pura bellezza, l'equal si dice che amaua. Sacrate senza alcun desiderio disonesto, massimament amato. Piu la bellezza dell'animo, che del corpo, ma nei fancioli and no in ei. Wechi. Anchor che siano piu saui, and certo non si podia gia truer miglier. Exempio, per laudar la continentia de glihomini, che quello di. Xenocrate, 
che essendo uursato en gli studiai, estretto, en obligato dalla. Profession sua, che è la filosofia. La quale consiste in i boni costumi. En non nelli parole, vecchio, exhausto del luigur natural, no patendo. Eni mostrando segno di potra. Esistenda una femina publica, la quale. Per questo nome solo podia venergli a fastidio, pu credere i che fos sta. To continente, se qualsh segno de resentersi hoes dimostrato, and in tal. Termin usato la continentia, vero astinatosi de quello. Che i wechi. Pu desiderano che, lo badigli di venir, sio dal wino, ma per comprober. Ben la continentia senile, scriusi che di questo era pieno, and gra. Ue, and qual cosa dar si pa piu aliena della continentia dun vecchio, che. La ebrieta. And se lo asiner stal cos unari in quella pigra, and freda. Eta marita tanta laudi, quanta any du meritor in una tenera juan. Cum cal du di chi dienzi uho detto. Della quali el una impenido. Durisime legi a tutti i sensi suoi, non solamente a gliocci nega la. For o three sua luce, ma teglua al cor che pensiri, che soli lungamidi irano sta. Ti dulcissimo sibo per tenerlo in Yuta. El ultra ardant inamorata retruadosi. Tant volti sola nelli brasia di quello, che piu asai, che tutoel. Resto del mondo a maua, contra si stessa, and contra caliui, che piu, che se. Stessa lo era caro. Combatendo uincia quello ardant desiderio che spes. So ha uinto, and uins tanti saui homini. No ui per ora s gasp. Che. Duasino i scrittori urganarsi di far memoria di zenocrate in questo. Caso. And Kiamerlo per continente. Che ci pates appear, io materiae. Pegno che so tuta quella nate sino al giorno sequit ad ora di desinare. Dormi ca morto sepolto nel wino, eni mai per strapicier che. Gli fases quella femina, pot a per gliocci. Come si fa stato allopia. 2. Kiwi risero tutti glihomini in don, and laes emil. Per redito v. Rament dices gasp. Se ui penzate un poco meglio credo che truerit. Anchor qualsh ultro bello exempio di continentia simili a questo. Rispose m. Cs. No ui par signora, che bello exempio di continentia. Sia quel ultro che egli ha allegato di pericle. Maraviglioni ben cell. Non habia anchor recordato la continentia, and quel bel detto, che si scry. Ue di colui, a chi una donna d'amato troppo gran prezzo per una not. Te, and eso lo rispose, che non comprava cosi caro il pentersi. Redia si tut. Ta uia nm. Cs. Hoendo al quanto ticudo, dis. The only other instance in which the translator has suppressed any part of the text is in line 10 of page 212, where the Italian word ignuda is not rendered. Eleonora of Aragon. Duchess of Ferrara. 1450-1493. to Reduced from a photograph, kindly furnished by M. Gustav Dreyfus, of an anonymous bar leaf in his collection at Paris. The sculptor may possibly have been Sperandio di Bartolomeo de Savelli, 1425-1500. See note. Note page 214. The event occurred in 1501, six years before the date of the Courtier Dialogues. Note page 214. The Volturno flows through Capua. Note page 214. Gazzuolo or Gazzuolo is now the name of an Italian commune, containing less than 5,000 inhabitants, and situated 11 miles west of Mantua. Note page 214. 
The Aglio is a river of Lombardy about 135 miles long. It traverses the Lake of Iseo, and joins the Pe some 10 miles southwest of Mantua. Note page 214. In two earlier MS versions of the Courtier, the passage, now from this. Even her name is unknown, reads, then Messer Pietro Bembo said, in truth, if I knew this noble peasant girl's name, I would compose an epitaph for her. Do not stop for that, said Messer Cesare. Her name is Madalena Baiga, and if the bishop's death had not occurred, that bank of the Aglio, etc. With slight variations this story is narrated as fact in a letter of Matteo Bondello, 1480-1562, from whose tales Shakespeare took plots for his plays. The letter gives the poor girl's name as Julia and that of the Bishop of Mantua as Ludovico Gonzaga, and relates that, as it was unlawful to bury 404 her remains in consecrated soil, he caused them to be deposited in the piazza. Intending to place them in a bronze sarcophagus mounted on a marble column. The letter also affirms that the ravisher was one of the bishop's valets. Note page 215. This was Ludovico Gonzaga, born 1458. Died 1511, a son of the Marquis Ludovico of Mantua and Barbara of Brandenburg, and a younger brother of, my lady duchess's, father. Made bishop of Mantua in 1483, he continued to hold that office until his death, and appears from various contemporary documents to have been a liberal and wise prince. The last years of his life were spent at Gazzuolo, which he made a center of culture, art and learning. His brother John Francesco was husband of the Antonia del Balzo mentioned above, note 400. For particulars regarding him, see an article by Rossi in the Giornale Storico della Letteratura Italiana, 13, 305. Note page 215. The Basilica of Esti. Sebastian, on the Appian Way, dates from the 4th century, was built over the most famous of the catacombs, and enjoyed an exceptional veneration during the Middle Ages. The saint was a young military tribune born in Gaul, suffered martyrdom under Diocletian about the year 288, and was buried in the catacombs of Callistus. St. George and he were the favorite saints of chivalry, and may be regarded as the Marshal Castor and Pollux of Christian myth. Note page 216. Felice della Rovere, died about 1536, was a natural daughter of Cardinal Giuliano della Rovere, afterwards Julius II, and a certain Lucrezia, the wife of Bernardo de Cuppis, or Capi, de Montefalco. Thus, my lord prefect of the courtier was her own cousin. In 1506 she became the second wife of the elderly and eccentric John Giordano Orsini, and the ancestress of the Dukes of Bracciano. Her name often occurs in contemporary documents, not only on account of her lofty position but because of her love of art and letters. Both Castiglione and Gian Cristoforo Romano were her friends. The incident mentioned in the text seems not to be referred to elsewhere. Savona, a seaport on the western Riviera, is near the birthplace of Felice's great-uncle, Pope Sixtus IV, who was the founder of the Della Rovere family. Note page 216. Duke Guido Baldo's impotence is said to have given rise to the project of a divorce for his duchess. Note page 218. The reference here is to Ovid's Arzamandi, which enjoyed an extraordinary reputation during the Renaissance, and from which this passage is largely derived. Note page 220. The Laura to whom Petrarch consecrated no less than 318 sonnets, is usually regarded as identical 405 with Lore, the daughter of a certain knight of Avignon, Audibert de Noves. If this identification be correct, she was born in 1308, married Hughes de Sade in 1325, became the mother of eleven children, and died in 1348. In 1533 Francis I caused her reputed tomb to be opened, and found in it a small box which contained a medal bearing a woman's profile, and a parchment on which was a sonnet signed by Petrarch. Note page 220. The so-called Song of Solomon is now thought to be the work of a period later than Solomon's and to contain no mystic meaning. Note page 222. In the old romance, Amatus of Gaul, Isola Firma is an enchanted island, 
with a garden at the entrance to which stands an arch surmounted by the statue of a man holding a trumpet to his mouth. Whenever an unfaithful lover attempts to pass, the trumpet emits a dreadful sound with fire and smoke, and drives the culprit back, while it welcomes all true lovers with sweetest music. Note page 228. Here again the reference is of course to My Lady Duchess. Note page 235. The Hypnorotomachia Polyphili, first published by Aldus in 1499, was written by Francesco Colana, a Dominican friar of Venice, who died an old man in 1527. The book is rare, and is said to be an allegorical romance full of lascivious erudition, and written in a pedantically affected mixture of Italian, Latin, and Venetian patois. Note page 237. Ars Amandi, I, 597-602. Note page 237. Ars Amandi, I, 569-72. Notes to the Fourth Book of the Courtier. Note page 243. Gaspar Pallavicino died in 1511, at the age of 25. Note page 243. Cesare Gonzaga died in 1512, at about the age of 37. See note 43. Note page 244. Federico Fregoso was named Archbishop of Salerno in 1507, very soon after the date of the Courtier Dialogues, see note. Ludovico de Canassa became Bishop of Bayou in 1520, see note. Ottaviano Fregoso became Doge of Genoa in 1513. See note. Bibiena was made cardinal, and Bembo was appointed papal secretary, in 1513, see notes 10 and 42. Giuliano de Medici was created Duke of Nemours in 1515. As he died in 1516, Castiglione's use of the present tense, that greatness where now he is, is inconsistent with the mention of Canassa as Bishop of Bayou. See note 9. Francesco Maria della Rovere succeeded to the dukedom in 1508, see note 3. Note page 244. Eleonora Gonzaga, born about 1492, died 1543, was the eldest daughter of the Marquis John Francesco of Mantua and Isabella d'Est. In 1505 Castiglione negotiated her union with Francesco Maria della Rovere, but the marriage did not take place until Christmas Eve 1509, upon which occasion Bembo wrote to Federico Fregoso that he had never seen a comelier, merrier or sweeter girl. And that her amiable disposition and surprisingly precocious judgment won general admiration. She seems to have maintained affectionate relations with her aunt and predecessor, my lady duchess, of the courtier, whose fame quite outshone her own, and to have exhibited in after life no little strength of character. She is said to have excluded, and even to have expelled, great ladies of questionable morality from her court. Titian's portrait, 1537, represents her in middle age, but his pictures, La Bella and Das Mädchen im Pels, as well as several of his Venus heads, are generally regarded as idealized presentations of her more youthful face. Note page 249. The Piazza Diagon occupied the site of the ancient Circus Agonalis, which derived its name from the Agonalia, a festival held twice a year in honor of Janus. Before, during and long after Castiglione's time, it was a center of festivals, amusements and spectacles at the carnival season. It is now called the Piazza Navona. Note page 250. The famous Athenian commander Simon, died 449 BC. 408 was the son of the still more famous Miltiades. His victories repulsed the last Persian aggressions and consolidated the Athenian supremacy. Although an admirer of Spartan institutions, he seems to have been of a somewhat indulgent disposition. The Scipio here referred to, is probably Publius Cornelius Scipio the Elder, who was the victor over Hannibal and died 183 BC. Lucullus is cited earlier in the Courtier as an instance of a soldier with studious tastes, see note. Note page 250. The Theban general and statesman Epaminandus, died 362 BC, is said by Plutarch to have enjoyed the instruction of the Pythagorean philosopher Lysis of Tarentum, who was driven out of Italy in the persecution of his sect, 
and found refuge at Thebes. Note page 250. Agesilaus was king of Sparta 398-361 BC. Although small and lame, he was the greatest Spartan commander, and became famous for his victories against the Persian and Greek enemies of his country. Xenophon, historian, essayist and disciple of Socrates, was banished from Athens about the time of Socrates's death, 399 BC. Accompanied Agesilaus into Asia, and wrote a panegyric upon him, regarded by Cicero as more glorious than all the statues erected to kings. The reverence and love of Scipio the Younger, about 185 to 129 BC. For the Rhodian Stoic philosopher Panaetius, about 180 to 111 BC, is frequently mentioned by Cicero, from whose De Orator Castiglione seems to have taken this whole passage. Note page 252. In Greek mythology Epimetheus, Afterthought, and Prometheus, Forethought, were sons of the titan Iapetus and the ocean nymph Clymene. Angered by a deceit practiced upon him by Prometheus, Zeus withheld from men the use of fire. But Prometheus stole fire from heaven and brought it to earth in a hollow reed. For this offense he was chained to a rock where an eagle preyed daily upon his liver, which grew again in the night, until he was finally liberated by Hercules. As compensation for the boon of fire, Zeus sent Pandora, the first woman, endowed with beauty, cunning and other attributes designed to bring woe to man, to be the wife of Epimetheus. Although warned by his brother, Epimetheus accepted her, with the result that she set free the evils which Prometheus had concealed in a box. In a later form of the legend, she received from the gods a box containing the blessings of life, and on her being moved by curiosity to open the box, all of them, save hope, escaped and were lost. Note page 263. Bias was born at Preen in Asia Minor, and lived in the 6th century BC. He was celebrated for his apothems and reckoned among the seven sages of Greece, the other six being, Thales of Miletus, Solon of Athens, Chelon of Sparta, Cleobulus of Rhodes, Periander of Corinth, and Pittacus of Mytilene. All of whom flourished about 600 B. C. The fame of these seven men rested not upon their philosophy, as we use the word, but upon their practical wisdom, the fruit of experience. John Francesco Gonzaga Marquis of Mantua Brother of, My Lady Duchess 1466-1519 Enlarged from a photograph, kindly furnished by signer Alessandro Luzio and made by his friend Signor Lanzoni of a portrait attributed to Francesco Bonsignori, 1455-1519, and owned by the antiquary Bresinelli of Mantua. Note page 264. Clearchus, died 353 BC, was for twelve years a cruel tyrant, not of Pontus, but of Heraclea, the modern Eregli, a city on the Black Sea about 140 miles east of Constantinople. He is said to have been a pupil of both Plato and Isocrates, the latter of whom represents him as a gentle youth. Note page 264. Of the dozen or more ancients known to have borne the name Aristodemus, none seem to fit precisely the description given in the text, which is taken from a passage in Plutarch's On the Ignorant Prince. Plutarch may have had in mind a certain tyrant of Megalopolis in the 3d century BC. Note page 269. The reference here is to Book V of The Republic. Note page 270. Fergoso here declares for what has been called that utopia of the 16th century, the Governo Misto, a political invention which fascinated the imagination of Italian statesmen much in the same way as the theory of perpetual motion attracted scientific minds in the last century. Simons's Renaissance in Italy, I. 306. In this regard the men of Castiglione's time, men like Machiavelli and Gicciardini, were only following Plato and Aristotle. Note page 270. The reference here is to the Cyropedia, I, 6. Note page 270. Castiglione seems to have in mind the game of Tavola Real, which is similar to our backgammon. Note page 273. Circe's transformation of some of Ulysses's companions into swine is narrated in the tenth book of the Odyssey. 
In Castiglione's day the term, King of France, was used to signify the acme of royal power. Note page 274. John Francesco, more commonly called Francesco, Gonzaga, born 1466. Died 1519, was the eldest son of the Marquis Federico of Mantua and Margarita of Bavaria, and a brother of, my lady duchess. Having succeeded his father in 1484, he married, 1490, Isabella d'Est, to whom he had been betrothed at the age of 16. Like his ancestors and most other petty Italian rulers of his time, he was at once condottiere and sovereign prince. He commanded the Italian troops against Charles VIII, and although with an overwhelmingly superior force he failed to block the retreat of the French at Fornovo, he treated that disgraceful affair as a glorious victory. And even caused it to be commemorated by Montaigne in a votive picture now in the Louvre. He served successively as captain of the imperial troops in Italy, as commander of Duke Ludovico Sforza's army, as viceroy of Naples under Louis XII, etc. He joined the League of Cambrai and was taken prisoner by the Venetians. In the general disorders that filled the period of his reign, he and his more brilliant wife had the address to protect 410 his dominions from the ravages of war. Although, as Castiglione's natural lord, he was asked and gave his consent to the latter's entry into the Duke of Urbino's court, 1504, he seems to have continued to resent the affair until Castiglione's return, 1516, to his service. In which the author remained when this part of the text was written. Castiglione's eulogy was far from undeserved, for to the Marquis's munificence, no less than to his consort's taste and enthusiasm, must be ascribed the luster of their provincial court. Besides being a patron of art and letters, he was also a successful breeder of horses for use both in war and in racing. Note page 274. The Duke is said to have had no small share in planning the palace. His chief architect was one Luciano, a native of Lorana in Dalmatia on the eastern coast of the Adriatic. The cost of the structure was about £400,000 sterling. See, besides the authorities cited in Note 28, Luzio and Rainier's Mantova e Urbino, Rue, Turin, 1893. Note 1. Note page 274. The ancient Basilica of Asti. Peter's had become ruinous by 1450, but little was done towards rebuilding it until 1506, when the execution of Bramante's plan was begun with the solemn laying of the first stone by Julius II on Sunday, April 18. On the death of Bramante, Raphael was put in charge of the work in 1514, as we have seen, note 98, but, apparently owing to lack of funds, progress was slow until 1534 when Michelangelo's designs were substituted. The dome was completed in 1590, and the church dedicated in 1626. Note page 274. This street was designed by Bramante to be a kind of triumphal way connecting the Vatican with the Belvedere Pavilion. It was to be bordered by palaces, courts, gardens, porticos, terraces, etc., but the death of Julius II led to the abandonment of the plan. Note page 274. Pote Suoli, the ancient Putili, situated seven miles west of Naples, was originally a Greek city, but became one of the chief commercial ports of the Roman Empire, and a resort of the patrician class. It is noted for its ruins, especially those of a large amphitheater. Baja, the ancient Bai, on the Gulf of Pote Suoli, was the chief Roman watering place, famous for its luxury, and containing the villas of many celebrated Romans. Its principal antiquities are ruins of baths. Civita Vecchia lies on the coast about 38 miles northwest of Rome, and was anciently known as Centum Celli. The Emperor Trajan, reigned 98 to 117 AD, converted it from a poor village into a great seaport, and of his monument some remains are still extant. Porto was a Roman city near the mouths of the Tiber. In Castiglione's time it had become a marshy island. One of the earliest Italian archaeologists, Flavio Biondo, visited the site in 1451, and found there many huge marble blocks ready for building and bearing quarry marks of the imperial period. The Apollo Belvedere was discovered here in 1503. Note page 274. 
Almost the same phrase occurs in the well-known letter which Raphael, who had been appointed guardian of antiquities, wrote to Leo X. Urging the pontiff to avert the complete destruction of that little which remains of Italian glory and greatness in proof of the worth and power of those divine minds. Castiglione was long supposed to be the author of the letter, but is now believed only to have aided Raphael in its composition. Note page 274. Alexandria was founded by the conqueror in 332 BC. Bucephalia, founded 327 BC was situated on the river Hydaspes, the modern Jhelum, a branch of the Indus, about 120 miles northwest of Lahore, and was named in honor of Alexander's favorite horse, which died there. Bucephalus, ox-headed, is supposed to have been a name given to Thessalian horses, which were branded with a bull's head. Note page 274. Mount Athos, 6,780 feet high, forms the extremity of the easternmost peninsula of Chalcidice in Macedonia. During the Persian invasion of Xerxes, 480 BC, it was temporarily converted into an island, and since the Middle Ages has been noted for its monasteries. Both Vitruvius and Plutarch give an account of the project mentioned in the text, and ascribe it to a Macedonian architect who appears under the names, Dinocrates, Chirocrates, and Stasicrates and who also planned the city of Alexandria and was chosen to rebuild the great temple of Artemis at Ephesus. The statue was to represent Alexander, who is said to have abandoned the idea when he learned that the city to be placed in the hand of the statue would be without territory and could be provisioned only by sea. Saying that such a city would be like a child that cannot grow for failure of its nurse's milk. Note page 275. In Athenian legend Procrustes was a cruel robber, who had a bed upon which he tortured his captives by stretching those who were too short and by cutting off the legs of those who were too long. He was finally slain by the hero Theseus. Cyron was another legendary Attic robber, who compelled his victims to wash his feet on the Cyronian rocks near Athens, and then kicked them into the sea where they served to fatten the turtles upon which he fed. He also was slain by Theseus, and in the same manner in which he had slain others. In Roman myth Cacus was a gigantic son of Vulcan, living near the site of Rome. He robbed Hercules of some of the cattle stolen from the monster Gerion, and dragged them into his cave backwards, so that they could not be tracked, but Hercules discovered them by their lowing, and slew the thief. Diamed, not the Argive prince of the Iliad, but Ares's mythical son, who was king over the Bistones in Thrace, was slain by Hercules because he was accustomed to feed his mares on human flesh. Antaeus was a fabulous and gigantic wrestler of Libya, reputed to be the son of Poseidon and Gia, the earth goddess. Being held aloft and thus deprived of the miraculous strength derived from contact with his mother earth, he was crushed to death by Hercules. For twelve Gerion was the mythical three-headed king of Hesperia, the theft of whose cattle constituted the tenth of the twelve labors of Hercules. Note page 275. The crimes of the tyrants against their subjects and the members of their own families had produced a correlative order of crime in the people over whom they tyrannized. Cruelty was met by conspiracy. Tyrannicide became honorable. And the proverb, he who gives his own life can take a tyrant's, had worked itself into the popular language. Simons's Renaissance in Italy, I, 154. The study of the classics, especially of Plutarch, at this time as also during the French Revolution, fired the imagination of patriots. I.D. 151, Note 2. Note page 275. Similar exhortations to a fresh crusade are of frequent occurrence in Italian literature of this period, and were often used by popes and princes as a cover for their selfish designs. Note page 275. The meaning obviously is that if they had not been exiled, they never would have enjoyed their present prosperity. Plutarch tells the story in four slightly varying forms. Note page 276. Monsignor d'Angoulême afterwards became Francis I. C. Note. Even stronger evidence of the author's admiration than this and another passage, C. Page, is afforded by the proem with which he originally intended to preface the dialogues. 
but for which he seems to have been led by political considerations to substitute the introduction finally printed. Note page 276. Henry, Prince of Wales, afterwards Henry VIII, born 1491, died 1547, was the younger son of Henry VII and Elizabeth of York, and was educated for the church. Having succeeded his father in 1509, he married, in accordance with his parents' wish, his elder brother Arthur's widow, Catherine, the youngest child of Ferdinand and Isabella the Catholic. His accession was hailed with enthusiasm. Left rich through his father's avarice, he was generous, frank, handsome, exceptionally robust, and an accomplished athlete and scholar. Good men were delighted with the purity of his life, his gaiety pleased the courtiers, and sober statesmen found in him a singular capacity for business. Besides being a musician, he spoke Latin, French and Spanish, and was very devout, usually attending Mass five times daily. Even as late as 1521 he dedicated to the Pope an anti-Lutheran tract on the seven sacraments, and in return received the title of Defender of the Faith. As an offset to the enormities of his later life, it is only just to remember that he raised England to the rank of a great European power, and that for twenty years he did nothing to mar the harmony of his reign. Henry VII of England 1457-1509 Reduced from Walker and Batal's photograph of an anonymous portrait, number 416, in the National Portrait Gallery at London. Painted on an oak panel for one Herman Rink in October 1505, the picture was once owned by M. Julian at Le Mans, by M. Emile Barr at Paris, and by Mr. E. J. Muller, from whom it was acquired by the gallery in 1876. Note page 276. His great father, i.e., Henry VII, born 1457, died 1509, was the son of Edmund Tudor, Earl of Richmond, a son of Henry IV-13V's widow Catherine, and Margaret Beaufort, whose paternal grandfather was an illegitimate half-brother of Henry IV. After the downfall of the House of Lancaster and the death of the young York princes, Henry succeeded in gathering a strong party, landed in England and wrested the crown from Richard III, 1485. Soon afterwards, by his marriage to Edward IV's daughter Elizabeth of York, he united the hostile factions that had so long harassed the kingdom. As a ruler he was avaricious, calculating, and far from popular. He is said to have left a treasure of two million pounds sterling. The marriage of his daughter Margaret to James IV of Scotland finally led, on the failure of his son's issue, to the accession of the Stuarts in the person of her grandson, James I. Note page 276. This is consistent with the earlier passage, see page, where Castiglione pretends to have been absent in England at the date of the courtier dialogues. An earlier MS. Version here reads, as we are told by our friend Castiglione, who has just returned from England, which accords with what we have seen, note 23, to be the fact. Note page 276. Don Carlos, afterwards the Emperor Charles V, born 1500. Died 1558, was the son of the Emperor Maximilian's son Philip of Austria, and of Juana, daughter of Ferdinand and Isabella the Catholic. Born and bred in the Low Countries, and educated at least partly under the care of the future Pope Adrian VI, he is said to have shown less taste for study than for military exercises, and on his accession to the Spanish throne in 1516. He was ignorant of the Spanish language. By right of his grandmother Mary of Burgundy, he already held the Netherlands. As representative of the House of Aragon, he was King of Naples and Sicily. On the death of his grandfather Maximilian in 1519, he inherited Austria, and, in spite of the rivalry of Francis I and the intrigues of Leo X, was elected emperor. Thus achieving, without a blow, a dominion vaster than any in Europe since the time of Charlemagne. In an earlier MS. Version the text here reads, Then Messer Bernardo Bibiena said, I do not think that any of those present, except myself, have seen the Prince Don Carlos, who, having recently lost such a father as the King Don Philip was, has shown such courage and wisdom in this great bereavement, that although he has not reached the tenth year of his age, we may nevertheless regard him as competent to rule over all his hereditary possessions, vast though they be. 
and that the empire of Christendom, which men think will be in his hands, must grow not a little in power and dignity. Note page 279. Federico Gonzaga, the first Duke of Mantua, born 1500, died 1540, was the son of the Marquis John Francesco Gonzaga and Isabella d'Est. At the age of ten he spent some time as the hostage guest of Julius II at Rome, where he seems to have been generally caressed. Raphael is known to have introduced the boy's face into one of the Vatican frescoes, and a little later to have painted his portrait. Having succeeded his father as Marquis in 1519, he waged war for Leo X against the French. In 414-1527 he joined the League of Italian Princes against Charles V, but went over to the Emperor's side two years later, and was created Duke of Mantua. In 1531 he married Margarita Paleologus. Both Giulio Romano and Benvenuto Cellini were in his employ. Note page 280. These lines were written after Ottaviano Fregoso's election as Doge of Genoa, see note. Note page 281. In an earlier MS. Version, My Lady Amelia continues, and even if it were so, I do not see how he is on that account set above the court lady. The Magnifico Giuliano said, We regard the lady as the equal of the courtier, and according to my lord Ottaviano, the courtier is superior to the prince, therefore the court lady comes to be superior to the prince. Note page 284. Phoenix appears in the Iliad as appointed by Peleus to superintend the education of the latter's son Achilles. Note page 284. Aristotle was summoned, 342 BC, to undertake the education of Alexander, who was then thirteen years old, and whom no one had thus far been able to control. The philosopher's training continued uninterruptedly for four years, included instruction in poetry, rhetoric, philosophy, physics, and medicine, and is said to have had beneficial effect upon the future conqueror's character. Note page 285. Stagira lay on the easterly side of the Chalcidic Peninsula. Philip had destroyed it in his Olynthian campaign of 348 BC. But rebuilt it at Aristotle's request and caused a gymnasium to be erected there, in a shady grove, for the use of the philosopher and his pupils, among whom was Alexander. Note page 285. Plutarch expressly affirms that Alexander's policy, of uniting all the nations under his sway into a single people, was not founded on Aristotle's advice, as indeed an examination of the latter's political theories would seem to prove. Note page 285. The Bactrians were an Aryan people dwelling on the upper Oxus, in what is now Afghanistan. They were conquered in 327 BC by Alexander, who married Roxana, the daughter of one of their princes. In ancient times the inhabitants of northern and eastern Europe and Asia were called Scythians. Note page 285. Callisthenes was a cousin and fellow pupil of Alexander's. On Aristotle's recommendation, Alexander took Callisthenes with him on his Asiatic expedition of 334 BC, but, exasperated by his young kinsman's plain-spoken disapproval of his conduct, had Callisthenes put to death. Don Carlos Prince of Spain. 1500 to 1558. Reduced from bronze photograph, no, 43.099, of the portrait, in the Borghese collection at Rome, attributed to Bernhard Strigel, 1460 1528. Note page 285. Dio, born about 408, died about 354 BC was an 415 austere Syracusan philosopher who became an ardent disciple of Plato on the occasion of the latter's short residence at the court of Dionysius the Elder, and later induced the younger Dionysius also to invite Plato to Syracuse, where. However, the philosopher was unable long to check the tyrant's profligacy. Note page 287. Bembo was 36 years old at the date of the courtier dialogues. Note page 288. In Book Three of Bembo's Gli Asolani, 1505, a hermit discourses to Lavanello on the beauty of mystical Christian love. Bembo had a villa called Lavanello, near Padua. Note page 288. 
Much of the following disquisition seems to be drawn from Plato and from Bembo's Glee Asilani. As Bembo is known to have revised the Courtier before publication, we may assume that he was content with the form and substance of the discourse here attributed to him. Note page 294. Stesichorus was a Greek lyric poet who lived about 630 to 550 B. C., and was supposed to have been miraculously stricken blind after writing an attack upon Helen of Troy. His true name is said to have been Tisius, and to have been changed to Stesichorus because he was the first to establish a chorus for singing to the harp. Fragments of his verse have survived. Note page 294. These five other stars are of course the five planets then known, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn, in addition to the Sun and Moon, which were until long afterwards regarded as planets. The Sun, the Moon and the five planets were always to be found within a region of the sky extending about 8 degrees on each side of the ecliptic. This strip of the celestial sphere was called the zodiac, because the constellations in it were, with one exception, named after living things, Greek Zeta Omicron Nu, an animal. It was divided into twelve equal parts, the signs of the zodiac, through one of which the sun passed every month, so that the position of the sun at any time could be roughly described by stating in what sign it was. Arthur Berry's Short History of Astronomy, London, 1898. Note page 305. Castiglione here follows that version of the Hercules myth which represents the hero, tormented by the poison shirt sent him by the jealous Dianira, as throwing himself upon a burning pyre on Mount Ida. Whence he was caught up to heaven in a cloud. Note page 305. Compare, Exodus, 3, 2, Acts, 2, 1 4, and 2 Kings, 2, 11 2. Note page 307. This dialogue is by some represented as having actually taken place in the presence of Raphael. Note page 308. Plotinus was born in Egypt about 204 AD, and taught philosophy at Rome. He lived so exclusively the life of speculation that he seemed ashamed of bodily existence, and concealed his parentage, birthplace and age. Note page 308. St. Francis, John Francesco Bernard I, 1182-1226, was born and died at Assisi near Perugia, and was canonized in 1288. Note page 308. 2 Corinthians, 12, 2-4. Note page 308. Acts, 7, 54-60. Note page 308. St. Luke, 7, 37. Note page 309. Mount Catria lies less than 20 miles to the southward of Urbino, between Pergola and Gubbio, and rises a little more than a mile above the sea level. It is mentioned by Dante in the Paradiso, 21, 109. The stamp imprinted on the cover of this volume was engraved from an enlarged outline drawing made by Mr. Kenyon Cox from a photograph of one of the many examples of Castiglione's seal preserved in the Royal State Archives at Mantua. List of editions of the Book of the Courtier Compiled from the following sources Copy in the Library of the Spanish Academy at Madrid Ace Copy in the Alessandrina Library at Rome Alla Copy in the Ambrosiana Library at Milan. AMB. Copy in the Angelica Library at Rome. Ong. Copy in the National Library at Madrid. BNM. Copy in the National Library at Paris. BNP. Brunet's Manuel du Libraire, Paris, 1860-65. BNT. Copy in the Bradens Library at Milan. Bra. Copy in the British Museum. BRM. Brunet's Manuel du Libraire, Supplement, Paris, 1878. BTS. Copy in the Cassanitense Library at Rome. Cass. Copy in the Cavriani Library at Mantua. Cav. Copy in the Chigiana Library at Rome. Chi. Copy in the Corsiniana Library at Rome. Sure. M.S.
Bibliographical Notes by the Late Count Darko, at Mantua. D. A. Copy examined by the translator in the National Library at Paris. E. X. D. List of editions appended to Fabius, 1873, edition of Boscan's Spanish translation. Fab. Copy in the University Library at Jena. Gen. List of editions appended to R.S.D. Jolies de Balthasaris Castiglionis au Père C.U.I. Titulus, I.L. Libro del Cortigiano, etc. Can, 1856. Joel. List of editions appended to Count Mazzicelli's Life of Castiglione, Rome, 1879. Maz. Copy in the New York Public Library. NYP. Card Catalog of the Antiquarian Bookseller Olschke, at Florence. Oles. Copy owned by the translator. OPD. Giambattista Pisano's I Novelieri Italiani, Turin, 1878. Pa. Article by Rian Hardstadner in Jarb. F. Munchner Gesch. 1888, pp. 494-9. Ray. Copy in the Marciana Library at Venice. STM. Copy in the Vatican Library at Rome. VAT. Copy in the Vittorio Emanuele Library at Rome. VEL. List of editions appended to Count Carlo Baudi di Vesems, 1854, edition of the Courtier. V.S. List of editions. The language is Italian unless otherwise indicated. Dates and names enclosed in parentheses are not free from doubt. Venice. Aldine Press, Fall. April. OPD. Florence. The Heirs of Filippo di Giunta, 8 VO, October. OPD. 1529. Tusculano. Alessandro Paganino, 12 MO. STM. Florence. The Heirs of Filippo di Giunta, 8 VO. OPD. Parma. Antonio di Viotti, 8 VO. OPD. Florence. Benedetto Gianti, 8 VO. OPD. Parma. Antonio di Viotti, 8 VO. V.S. Parma. Antonio di Viotti, 8 VO. STM. Venice. Aldine Press, 8 VO, with a few poems by Castiglione. EXD. Barcelona. Pedro Monpassat, Fall. Spanish version by Juan Boscan Almagaver. Fab. Florence. Benedetto Gianti, 8 VO. BRM. Paris. For Jean Langes and Vincent Certinas, 8 VO, French version by Jacques Collin. EXD. 1537. Lyons. Denis de Harcy, 8 VO, Collins French version. OPD. Venice. Vetter de Rabani and Associates, 8 VO. STM. Venice. Giovanni Padovano for Federico Torrezano di Asola, 8 VO. EXD. Venice. Curzio Nevo and Brothers, 8 VO. Sior. Lyons. Francois Just, 8 VO, Collins French version revised by Estienne Dalit. EXD. Venice. Curzio Nevo for Alvise Tortis, 8 VO. STM. S. L. Printer not mentioned, 8 VO, abbreviation by Scipio Claudio. Maz. Toledo. Printer not mentioned, 4 2, Boscan Spanish version. Fab. Salamanca. Pedro Tuins for Guillermo de Milis, 4 2, Boscan Spanish version. Ace. Paris. Printer not mentioned. 8 VO, Collins, French version. Alla. Venice. Aldine Press, 8 VO. OPD. 
Venice. Gabriel Gelido de Ferrari, 12 mo. STM. 1541. S. L. TA, 42, Boscan Spanish version. Fab. Medina. Printer not mentioned, 42, Boscan Spanish version. BRM. 1542. S. L. Printer not mentioned, 42, Boscan Spanish version. BNM. Venice. Gabriel Gelido de Ferrari, 8 VO. Pa. Venice. Gabriel Gelido de Ferrari, 8 VO. OPD. Venice. Alvise de Tortis, 8 VO. Chi. Antwerp. Martin Nuscio, 8 VO, Boscan Spanish version. Fab. S. L. Printer not mentioned, 8 VO. Maz. Venice. Aldine Press, Fall. OPD. Paris. Printer not mentioned, 12 MO, Collins, French version. BRM. Venice. Gabriel Gelido de Ferrari, 8 VO. EXD. Paris. For Arnaud L'Angelier, 12 MO, Collins French version. OPD. Venice. Aldine Press, 8 VO. OPD. Venice. Gabriel Gelido de Ferrari, 8 VO. Maz. Venice. Gabriel Gelido de Ferrari, 12 MO. Chi. Venice. Alvis de Tortis, 8 VO. Vel. Paris. Gels Corazet, Collins, French version. BNT. Paris. Jean Lore, 16 MO, Collins, French version. Vel. S. L. Printer not mentioned. 42, Boscan Spanish version. V.S. Lyons. Guglielmo Rovilio, 16 MO. OPD. Venice. Gabriel Gelido de Ferrari and Brothers, 12 MO. STM. Venice. Gabriel Gelido de Ferrari and Brothers, 8 VO, text revised by Ludovico Dolce. EXD. Venice. Domenico Giglio, 12 MO. OPD. Lyons. Guglielmo Rovilio, 12 MO. BRM. Saragossa. For Miguel de Capla, 8 VO, Boscan Spanish version. Fab. Florence. The heirs of Bernardo Gianti, 16 MO. STM. Venice. Girolamo Scotto. 8 VO, Dolce's text. Cav. Venice. Gabriel Gelido de Ferrari, 8 VO, Dolce's text. STM. Venice. Simbini for Bernardine Fagiani, 8 VO, with Paolo Giovio's Life of Castiglione. Cav. Venice. Gabriel Gelido de Ferrari, 8 VO, Dolce's text. BRM. Toledo. Printer not mentioned, 42, Boscan Spanish version. Maz. Venice. Gabriel Gelido de Ferrari, 8 VO, Dolce's text. BRM. London. William Series, 42, English version by Thomas Hobie. BRM. Antwerp. The Widow of Martin Nuscio, 8 VO, Boscan Spanish version. Alla. Wittenberg. Johannes Crado, 42, Latin version by Hieronymus Tuller. Gen. Venice. Francesco Rampazzetto, 12 MO. Cav. Venice. Printer not mentioned, 8 VO, with Giovio's life. OPD. Lyons. Guglielmo Rovilio, 12 MO, Dolce's text. OPD. Venice. 
Gabriel Gelido de Ferrari, 12 mo. Ong. Venice. Same edition as the last. With change of date on title page. Maz. Venice. Same edition as the last, with change of date on title page. STM. S. L. Printer not mentioned, 8VO, edition erroneously dated, Dexlev. V.S. Venice. Gerolamo Cavalcolovo, 12MO, Dolce's text. STM. Munich. Adam Berg, 8VO, German version by Lorenz Kratzer. VAT. Venice. Domenico, 12MO. BRM. Venice. Gabriel Gelido de Ferrari, 12MO. Vell. Wittenberg. Johannes Crato 8VO, Tuller's Latin version. Maz. Valladolid. Francisco Fernandez de Cordoba, 8VO, Boscan Spanish version expurgated. BRM. London. John Day, 8VO, Latin version by Bartholomew Clerk. BRM. Venice. Cumin de Trino, 8VO, with Giovio's life. OPD. Venice. Gabriel Gelido de Ferrari, 8VO. Maz. Venice. Cumin de Trino, 8VO. Maz. Venice. Domenico Fari, 12MO, Dolce's text. EXD. Antwerp. Filippo Nuccio, 8VO, Boscan Spanish version. EXD. Antwerp. Filippo Nuccio, 8VO, Boscan Spanish version. BTS. Strasbourg. Bernhardus Jobinus, 8VO, Latin version of Book I by Johannes Riches. VS. London. Henry Binman, 8VO, Clerk's Latin version. EXD. London. Henry Denham, 42, Hobie's English version. BRM. 1577. Paris. Pierre Gaultier, 16MO, Collins French version. OPD. Lyons. Thibault Anselin for Lois Cloakman, 8VO, French version by Gabriel Chapuis with text. STM. Salamanca. Pedro Lasso, 8VO, Boscan Spanish version. Oles. Venice. Bernardo Bassa, 8VO, text expurgated by Ciccarelli. With Life by Marliani. STM. Frankfurt. Bernhardus Jobinus, 8VO, Latin version by Johannes Riches. Alla. London. Thomas Dawson, 8VO, Clerk's Latin version. BRM. Lyons. Claude Boursidon for Jean Huguetin, 8VO, Chapuis French version with text. Vell. Paris. Nicolas Bonfons, 8VO, Chapuis French version with text. EXD. Paris. Georges Aloislet for CL. Mycard, 8VO, Chapuis French version. EXD. Venice. Curzio Navo and Brothers, 8VO. Die. Venice. Domenico Giglio, 12MO. EXD. London. John Wolfe, 8VO, Hobie's English version revised. With text and Chapuis French version. OPD. Paris. Nicolas Bonfons for Abel El Angelier, 8VO, Chapuis French version with text. EXD. Venice. La Miniana Compagnia, 8VO, Ciccarelli's Expurgation. STM. London. George Bishop, 8VO, Clerk's Latin version. EXD. Dylingen. Johann Mayer, 8VO, German version by Johann Engelbert Noyes. Ong. Venice. Paolo Ugolini, 16MO, Ciccarelli's Expurgation. 
with Marl Yanni's life. Ong. Antwerp. Filippo Nuccio, 8VO, Boscan Spanish version expurgated. Maz. S. D. S. L. Printer not mentioned, 42, Boscan Spanish version. BNM. Florence. The heirs of Filippo di Junta 42. Die. Venice. Giovanni Alberti. Joel. London. T. Creed, 42, Hobie's English version. BRM. London. George Bishop, 8VO, Clerk's Latin version. BRM. Venice. Giovanni Alberti, 8VO. V.S. Frankfurt. Lazarus Setzner, 8VO, Clerk's Latin version. A.M.B. London. Thomas Adams, 8VO, Clerk's Latin version. B.R.M. Strasbourg. Bernhardus Jobinus, 8VO, Rishus's Latin version. Cass. Strasbourg. The heirs of Lazarus Setzner, 8VO, Clerk's Latin version. BRM. Strasbourg. For Simon Paulus, 8VO, Clerk's Latin version. EXD. Strasbourg. Bernhardus Jobinus, 8VO. Rishus's Latin version. Maz. Zurich. Printer not mentioned, 8VO, Rishus's Latin version. Maz. Frankfurt. For Carl Schaefer, German version by J. C. L. L. J. Ray. Paris. Estienne Masset for Estienne Loison, 12 MO, French version by Lab du Hamel. EXD. Cambridge. William Innes, 8 VO, Clerk's Latin version revised by S. Drake. EXD. London. A. Batsworth and others, 8VO, English version by Robert Samber. NYP. London. W. Bowyer, 42, English version by A. P. Castiglione, with life and text. OPD. London. E. Curl, 8VO, Samber's English version. BRM. Padua. Giuseppe Comino, 42, Volpi edition with other works by Castiglione and Marliani's Life. OPD. London. Olive Payne, identical with edition of 1727, title page changed. OPD. London. H. Slater and others, identical with edition of 1727, title page changed. OPD. Padua. Giuseppe Comino, 4-2. Volpi edition, with life by Pier Antonio Sarasi. OPD. Vicenza. Giambattista Vendramini Mosca, 8 VO, 2 volumes. With Sarasi's life. OPD. 1772. S. L. Printer not mentioned, 8 VO, 2 volumes. D. A. Bassano. Romondini, 8VO, 3 volumes. Including other works by Castiglione. Die. Milan. La Tipografia dei Classici Italiani, 8VO. BNP. Milan. Giovanni Silvestri, 8VO, with Sarasi's life. BRM. Bergamo. Mazzolini, 12MO, 2 volumes. Bra. Milan. Niccolò Bettoni and the Brothers Ubicini, 42. AMB. Venice. Girolamo Tasso, 8VO, 2 volumes. Expurgated, with Sarasi's life. OPD. Parma. Fiacadori, 16 Mo, Expurgated Edition. AMB. Copenhagen. Schultz. 4-2, early French version of Book 3, edited by N. C. L. Abrahams. EXD. Florence. 
Felice Lemonnier, 8 VO, annotated by Count Carlo Body di Vesem. OPD. Madrid. Rivadanera for Alfonso Duran, 8 VO, Boscan's version annotated by A. M. Fabi. OPD. Turin. Libreria Salesiana, 16 MO. Vel. Florence. P. Metastasio for G. C. Sansoni, 16 MO, with preface by Giulio Salvadori. OPD. Florence. Gaspar Barbera, 8 VO, expurgated and annotated by Giuseppe Rigatini. OPD. Milan. Eduardo Sanzonio, 8 VO, with preface by Lodovico Corio. OPD. Florence. Same edition as that of 1889. With changed date on title page. OPD. Florence. Carnesecchi for G. C. Sansoni, 8 VO, annotated by Vittorio Chian. OPD. London. Constable for David Nutt, 8 VO, Hobie's English version edited by Walter Raleigh. OPD. Addendum. London. Edward Arnold, Essex House Press 8 VO, Hobie's English version edited by Janet E. Ash B., with woodcut ornaments by C. R. Ash B. OPD. Index. Index. Ability to perform his highest functions, necessary to the courtier, even if he be not called on. Abrahams, N. C. L. Absurd similes. Occulti, Benedetto. Bernardo, C. Pietro, 333. Accomplishments, etc., of the courtier, how to be employed, ed seek. The proper aim of, ed seek. Achaia. Achilles. Aquapendant. Adams, Thomas. Adrian VI. Adriatic, the. Adulation of Princes. Audi, Mrs. Henry. Aeneas. Aeneid, a quotation from the. Eschines. Aesop. Affectation. To be avoided. Instances of. In oratory. In dancing. In attire. In writing. In boasting. In music. In painting. In speech. In preferring to practice that in which one does not most excel. Aforesaid, story about a Sienese who mistook aforesaid for a name. Age, the courtier's functions affected by his. Agesilaus. Agilolf, Duke of Turin. Agnello, Antonio. Giulio. Agon, the Piazza di. Aguilar, the Marquis of. Alamanni, Zero. Albert III, Duke of Bavaria. Alberti, Giovanni. Albizzi. Albret, Charlotte d. Alcibiades. Aldana, Captain. Aldine Press. Aldus, Teobaldo Minucci. Alessandrina Library at Rome. Alexander the Great. Alexander III. Alexander VI, Roderigo Lenzuoli Borgia. Alexander Genius, King of the Jews. Alexandra, Queen of the Jews. Alexandria in Egypt, founded by Alexander the Great. Alexandria, the Bishop of, Gian Antonio di San Giorgio. Alexandrian Cardinal, the, Giovanni Antonio di San Giorgio. Alfonso I of Naples. Alfonso II of Naples. Alfonso the Magnanimous, c. Aladosi, Francesco, C. Pavia, the Cardinal of Almada, Brasida de, C., the Countess of Juan Baez de Almagaver, C. Altamura, the Prince of Altavitae, 0. Alva, the Duke of Amatis of Gaul. Amalasantha, Queen of the Goths. Ambergini, Angelo, C. Benedetto. Ambrose. Ambrosiana Library at Milan. Amiable manners necessary to the courtier. 
Anselin, Thibald. Ancona, Absurd Dueling of Two Cousins of. Angelica Library at Rome. Angelier, Abel L. Arnol L. Angulim, Count Charles D. Monsignor D., C. of France. Anicino, a character in Boccaccio. Anne of Brittany, Queen of France. Anne of Cleves, Duchess of Orleans. Antius. Antigonus, King of Macedon. Antiphanes. Antonello de Forli. Antonio di Tommaso. Antonius, Marcus, the Orator. Apelles. Apennines. Aphrodite. Apollo. Apollo Belvedere. Aptitude for fun. Requisite in a man who would be amusing. Apulia, use of music in, as a cure for bite of tarantula. Aquila, Serafino Dal, c. Aquino, the Bishop of, c. Aragon, Alfonso II of Naples, c. of Naples. Alfonso V of. c. Alfonso I of Naples. Beatrice, Queen of Hungary. Catherine, wife of Henry VIII of England. Eleonora, Duchess of Ferrara. Federico III of Naples, C. of Naples. Ferdinand of, C. Ferdinand the Catholic. Ferdinand I of Naples. C. of Naples. Ferdinand II of Naples, C. of Naples. Ferdinand the Just. Ferdinand, Duke of Calabria. Isabella, Duchess of Milan. Joanna, wife aunt of Ferdinand II of Naples. Juan II, King of Navarre and Juana, wife of Philip of Austria. Ludovico, Cardinal. Archaisms of Speech Discussed, 4. Archiuso, an alleged Russian translator of the courtier. Arco, M.S. Bibliographical Notes by the late Count D. Aries. Aretino, Pietro. Unico, Bernardo Acalti, C. Argentina, Madonna. For 26 Argosy. Arian. Ariosto, Alfonso. Ludovico. Aristippus of Cyrene. Aristobulus I. King of the Jews. Aristodemus. Aristogeiton. Aristotle. Arms, the courtier's true profession. Arms versus. Letters. Arnold, F.R. Arrogance of Princes. Art, enjoyment of beauty in nature increased by a knowledge of. Artemisia. Arthur Tudor, son of Henry VII of England. Artifice, discussion on. Artifice and love, deprecated. Ascension, Venetian festival of the. Ascom, Roger. Asia. Asinus Domino Blandians, one of Aesop's fables. A snapper, Sardanapalus. Aspasia. Osurbanipal, Sardanapalus. Athanasi's rhyme Celt. Athena. Athenian dialect. Spoken with excessive care by Theophrastus. Not rigidly adhered to by excellent Greek authors. Athens. Feminine constancy commemorated by a statue at Athos, Mount Atri, Giacomo D., Count Pianella, C. Attendolo, Musio, called Sforza. Attire appropriate to the courtier. Augustus. Aurelian, the Emperor. Austria, Margarita of. Maximilian of, C. Philip of. Authoris, King of the Lombards. Aeola, Maria de. Bacon, Francis, afterwards Lord Verlum. Bactria. Bad government, the evils of. Bad master, the courtier to leave the service of A. Baja. Badges A2 of Turkey. Balance and contrast, in art and character. Baldi, Bernardino. Baldness, jests about Bernardo Bibienas. Balair and Danzer compared. Balator. Balzo, Antonia del. Isabella del, Queen of Naples, c. 
Banchi, a street in Rome, the scene of a trick played upon Bibiena, zero. Bondello. Barbara of Brandenburg, Marchioness of Mantua. Barbarelli, Giorgio. C. Barbarian influence upon Latin, resulting in Italian. Barbary pirates, touching incident following a husband's rescue from. Barbera, Gaspar. Bari, Roberto de, C. Barletta. Barletta, the tournament at. Barletani, Lucrezia. Barazzi. Pietro, the, Arch, Bishop of Padua. Bartolomeo, joke concerning the name. Bassa, Bernardo. Bassett, a dance performed after the first evening's discussion. Batsworth, A. Bavaria, Duke Albert III of. Margarita of, C. Bayou, the Bishop of, C. Beatrice, a character in Boccaccio. Of Lorraine. Beaufort, Margaret, Countess of Richmond. Beauty. Personal beauty requisite in the courtier. Beauty unadorned. Love defined as a certain desire to enjoy beauty. Two ways of enjoying beauty. Beauty, an effluence of divine goodness. Cannot be truly enjoyed by possessing the body in which it is found. Beauty is good, true love of beauty works for good. Effect of women's beauty on their own character. Do not believe that beauty is not always good. Beauty, a true sign of inward goodness. Beauty through utility. The good and the beautiful are in a way one and the same thing. Bodily beauty derived from beauty of the soul. Beautiful women, more chaste than ugly women. Beauty does not spring from the body wherein it shines. Beauty best enjoyed through sight and hearing. Beauty engendered in beauty. Beauty to be enjoyed for itself, and not for the sake of the body wherein it dwells. The highest enjoyment of beauty is the enjoyment of beauty in the abstract, apart from bodily form. Biazano, Agostino, C. Beccadello, Cesare. Domenico Maria. Ludovico. Becco, a he goat. Beggar and lady at church, story of. Belcalor, a character in Boccaccio. Bellini, the. Gentile. Jacopo. Giovanni. Nicolosa. Belvedere, a pavilion in the Vatican Gardens. Bembo, Bernardo. Pietro, 007. Bembo's Glee Asolani. Pros. Bentivogli, the. Bentivoglio, Francesca. Laura. Berenson, Bernhard. Berg, Adam. Bergamasque dialect, rude by contrast with others. Peasant, story of two great ladies deceived by a. Bergamo. Bergamo, Latanzio de. Bernard I, John Francesco, St. Francis of Assisi. Bernhard, Madame Sarah. Bernice of Pontus. Beraldo, Filippo, the Elder. Filippo, the Younger. Barry, Arthur, Short History of Astronomy. Bersine, Wife of Alexander the Great. Berto. Bettoni, Niccolo. Bevisano, Agostino. Francesco. Bias. For 27 Bibiena, Bernardo de Visi de, 5. Bibiena's Calandra. Bible, citations from the. Bibulus, Marcus. Bidon. Baiga, Madalena, a virtuous peasant girl. Biondo, Flavio. Birth, gentle, requisite in the courtier. Biscizzo, Bisticcio. Bishop, George. Blanc, Charles. Blanche, Queen of France. Blasphemy, to be avoided. Blind. Story of two gamesters who made their companion believe that he was. Bodilla, or Bobadilla, my lady, Beatriz Fernandez de Bobadilla, Marchioness of Moya. Boccaccio, Giovanni. Boccaccio's Corbaccio. De Cameron. Bohemia, Ladislas II of. Boise, Sieur de. 
Bologna, subdued by Julius II. Mentioned as full of turmoil. The Archbishop of, C., the Cardinal of. Bonaparte, Napoleon. Bonfons, Nicholas. Boniface, Duke of Tuscany. Borgia, Cardinal Francesco. Cesare, Duke Valentino. Giovanni. Juana, or Isabella. Lucrezia. Rodrigo Lenzuoli, C. Boristhines, C. Borso, Duke, C. Boscan Almagaver, Juan. Baton, play upon the word. Baton de Cecina. Bursidin, Claude. Boyer, W. Box, story of Cato and a rustic who had jostled him with a Brexesque leave. Bracciano, the Dukes of Braccio de Montoni. Braden's Library at Milan. Bramanti, the architect. Brancaleone, Gentile. Brandenburg, Barbara of C. Branthome. Brawl, a dance. Brescian, comic story of A. British Museum Library. Brittany, N of, C and of Brittany. Duke Francis II of. Brunelleschi. Brunette's Manuel du Libraire. Manuel du Libraire, Supplement. Bruno. A character in Boccaccio. Brutus, Marcus Junius. Bruyer, La. Bucentor, the. Bucephalia in India, founded by Alexander the Great. Buffalmaco, a character in Boccaccio. Building architectural monuments, a duty of princes. Buonarroti, Ludovico, Simoni. Michelangelo, C. Burgundy, Charles the Bold. Mary of. Philip the Good, Duke of. The Order, of the Golden Fleece, at the court of. Burley, Lord, Sir William Cecil. Burney, Dyar. Burning Bush of Moses. Burning of the Ships by the Trojan Women. Binman, Henry. Cacus. Cecilia Tanaquil, Caia. Caesar, Caius Julius. Caesarian. Calio, Story of the Bishopric of. Calabria, Duke Alfonso of. Afterwards Alfonso II of Naples. Duke Ferdinand of, son of Federico III of Naples. Calandrino, a character in Boccaccio. Calfurnio, Giovanni. Caligula, the Emperor. Calixtus III. Callisthenes. Calmita, Calo Vincenzo. Calunia, Imputation. Calzini, Agidio. Cama. Camelli, Antonio, C. Campani, Niccolo, de Siena, C. Campaspi. Cain, Ficino. Canassa, Conrad of. Count Ludovico de, Bishop of Bayou. 2. Capilla, Miguel de. Capital at Rome, a woman's effort to secure the surrender of the. Captain of the Church, Duke Guidobaldo made. Capua, Story of the Sack of. Cara, Marchetto. Carbo. Caius Papirius. Cardinals. Referred to in the Prayer for Heretics and Schismatics. Raphael's Retort to the Two. Cardona, Don Giovanni D. Don Pedro D., Count of Gossolano. Don Hugo D. Cards and Dice. Carrillo, Alonso. Carlos, Don, Prince of Spain, afterwards Charles V of Spain, and C. Carmenta. Another name for Nicostrate. Carnesecchi, G. Carpaccio. Carpentras, the Bishop of, C. Giacomo. Cassanitense Library at Rome. Casanova, Marcantonio, his distiches on, the Spartan mother slaying her son. Castagnita, the Count of. The Countess of. Castel del Rio, the Lord of. Castellina, story about the siege of. Castiglione, Anna. A. P. Count Baldassar. His Tercy. Count Camillo. 
For twenty-eight Castiglione, Count Cristoforo. Ippolita. Tildo. Archbishop of Milan. Castile. Castillo, Andrea. A Spanish name jestingly bestowed upon a Bergamask cowherd. Castor. Castriani, Antonio de, Bishop of Cagli. Castro, Violante de. Catiline's Conspiracy. Cato, Marcus Porcius. Cato Eudicensis, Marcus Porcius. Cottonian severity of countenance assumed hypocritically. Catria, Mount. Catanii, Tommaso, C., the Bishop of. Catani, Francesco, de Diocido, C. Catullus. Caucasia. Cavalon, the Bishop of. C. Caval Calovo, Gerolamo. Cavalier Servant. Cavriani Library at Mantua. Cecil, Sir William, afterwards Lord Burley. Salini, Benvenuto. Celsus, St. Ceres. Serignola, humorous incident after the Battle of. Servia, the Bishop of, Tommaso Catanii. Cecina, Baton de, C. Siva, the Marquis Fabus D. The Marquis Gerardino D. The Marquis Giovanni D. Calcondolas. Demetrios. Chancery, the. Chaperone, Jean. Chapman, John J. Chapuis, Gabriel. Characters, a work by Theophrastus, translated and afterwards expanded by La Bruyere. Charlemagne, the Emperor. Charles the Bold of Burgundy. Charles V of Spain. Charles VIII of France. Charlotte of Savoy. Chase, the, an appropriate pastime for the courtier. Chastity. Discussions concerning. Instances of, E. Seek. Chaumont, the Grand Master de, Zero. Chirocrates. Chess, 108-9. Story of the Monkey Who Played. Chigi, Agostino. Chigiana Library at Rome. Chignons, Diego de. Chilon of Sparta. Chaos, a story of Philip V. Siege of. Coyote Women and Their Husbands, a story of. Chiron. Choice of Friends. Christian Cicero, the Lactantius Firmianus. Chrysolorus. Kian, Vittorio. Ciarla, Magia. Ciccarelli, Antonio. Cicero, Marcus Tullius. Cicero's Brutus. De Amicidia. De Officius. For 29 De Orator. De Senectut. Pro Archia. Cicero, the Christian, Lactantius Firmianus. Simonelli, Serafino, C. Simon. Circe. Circumspection. Necessary to the courtier. Even more necessary to the court lady. Scythern. Played by Socrates. Achilles taught by Chiron to play upon the. Civita Vecchia. Claudio, Scipio. Claudius, the Emperor. Clearchus, Tyrant of Pontus. Clement VII, Giulio de Medici. Cleobulus of Rhodes. Cleopatra. Clerk, Bartholomew. Claremont, Isabel de, Queen of Naples. Clevis, and of. Cloakman, Lois. Cloven Tongues. Climene. Colin, Jacques. Colana, Caterina. Fabrizio. Francesco, his Hypnerotomachia polyphili. Marcantonio. Pierantonio. Vittoria. Martianus of Pescara, Zero. Columbus, Christopher. Comino, Giuseppe. Command, he is always obeyed who knows how to. Comine. Commonwealths, Duke Guido Baldo in the service of the Venetian and Florentine. Como, the Bishop of. Concealment. Of art. The courtier need not conceal his good deeds. Conduct, Federico Fregoso propounds rules of. 
Confession of Ignorance, Disgust. Conquest, Princes Ought Not to Aim At. Consalvo de Cordoba. Constable, T. N. A. Printers. Conti, Bernardina. Continence and Temperance, Contrasted and Disgust. Continence of Scipio, The Story of the Contrast and Balance, In Art and Character. Conversation, To Be Varied to Suit the Company. Conversion of the Heathen. Cook, Sir Anthony. Cordoba, Consalvo de, C. Francisco Fernandez de, C. Corina. Corio, Lodovico. Cornelia. Corazet, Gels. Corsiniana Library at Rome. Corvinus, Matthias, C. Kasha, Andrea. Costume appropriate to the courtier. Cotta, Caius Aurelius. Courage requisite in the courtier. Court lady, the. Beginning of the discussion on. Must be womanly. Her need of beauty. Must be affable, vivacious, witty, not too prudish. Not too familiar, not a scandalmonger, tactful in conversation. Not addicted to over-rugged exercises, or too ready to dance or sing. Her dress, zero. For thirty must be no less well informed than the courtier, and understand even those exercises that she does not practice, she must also be accomplished in literature, music, painting and dancing. Palavicino objects to such multiplicity of acquirement. Courtier, the book of the Reasons for writing Reasons for hasty publication of A picture of the court of Urbino Excuse for not writing in the Tuscan dialect Purports to record actual dialogues. When written. Courtier's duty to entice their prince towards virtue. Courtiership. The subject of the book. Beginning of the discussion concerning the perfection of. Beginning of the discussion concerning the proper aims of. Explanation of the word. Crassus, Lucius Licinius, the orator. Marcus Licinius, the triumvir. Crassus Mucianus, Publius Licinius. Crato, Johannes. Creed, T. Crema, Margarita. Cretans, Cultivators of Music. Crimson Velvet, Jest about a Captain who celebrated his infrequent victories by wearing. Crivello, Biagino. Crotona, The Five Beautiful Maidens of. Cuna, Don Pedro de, C. The Prior of. Cuppies, or Copy, de Montefalco, Bernardo de Lucrezia de Curl, E. Curtius Rufus, Quintus, His History of Alexander the Great. Custom, the Basis of Manners. Cyrene. Cyrus. Damasco, Play Upon the Word. Dances, C. Moresca, Rogars. Dancing. Affectation in. How to be practiced. Dante. Dante's Divina Commedia. Inferno. Paradiso. Purgatorio. Vita Nuova. Danzer and Belair compared. Darko, M.S. Bibliographical notes by the late Count, at Mantua. Darius III of Persia. Dawson, Thomas. Day, John. Death from Excessive Joy, An Instance of Deceased Friends, the author's eulogy of his Deceptions and Tricks Practiced by Lovers Defects and Foibles, Limits to be Observed in Ridiculing Defender of the Faith, Origin of the Title Dianira Demerata Demetrius I of Macedon Demetrius II of Macedon Democritus Demosthenes Denham, Henry. Denistown. James. Denistown's Memoirs of the Dukes of Urbino. Durkido, a Syrian goddess. Deserve, the best way to win prince's favor is to deserve it. Devices, Imprise. Diaxido, Francesco Catani de. Diaxido's Tre Libri de Mor. Diana. Digressions from the main subject of the work. 
On Literary Style, 4. On Pleasantries and Witticism, 62. On the Attributes of the Perfect Court Lady, 28. On Platonic Love, 07. Dinocrates. Dio of Syracuse. Diocletian, the Emperor. Diogenes Laertius. Diamed. Dionysius the Elder of Syracuse. Dionysius the Younger of Syracuse. Diatima. Disguises, fancy dress, etc. Disparagement, to be avoided. Divorce, impliedly favored. Jem Othman. Dnieper, comic story of words frozen in crossing the. Dolce, Ludovico. Dalit, Estienne. Domenico, a printer at Venice. Donatello. Donato, Geronimo. Don Carlos. Prince of Spain, afterwards Charles V of Spain, and C. Donkey, story of peasant who had lost his. Double entente, instances of allowable. Doves, story of a tiresome fellow and his. Divisi, Bernardo, C. Drake, S. Drawing, a necessary accomplishment for the courtier. Dreams, Alfonso I's jesting advice to a servant regarding. Dress. The courtiers. An index of character. The court ladies, zero. Ducats. As a laudatory simile. Story of the prior who had borrowed ten thousand. Duchess of Urbino, the C. Gonzaga, and. Duel. The courtier to know how to conduct a. Story about a. Du Torti, play upon the words. Du Hamel, El Abbe. Duke Borso, C. Duke of Ferrara. Duke Federico, C. Duke of Urbino. Duke Filippo, C. Duke Valentino, C. Duran, Alfonso. Durer, Albert. Earth. Story about disposing of earth from an excavation, zero. Edward III of England. Edward IV of England. Edward VII of England. Egano, a character in Boccaccio. Ignatius, a character in Catullus. Egypt, the pyramids of. Said to have been built in order to keep the Egyptians busy. Eleonora of Portugal. Elias. Ellis in Achaia. Elizabeth of England. Elizabeth of Portugal. Elizabeth of York. Elmo, St. Elocution, the essentials of. Emmanuel I of Portugal. Emilia Pia, C. 431 Empedocles. Employment of the courtier's qualities, etc. Beginning of Federico Fragoso's discourse upon. England, the author's absence in. Ennius, Quintus. Envy, the courtier to avoid arousing. Epaminandus. Ephesus. Epicharis. Epimetheus. Equicola, Mario. Equipment of the Cavalier, the necessity for proper. Erasmus. Erasmus, St. Eris, the goddess of discord. Aria, Elvira. Erythreans, the. Este, Alfonso D., Duke of Ferrara. Beatrice D., Duchess of Milan. Bianca Maria D. Borso D., Duke of Ferrara. Ercoli D., Duke of Ferrara. Ginevra D. Ippolito D., Cardinal. Isabella D., Marchioness of Mantua. Niccolo D., Duke of Ferrara. Este Family, Eulogy of the Women of the Ettore Romano Giovanali. Europe and Asia. United by Alexander the Great. Eurydice. Evander. Evil. The correlative and necessary accompaniment of good. Ignorance is the root of. Exalted station attained by several members of the court of Urbino. Exercises. Those proper for the courtier, one. Those inappropriate for the courtier. I, story of the quack and the peasant who had lost him. Fabi, Antonio Maria. Fabius Pictor, Quintus. 
Fagiani, Bernardine. Falsehood, the origin of princes' air hours. Fancy dress and masks. Fari, Domenico. Fasanini, Landomia. Favorinus. Favors, not in general to be sought by the courtier. Federico III of Naples. Fedra, Tommaso Ingarami. Feltri, Vitorino de, C. Ferdinand I of Naples. Ferdinand II of Naples. Ferdinand the Catholic. Referred to as, the King. Mentioned. Ferdinand the Just, King of Aragon in Sicily. Fernandez de Cordoba, Francesco. Ferrara, the Dukes of, C. Fetti, Fra Mariano, C. Fiacadori. Ficino. Fiorezza, Boldness. Fiery Chariot of Elias. Fig Tree, Story about a man who begged a branch from his neighbors. Filiberta of Savoy. Filiberto, Duke of Savoy. Filipello's wife, a character in Boccaccio. Filippo, Duke, C. Finger Rings, Story of Alfonso Eyes. Fermianus. Lactantius, the Christian Cicero. First Impression. Amusing story illustrating the importance of the courtier to try to make a good. Five nuns and the friar, story of the flogged, story of man condemned to be Florence. Florence, the Archbishop of, Roberto Falco. Florentine Council, humorous sally made in the zero. Florentine Territory, story of a soldier who had fled from Florentines, want to wear the hood. Florido, Orazio. Foglietta, Agostino. Foglino, Scarmiglione de. Foy, Gaston de. Falco, Roberto, Archbishop of Florence. Forden. Catherine. Foreign phrases, instances of allowable use of. Forged document of renunciation, story of A. Forley. Antonello de, C. Fornovo, the Battle of. Fortabraxi, Braccio. Fra Mariano Fetti. France. Francia. Francesco Rebellini, better known as. Franciati, John Francesco. Francis I of France. Francis II, Duke of Brittany. Francis, St. Fra Serafino. Frederick Barbarossa. Frederick III, Emperor of Germany. Fregosa, Costanza. Fregoso, Agostino. Costanza, C. Federico. Ottaviano, 7. French fashion of dress. Affected by some. Tends to over amplitude. Frenchman. Martial exercises excelled in by. Said to disprize letters. Whether or not they are presumptuous. Their freedom of manner. Friar and the five nuns, story of the. Friars, hypocrisy of the. Friends. Choice of. Peril of too blind confidence in. Reciprocal duties of. Frigio, Nicolo, C. Frizio, or Frigio, Nicolo. Frazanone. The Battle of Frozen Words, Story About Gia Galatea Galba, Sergius Sulpicius Galato, Giantomeso Galato Marzi de Narni Galpino, a servant of My Lord Magnifico Gama, Basco de Gambara, Veronica Gambling Games proposed by various members of the court Gaming. Garigliano, the Battle of. Garter, the Order of the. 432 Garcia, Diego. Garzoni's L'Ospedale de Pizzi in Curabili. Gasper, my lord, C. Galtier, Pierre. Gizwolo, story of a peasant girl of. General repute, illustrations of the influence of. Generosity, a duty of princes. Generous. All givers are not. Genoa, 
the doge of, c. Genoese Riviera, wine from the Genoese spendthrift, retort made by a gentle birth, requisite in the courtier. George, st. German fashion of dress. Affected by some. Tends to over scantiness. German student at Rome, story of a German women of Roman times, heroism of Girian. Ghirlandaio. Gian Cristoforo Romano. Gianluca de Pontremolo. Giglio, Domenico. Gelito de Ferrari, Gabriel. Giorgio de Castelfranco, C. Giorgione. Giovanali, Ettore Romano. Latino, de Manetti. Giovio, Paolo. Giulia, a virtuous peasant girl. Giulio Romano. Junta, the heirs of Filippo D. Gianti, Benedetto. Gianti. The heirs of Bernardo. Glutton, rebuke administered by the Marquis Federico to A. Goethe's Travels in Italy. Golden Fleece, the order of the Gonella, a buffoon. Gonella, Bernardo, his father. Gonzaga, Alessandro. Barbara. Duchess of Württemberg. Cecilia. Cesare. Eleonora, Duchess of Urbino. Elisabetta, Duchess of Urbino. Federico, Marquis of Mantua. Federico, Marquis and afterwards Duke of Mantua. Francesco, C. John Pietro. John Francesco, Marquis of Mantua, 0. John Francesco, uncle to my Lady Duchess. Giovanni. Ludovico, Bishop of Mantua. Ludovico, Marquis of Mantua. Luigi. Luigia. Madalena. Margarita. Gonzaga family, eulogy of the women of the good. The correlative and necessary accompaniment of evil. Good government, three forms of. Gossolano, the count of, Don Pedro di Cardona. Goths, the time when Italy was ruled by the. Governo Misto, zero. Gracchi, the. Gracchus, Caius Sempronius. Grace. Cannot be learned, but may be cultivated. Lies chiefly in the avoidance of affectation. Grace requisite in the courtier. Granada, the conquest of, zero. Grand Turk, the, C. Graphic narrative. Gravity of visage, the effect of pleasantry heightened by. Great Captain, the, C. Greece. Greek. Hannibal said to have written in. The courtier to be conversant with. Castiglione prefers that his son should devote less attention to Latin than to. Greek dialects, discussion of. Gregory, St. Grove's Dictionary of Music. Gicciardini. Hadrian's Mausoleum, afterwards the Castle of St. Angelo. Handmaidens, the festival of the, zero zero. Hands, the beauty of. Hanging, the method by which a Spanish cavalier hoped to escape. Hannibal. Harmodius. Harmonia, zero. Harsi, Dennis de. Hasdrubal. Helen of Troy. Henry. Prince of Wales, c. Henry IV of England. Henry V of England. Henry VII of England. Henry VIII of England. Hera. Heraclea. Hercules. Hermes. Hermit, Lavanellos, a character in Bembo's Glee Asolani. Hernand. Pietro. Hernand y Aguilar, Gonzalvo, c. Herodotus. Herrick, Robert. Hesiod. Hiero of Syracuse, 0. High standard, to be aimed at, even if a higher cannot be attained. Hipparchus. History, the courtier to be versed in. Hobby, Sir Thomas. Hobby, Thomas. William. Hohenstaufen rulers of Naples. Homer. Honesty and uprightness, 
requisite in the courtier. Honor of women, discussion as to the regard to be shown to the Horus. Horse afraid of weapons, story about a Horse breeding. Horsemanship, the courtier to be an adept in Hortensius Hortilus, Quintus. Hugeton, Jean. Humanities, the courtier to be versed in the Humor, beginning of the discussion on Hunchbacks, story of two Hungary, the other queen of, c. 433 Hunyadi, Janos, of Hungary. Husbands and wives, ill treatment between Hypnerotomachia polyphili. Iapetus. Icarus. Ignorance. As to confessing. One of the gravest faults of princes. The root of evil. Iliad, the, kept by Alexander the Great at his bedside. Imitation, in literary style, 41. More necessary for the moderns than for the ancients. Imprise, devices. Improbabilities, to be avoided in conversation. Incongruity, the source of laughter. Incontinence in men, no more excusable than unchastity in women. India. Ingarami, Paolo. Tommaso, Fedra. Innocent the Eighth. Innuendo, instances of witty. Innis, William. Ippolito d'Est, c. Isabella del Balzo, Queen of Naples, 00. Isabella the Catholic. Referred to as, the Queen. Mentioned. Isaiah di Pippo of Pisa. Ischia, the island of. Ismail Sufi I of Persia. Isocrates. Isola Firma. Italian language, derived from the Latin. Italians. Martial exercises in which they excelled. Military decadence of. Lamentable lack of any style of dress peculiar to. Become a prey to other nations. Italy. James I of England. James IV of Scotland. Janus. Japan, the courtier said to have been carried to. J. C. L. L. J. An anonymous German translator of the courtier. Gem, C. Jena University Library. Jerome, St. C. Jobinus, Bernhardus. Johannes Hyrcanus, King of the Jews. John III of Portugal. John, King of Hungary. Jolie, Aristide, de Balthasaris Castiglionis au Pair, etc. Jousting, deemed by Gem too serious for sport. Jove. Javinianus, St. Jerome's first tract against. 1. Infant of Castile. 1 2 of Castile. 1 2 of Navarre and Aragon. Judgment Day, story of lady who dreaded to appear nude on the. Julius II, Giuliano della Rovere. Juno. Jupiter Feretrius. Just, Francois. Justice, the good prince's first care. Justinian, the emperor. King Louis, c. King of France, the, a phrase signifying the acme of royal power. Kiss. The origin and meaning of the. Knowledge, the essential prerequisite of literary style. Kratzer, Lorenz. Lacedaemonians, cultivators of music. Ladislas II of Bohemia. Lady at Church and the Beggar, story of the. Laelius, Caius, Sapiens. Lays. Landi, Agostino. Caterina. Count Marcantonio. Landriano, Gerardo, Bishop of Como. Language, in what consists the excellence of. Languages, the courtier ought to know many. Laocoon, the. Lapi, Cheka. Lascaris, Constantine. Lasso, Pedro. Latin. The source of Italian. The courtier to be conversant with. Castiglione prefers that his son should devote more attention to Greek than to. Latinistic forms of several Italian words advocated. Latino Giovanali Dethmanetti. Latrine tongue. 
Latanzio de Bergamo. Laughter. Peculiar to man. Incongruity affirmed to be its source. Laura. Lord de Noves. Lavanello. Lavanello's hermit, a character in Bembo's Glee Asolani. Law, princes need to show respect for. Liena. Leaping, an accomplishment proper for the courtier. Leghorn. Lay, Bernardino, Bishop of Cagli. Lemigne, Felice. Lenzuoli, Gifredo, or Alfonso. Rodrigo, C. Leo X, my Lord Cardinal. Leonardo da Vinci. His Codex Atlanticus. His Treatise on Painting. Leonico Tomio, Niccolo. Letters. The True Ornament of the Mind. Disprized by the French at the beginning of the 16th century. But esteemed by the youthful Francis, I. And by captains of ancient times. The True Conservator of Glory. Letters versus. Arms, Disgust. Luconia. Liberty, 1. Library of the Palace of Urbino. Library of the Spanish Academy at Madrid. Libreria Salesiana. Literary piracy. Hasty publication of the courtier arose from dread of. Frequency of. Literary style, discussion of, 4. Literary usage. How determined. Subject to change. Livy, Titus Livius. Lombard, the author admits writing as a. Lombards. Addicted to the use of foreign words. Fond of fantastic dress. Lombardy, 104. Eulogy of noble ladies of. Longinus, the lance of. Longes, Jean. Lore, Jean. Loretto, Our Lady of. 434 Lorraine, Beatrice of. Louis, St. Louis IX of France. Louis XI of France. Louis XII of France. Louise of Savoy. Love. The course to be pursued by women, married and unmarried, in love, zero. How men are to win women's love, zero. How men are to declare their love. Openness in love. How love is retained. Rivalry in love. Secrecy in love, zero. Whether love be seemly in an old courtier. Beginning of Bembo's discourse on platonic love. Love defined as a certain desire to enjoy beauty. Defects of carnal love. Maturity less prone to carnal love than youth. True love of beauty is beneficent. Sensual love in a measure excusable in the young. Sensual love not excusable in those of mature years. Spiritual love. Bembo's invocation to divine love. Instances in which the mysteries of divine love have been revealed to women. Love talk, the course to be pursued by women in. Loyalty requisite in the courtier. Loisan, Estien. Luca, Proto de, C. Luca. Story of the Sables and the Merchant of. Lucian. Luciani, Sebastiano, del Piambo. Luciano of Lorana, architect of the Palace of Urbino. Lucullus, Lucius Licinius. Luther. Luzio, Alessandro. Luzio and Rainier's Mantova e Urbino. Lycurgus. Lions, a practical joke played by Bibiena on the bridge at. Lysias. Lysis the Pythagorean. Machiavelli, Niccolo. Machiavelli's, Art of War. Discorsi. Principi. Storia Fiorentina. Maffei, Mario de. De Volterra, C. Maggi, Graziosa. Magnificence, a duty of princes. Mahaffey, J. P. Muhammad. Muhammad II of Turkey. Mamurius Vitturius. Man, the laughing animal. Manetti, Latino Giovanali de, C. Manlius Torquatus, 
Titus. Manner and time of employing the courtier's accomplishments, e.g. seek. Manners, excessive freedom of, to be avoided. Manrique, Don Garci Fernandez. Montaigne, Andrea. A son of Andrea. Mantua, the bishop of, c. The marquises of, c. Manucci, Teobaldo, c. Manutius, Aldus, c. Marano, a heretic. A renegade more. Marcantonio, master. Marcella, Elena. Marcello, Silvestro. Marciana Library at Venice. Marcus Antonius, the orator. Margarita of Austria. Margarita of Bavaria, Marchioness of Mantua. Mariano Fetti, Fra. C. Mario de Maffe de Volterra. Marius, Caius. Mark Antony. Markets, the new and old, at Florence. Marliani's life of Castiglione. Marriage, the right time for. Mars Gradivus. Martin V. Mary of Burgundy. Mary Magdalene. St. Mary Tudor, wife of Louis XII of France. Marzi, Galato, Denarni, C. Masks and fancy dress. Mass, just about speed in saying. Mass book, story of the. Massilia, custom of providing means of self-destruction at. Massimo, Roberto, de Bari. C. Masset, Estienne. Master Serafino. Matilda, the Countess. Matthias Corvinus of Hungary. Mausolus, King of Korea. Maximilian I, Emperor of Germany. Mayor, Johann. Mazzolini. Mazzicelli, Count Giamaria. Life of Castiglione. Medici, Caterina de. Cosimo de, Pater Patri. Giovanni de, Cosimo's father. Giovanni de, Del Band near. Giovanni de, my lord cardinal, c. Giuliano de, brother of Lorenzo the Magnificent. Giuliano de, my lord magnifico, 0, 38. Giulio de, c. Grasso de. Ippolito de. Lorenzo de, Duke of Urbino. Lorenzo de, the Magnificent. Pietro de. Miliolo, Bartolomeo. Ludovico. Men and Women, Beginning of the Discussion on the Comparative Excellence of. Menarola, Teodora. Mercury. Merola, Giorgio. Messina, the Prior of, Don Pedro de Cuna. Metastasio, P. Metrodorus. Mycard, C.L. Michael, apparently a tutor to Castiglione's son. Michelangelo Buonarroti. Michelet on Louis XII of France. Milan. The Dukes of, C. and. Miletus, the Bishop of, C., the Cardinal of. Milus, Guillermo de. Miltiades. Mime, C. Moresca. Mimicry, the limits to be observed in. Minerva. Miniana Compagnia, La. For 35 Minutoli, Ricciardo, a character in Boccaccio. Miser. Retort of a spendthrift to A. Story of a servant who had saved the life of his miserly master. Mithridate VI, Eupater, King of Pontus. Mixed government, zero. Moderate fortunes, less power possessed by the very rich than by men of. Moderation, the essence of virtue. Modesty requisite in the courtier. Malart, captain. Monarchy versus. Democracy, one. Monoma of Pontus. Monkey, story of chess played by A. Monpazat, Pedro. Montaigne. Quotation from his essays. The village of Paglia mentioned in his diary. Monte, Pietro. Pietro Dal. Montecchi Arugolo, Count Guido Torello D. Montefeltro, Agnes D. Antonio D. Ora D. Batista D. 
Brigida Sueva D. Count of, in 1154. Federico D. Duke of Urbino. Gentile D. Giovanna D. Guidantonio D. Duke of Urbino. Guido Baldo D. Duke of Urbino, 1. Odd Antonio D. Count of Urbino. Violanti D. Origin of the name. Montefeltro family, eulogy of the women of the Montefiore Inn, synonymous expression for a bad inn. Montoni, Braccio de Moors. Story of a Pisan merchant captured and rescued from the To be conquered for their soul's good. Morello, Sigismondo, de Ortona. Moresca, Mime, Morris Dance. Morganta Majori, a poem by Luigi Pulsi. Morisina. Morris Dance, C. Moresca. Mosca, Gian Battista Vendramini. Moses. Mount Athos. Mount Catria. Mount Ida. Moya, the Marchioness of, C. Munchausen. Muscovy, the Duke of. Music. Affectation in. The variety of. The courtier to have skill in. Praise of. To be regarded by the courtier as a pastime. Certain kinds recommended. Certain kinds to be avoided. Musical performance forbidden to the aged, zero. Musical training essential to appreciation of. My Lady Duchess, C. My Lady Amelia, C. My Lord Cardinal, i.e. Giovanni de Medici, C. My Lord Duke, C. My Lord Gaspar, C. My Lord Magnifico, C. Medici, Giuliano de. My Lord Prefect, C. Naples. Napoli, Pietro de, C. Narni, Gailato Marzi de, C. Nazica. C. National Library at Madrid. National Library at Paris. Navarre, the King of. Navarre and Aragon, one two of. Navo, Curzio. Nazarius, St. Nemours, the Duke of, C. Neologisms, the allowable use of. Nero, the Emperor. New York Public Library. Nicholas V, Tommaso Parenticelli. Nicoletto, Paolo Nicolo Vernia. Nicoletto, de Orvieto. Nicostrate. Nino di Emiria. Jacopo D, Bishop of Potenza. Ninus, the husband of Semiramis. Nonchalance. The true source of grace. Explanation of the Italian word rendered by. Not at home, story of Scipio and Ennius who pretended to be. Navera. Novelli of Boccaccio. Noves, Audibert de. Lord de. Novellara, Count of, C. Noyes, Johann Engelbert. Nuscio, or Nuscio, Martin. Filippo. The Widow of Martin. Nudity, story of lady who dreaded the judgment day because of her. Nuscio, C. Nut, David. Obedience. A duty only when the command is righteous, zero zero. The peril of even slight deviation from the letter of one's orders. Obscenity, to be avoided. Ockenheim. Octavia. Odacio of Padua. Odenathus, King of Palmyra. Eta, Mount. Oglio, story of the peasant girl who drowned herself in the old age. Its tendency to laud the past and to decry the present. Affectations of. Characteristics peculiar to. Old fashions, instances of, in manners and attire. Alshki, Leo. Olympia. Olympian Jove. Olympic Games. Oratory. Affectation in. The variety of. The courtier to be versed in. Orestes. Oriental Courts, Manners of. Orlando, a character of medieval romance. Orleans, Duke Charles D. 
Orleans, the Duke of, C. Orpheus. Orsini, Clarice. John Giordano. Ortona, Morello de. C. Orvieto, Nicoletto de. Oscan language. Othman, Gem, C. Our Lady of Loretto. Ovid. For 36 Ovids Arzamandi. Oislet, Georgel. Padovano, Giovanni. Padua. The, Arch, Bishop of. Paduan flavor in Livy's style. Pionius's, Victory. Paganino, Alessandro. Paglia, Story of the practical joke played in the inn at. Painting. Affectation in. Variety of. The courtier to be proficient in. Praise of, zero. Discussion as to the comparative merits of painting and sculpture, zero. Paleologus, Margarita, Duchess of Mantua. Paleotto, Annibal. Camillo. Vincenzo. Palace. Palavicino, Count Gaspar. Zero, zero. Palma Vecchio. Panicius. Pandora. Paolo, a dutiful son. Paolo Romano. Paredes, Diego Garcia de. Parenticelli, Tommaso, C. Paris. The, noble school, of, the Sorbonne. Paris and the Three Goddesses. Parmesan, the battle fought in the, I. E, the Battle of Fornovo. Passano, Giambattista, I Novelieri Italiani. Passivant. Passions, to be tempered, not extirpated. Past, declared to be inferior to the present. Paul, St. Paul III. Paulus, Simon. Paulus, Lucius Emilius. Pausanias. Pavia, the Battle of. The Bishop of, C., the Cardinal of. The Cardinal of, Francesco Aladosi. Payne, Olive. Puzzi, John Otto de. Giovanni de. Raffaello de. Peace, the arts of war no more glorious than those of. Pedrada, Salazza Dalla. Pelagio, Guido del. Peleus. Penalties for crime, preventive rather than punitive. Pepoli, the Count of. Peralta. Captain Luigi Galliego de. Pergamus. Periander of Corinth. Pericles. Persecutions endured by girls at their lovers' hands. Perseus, King of Macedon. Persia. Alexander the Great's conquest of. The King of, in the time of Themistocles. The Safi King of, C. Persians defeated in battle, story of their wives' rebuke. Personal attention, princes need to attend personally to the execution of their commands. Personal service, the perfect courtier not busied with. Perugia. Two cousins who fought at. Perugino. Pescara, the Marchioness of, C. Peter Piper. Petrarch. Petrarch's Triunfo de More. Phaedra, a character in Seneca's Hippolytus. Phaedra, a tragedy by Racine. Philip of Austria. Philip of Burgundy. Philip of Macedon. Philip V of Macedon. Phoenix. Phrygio, C. Frisio, C. Phryne. Physiognomists, who read a man's character and thoughts in his face. Pia, Alda. Emilia. Zero. Pianella, Count, Giacomo Datri. Piazza Diagon at Rome. Piccinino, Niccolo. Piccolomini, Aeneas Silvius, C. Pierpaolo. Pietro Antonio da Vinci, Leonardo's father. Pietro de Napoli. Piety towards God, Prince's need of. Pinder. Pinturicchio. Pio, Alberto. Alda, C. Emilia, C. Giberto. Leonello. Ludovico. Marco. Pio family. 
Eulogy of the Women of the Piombo, Sebastiano del C. Pippi, Giulio, called Romano. Perithous. Pisa. Story of a soldier wounded at. Story of a merchant of, rescued from Barbary pirates. Pisan War, story about Florentine methods of raising funds for. Pisan women, bravery of. Pistoia. Pistoia, Antonio Camelli. Piticus of Mytilene. Pius II, Aeneas Silvius Piccolomini. Pius III, Francesco Todeschini. Plato. Plato's, Laws. Fido. Republic. Symposium. Plautus. Plautus's Menaecme. Trinumus. Pleasantries. Beginning of the discussion on. Classified. Cruelty to be avoided in. Pliny. Plotinus. Plutarch. For 37 Plutarchs, apothems and famous sayings of Spartan women. Concerning women's virtue. How to tell friend from flatterer. Life of Alexander the Great. Life of Camillus. Life of Lucullus. On garrulity. On the ignorant prince. Podesta, explanation of the word. Poetry, the courtier to be versed in. Poisoned cannon shot, story about. Poland, the king of. Polyphilian words. Polition, C. Poliziano. Pollux. Pompey, Pompeius, Nias. Sextus. Pontormo. Pontremolo, John Luca de, C. Pontus. Ponzio, Caio Caloria. Popes, play upon the names of two. Porcaro, Antonio. Camillo. Valerio. Portia. Porta, Domenico Dalla. Portaliger, Diego de Silva, Count of. Porto. Portugal, Eleonora of. Elizabeth of. Emmanuel I of. John III of. Portuguese Mariners, Discoveries by the. Porzio, C. Poseidon. Potenza. The Bishop of, Jacopo di Nino di Emiria. Potswali. Practical Jokes, Instances of, 2. Practice versus. Precept. Praise, to be modestly disclaimed. Prato. Praxitalises, Hermes. Precept versus. Practice. Prefect of Rome, C. Press, Joskin de. Present, declared to be superior to the past. Primero, or Primera, a game of cards. Princes. Courtiers intercourse with, 102. Courtiers not to intrude upon the privacy of. To deserve their favor is the best way of gaining it. A picture of the perfect prince, too. Evils endured by tyrannical princes. Procella, fury, or storm. Procrustes. Prometheus. Proto de Luca. Protogenes. Provosal. Boccaccio's use of. Fallen into decay in the author's time. Province, Rene of. Provincial flavor, not necessarily a blemish in literary style. Ptolemy. Publius Licinius Crassus Mucianus. Pulsi, Luigi. Puns, instances of. Purifying influence of love. Purism of speech deprecated. Pygmalion. Pylades. Pyramids of Egypt said to have been built in order to keep the Egyptians busy. Pythagoras. Pythagoreans, the Quack, story of the peasant who had lost an eye and consulted a Qualities of the courtier, how to be employed, ed seek Rabani, better de Racine Rabellini, Francesco, better known as Francia Raleigh, Professor Walter Rampazetto, Francesco Rang one, Count Ercoli Raphael Ravenna the Battle of. Recitative. Regio. 
Raphael. Reinhard Stadner's article on the German translations of the courtier. Ramondini. Remus. René of Provence. Rainier, Rodolfo. Reputation. A courtier to be preceded by his. The influence of. Rhodes. Rierio, Cardinal. Richard III of England. Richmond, Edmund Tudor, Earl of. Rigatini, Giuseppe. Rinaldo, a character of medieval romance. Ricius, Johannes. Rivadonera, Manuel. Rivera, Donna Costanza de. Don Luis de. Rizzo, Antonio. Roberto de Bari. Rogars, a dance performed after the first evening's discussion. Roma, a Trojan woman. Roman Academy, the. Romano, Gian Cristoforo, C. Giulio Pippi. Paolo. Romano Giovanali, Ettore. Rome. Romulus. Rose color, Cosimo de Medici's advice to a silly ambassador to wear. Rossi, U. Vittorio, his article on Caio Caloria Ponzio. Rhoda, or Ruota, della Giustizia, a law court. Rovere, Caterina Della, a brave lady. Felice Della. Francesco Maria Della, my lord prefect, and afterwards Duke of Urbino. Gaelato Della, Cardinal of San Pietro ad Vincula. Giovanni Della. Giuliano Della, c. Lucina Della. Lucrezia Guerra Della. Raphael Della. Rovilio, Guglielmo. Roxana of Bactria. Roxana of Pontus. Rules of Conduct Propounded by Federico Fragoso. Ruskin, John. 438 S. The Letter Worn by My Lady Duchess Upon Her Brow. The Unico Aretino Sonnet Concerning. Sabine Women and Their Roman Husbands, The Story of the Sables, Story of the Merchant of Lucca and His. Saad, Hughes de Sadolito, Giacomo Giovanni Sagantine Women, Bravery of St. Ambrose, Jacques Collin, Abbot of St. Angelo, The Castle of St. Celsus St. Elmo St. Erasmus St. Francis St. George The English Order of The Garter Mentioned. Saint Gregory. Saint Jerome. St. Jerome's Epistle on Widowhood. Saint Louis. Saint Mary Magdalene. Saint Michael, the French Order of. Saint Nazarius. Saint Paul. Saint Peter and Saint Paul, story about a picture in which Raphael had represented. St. Peter's, the Church of. Story of the prelate who stooped on entering. The rebuilding of. Saint Sebastian, the Basilica of. St. Stephen. Salerno, the Archbishop of, C. Salian Priests. Salazza dalla Pedrada. Salist. Saluzzo, Rizarda D. Salvadori, Giulio. Samber, Robert. San Bonifacio, Count Ludovico de San Celso San Gallo Gate at Florence San Giacomo The Church of, at Padua San Giorgio, Giovanni Antonio, the Alexandrian Cardinal, c. San Leo, story of Duke Guido Baldo and the Castellan who had surrendered San Magno, Masella di San Nazaro, Jacopo Jacopo Nicolo. San Pietro ad Vincula, the Cardinal of, C. San Sebastiano, story of an outrage committed near the Church of. San Secondo, Giacomo. San Severino, Galeazzo. Roberto. San Silvestro, picture painted by Raphael for the Church of. Sansoni. G. C. Santa Croce. Alfonso. Santa Maria in Portico, 
the Cardinal of, C. Santi, Giovanni. Raffaello, C. Sanzio, Raffaello, C. Sappho. Sardanapalus. Savona. Savonarola. Savoy, Charlotte of. Filiberta of. Filiberto, Duke of. Louise of. Scarmiglione de Foglino. Schaefer, Carl. Schultz, a printer. Scipio Africanus Maximus. Scipio Africanus the Younger. Scipio Nasica, Publius Cornelius. Siron. Scissors. Scoto, Girolamo. Scott, Mary Augusta. Sculpture and Painting, The Comparative Merits of, Zero. Scythia. Scythians. A Custom Among the. Mentioned. Sebastian, St. The Basilica of. Sebastiano, a brother of Fra Serafino. Self-confidence requisite in the courtier. Self-depreciation, to be avoided. Self-praise disgust. Self-seclusion of princes. Salim I of Turkey. Semiramis. Seneca's Hippolytus. Sarah, Francesca Del. Neri Del. Serafino, Fra, C. Master. Serafino Simonelli di Aquila. Serassi, Pier Antonio. Ceres, William. Certinas, Vincent. Seven Sages of Greece, the. Sportsa, Anna, first wife of Alfonso d'Est. Batista. Duchess of Urbino. Bianca. Bianca Maria. Caterina. Francesco, Duke of Milan. Francesco Maria. Galeazzo Maria, Duke of Milan. Giangaliazzo, Duke of Milan. Ippolita Maria, Queen of Naples. Ludovico Il Moro. Duke of Milan. Maximilian. Musio Attendolo. Shakespeare. Sibyls, the. Sicily. Sydney, Sir Philip, his, Arcadia. Siena. Retort made to a townsman of. Story about the emperor and. The cardinal of. Silius Italicus, Caius. Silva, Diego de, Count of Portaliger. Miguel de, Bishop of Visu. Silvestri, Giovanni. Simbini. Similes and metaphors in pleasantry. Simone, a character in Boccaccio. Simoni. Ludovico Buonarroti. Simpleton, retort made by Lorenzo de Medici to A. Sinning against light. See non cast, to men caught. Sinoris. Sismondi. Sixtus IV. Slater, H. Slavonia, just about a comedy so elaborate as to need for its setting all the wood in. Social inferiors, consorting with Socrates Solomon 439 Solon of Athens Sanzonio, Eduardo Sophocles Sorbon, Robert Sorbonne, the Spain Spaniards Martial exercises excelled in by Affirmed by Calmida to be the masters of courtiership Discussion whether they are presumptuous. Said to excel in chess. Their grave manners. Spanish fashion of dress. Affected by some. Sobriety of. Spartan women, bravery of. Speaking and writing, to be governed by essentially the same rules. Sprezzatura, nonchalance. Squartian, Francesco. Stadia. Computation of the size of Hercules's body based upon a comparison of the different. Stagyra. Stasi crates. Statyra of Pontus. Stature, the courtier to be of moderate. Stazioni. Stephen, St. Stasicorus. Stilico. Stoic philosophers. Stracino, Niccolo Campani de Siena. Strazi, 
Pala Degli. Suetonius. Sulla, Lucius Cornelius. Sulpicius Rufus, Publius. Sumptuary regulations, commended. Swimming. An accomplishment proper for the courtier. Simons, John Addington. Sinatus. Sinesius. T.A., a printer's initials. Tacitus, Cornelius. Taft, Tofta, Taffity. Tarpia. Tarquinius Priscus. Tasso, the poet. Girolamo, a printer. Tatius, Titus. Teeth, the beauty of. Temperament of men and women discussed. Temperance and continence, contrasted and discussed. Tenda, Beatrice D. Tennis. A pastime appropriate to the courtier. To be practiced only as a diversion. Tennyson's, Cup, Castiglione's version of the story on which was founded. Teramo, the Bishop of, C. Terpandro, Antonio Maria. Thales of Miletus. Themistocles. Themistus of Syracuse. Theodatus. Theodolinda, Queen of the Lombards. Theodora, wife of the Emperor Theophilus. Wife of the Emperor Justinian. Theodoric the Great. Theophilus, the Emperor. Theophrastus. Theseus. Thetis. Tiber. First Trojan landing at the mouth of the Ticknor, the historian of Spanish literature. Time, the true test of literary and other excellence. Time and manner of employing the courtier's accomplishments, e.g. seek. Timeliness, a requisite in pleasantries. Timor the Tartar. Tintoretto. Tipographia dei Classici Italiani, La. Tersi, an eclogue by Castiglione. Tisius, Stasicorus. Titian. Titus Tatius. Todeschini, Francesco, C. Toldo. Pietro. Tolosa, Paolo. Tomio, Niccolo, C. Tommaso, Antonio D. Tommaso, Messer, of Pisa. Tomaris. Torello, Antonio. Count Guido, D. Montecchiarugolo. Ippolita, wife of the author. Tori, Geronimo Della. Marcantonio Della. Torrezano, Federico. Tortis, Alvise de. Total abstinence. Tuins, Pedro. Trajan, the emperor. Tricks and deceptions practiced by lovers. Trifles, instances of books written about. Trino, come in de. Trojan horse, the. Trojan settlement in Italy. A story of the Trojan War, the origin of the Trombone, story about playing the Troy Trojan settlement in Italy after the fall of The valor of Trojan women long prevented the fall of The fall of, cited as an instance of the woes wrought by women's beauty. True lover's arch Truth, the courtier's chief aim should be to inform his prince of the Tudor, Arthur Catherine, widow of Henry V of England. Edmund. Earl of Richmond. Henry, son of Edmund, c. Henry, son of Henry, c. Margaret, daughter of Henry. Mary, Queen of France, daughter of Henry. Tullius, c. Marcus Tullius. Turin, Duke Agilolf of. Turk, the Grand, Badges A2. C. Turkish fashion of dress. Affected by some. Peculiarities of. Turks and Moors. Tuller, Hieronymus. Turnus. Tuscan dialect. Author's reasons for not using. Discussion of, 4. Not to be regarded as sole criterion of Italian usage. Tuscany. Duke Boniface of. Tuchula. Tyrant, witticism against a tyrant falsely reputed to be generous. Tyrants, evils suffered by. Ubaldini, Bernardino. Ottaviano. Ubicini, 
the brothers. Officio Grande and Officio della Madonna. Ugolini, Paolo. Ulysses. Unico Aretino. 440 Urbino. Account of, in 1216. Daily life at the court of. The Duchess of, C. and. The Duke of. C. and. Usage. The law of good speech. But not bad usage. Who establish it? Changeable. Utility, an element of beauty. Valentino, Duke, C. Valerius Maximus's memorable doings and sayings. Venazza, Rosa. Verano, Costanza de. Varchi. Variety of occupations, inculcated. Varlungo, the priest of. A character in Boccaccio. Vero, Marcus Terentius. Vasari, Giorgio. Vatican Library at Rome. Vaulting on horseback, proper for the courtier. Veneri, an appropriate pastime for the courtier. Venetians. Their manner of riding ridiculed. Addicted to the wearing of puffed sleeves. Venice. Venus. Venus Armada. Venus Calva. Vernacular, i.e. Italian, the courtier to be proficient in the use of the. Vernia, Paolo Nicolo, C. Verrocchio. Verlum, Lord, Francis Bacon. Vesum, Count Carlo Body D. Vespasiano. Vesta. Vestal Virgins. Vinci, Leonardo de, C. Vial. Viati. Antonio D. Virgil. Virtu, La, a feminine quality. Virtue, whether it is inborn or capable of being acquired, e seek. Visconti, Bianca Maria. Caterina. Filippo Maria, Duke of Milan. Giangaliato, Duke of Milan. Giovanni Maria, Duke of Milan. Valentina. Visu, the Bishop of, C. Vite, Timoteo della. Vitruvius. Vittorino de Feltri. Vittorio Emanuele Library at Rome. Vizio, Illinois, a masculine quality. Volpi, edition of the courtier annotated by the brothers. Volterra, Mario de, C. Vulcan. Wales, the Prince of, C. of England. Weapons. The courtier to be familiar with the handling of. Wheel, the, a court of justice, story about. Wifely affection, instances of. Witticism and pleasantry, beginning of the discussion on. Wives and husbands, ill treatment between. Wolf, John. Womanliness, the chief essential in the court lady. Womanly virtue, instances of, e seek. Women, different kinds of men love different kinds of. Women afford inspiration to poets and musicians. Women and men, beginning of the discussion on the comparative excellence of. Women's excellence in literature, music, painting and sculpture. Women's extravagance in dress and ornament. Women's honor, beginning of the discussion as to the regard to be shown to. Women's innate love of honor, e seek. Women's usefulness to men, ancient instances of, e seek. Women's usual regret at not having been born men. Wrestling, the courtier to be familiar with. Writing and speaking, to be governed by essentially the same rules. Xenocrates. Xenophon. Xenophon's Cyropedia. Xerxes. Youth. Characteristics peculiar to. Zenobia. Zetzner, Lazarus. Zeus. Zuxis. Zizim, C. Zodiac, explanation of the signs of the. Transcriber's note. The end notes are frequently referred to multiple times. When navigating between the note and a specific reference, it would be best to employ the Brower's back button. Navigation back to the text will direct the user back to the reference on the page mentioned. On P. A reference to EndNote 61 should have been EndNote 62. 
That was been corrected. On pages. An extended Italian quote includes line breaks that disrupt words without benefit of hyphenation. Since the translator claims to reproduce the 1528 Aldine edition line for line, those breaks are retained. Line 9, E tempo era il, leto. Line 19, Che fos, stato. Line 23, and, graua, for modern, grave. Line 39, come esse fa stato, allopiato, for modern, appiato. Line 40, veriment. Line 44, che si, scryu, for modern, scrive. Line 45, gran prezzo per una, nate. Line 46, radiasi, tuta. Other errors deemed most likely to be the printers have been corrected, and are noted here. The references are to the page and line in the original. Anger and disdain, most sweet, dot. Added. Those who speak are present before those who, speak slash here. Listen. Nor is th, eir slash air, lack of those. Replaced. They take every pain, s. Removed. The Pope is good for nothing. Added. And W, A, S known as a schismatic. Restored. 